Fan, what's up? Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Happy Monday. Hope everybody uh, is doing all right today. Let me know where you guys are watching from inside the comment box. And uh, let's get the show going right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Run the thumbs up. Now, I appreciate you guys being here. A lot to talk about today as we start this beautiful week right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Man, the staff has been doing a fantastic job. Uh, special shout out to, of course, Smook, uh, Meryl, Sean, uh, Jarek, and Ty. All those guys, you know, absolutely crushing it right here on Bama Football on YouTube. I really appreciate you guys supporting them, and uh, I appreciate you guys being fan funders of the show. Uh, how to do that? Hit the hyperlink above this video for only $2.99. You can support this video uh, we are independently run um, right here on youtube and we appreciate you guys honestly we wouldn't be here for uh if it wasn't for uh without you guys and special thanks to our sponsors as well residents in in ocean city maryland uh, the promo code is lpr for 20 percent off and then sponsor rogue shop the promo code is bama and then uh also demetrius maynard who is a viewer just like you is a sponsor of this youtube channel so i appreciate you guys being here and rocking with me this morning right here on bama football on youtube let me give some shout outs right now as we uh, get the show warmed up and uh, of course i'll take calls the call in line uh, is open at the bottom of the screen the call in line number today is 205-850-1994 it's open right now so if you want to call i'll be here for an hour um, with you guys call in let's chop it up and let's talk some alabama football some alabama basketball some alabama football recruiting there's a lot to go over clearly um in the later month of march right this is march madness and last night with alabama uh defeat in Grand Canyon moving on to the Sweet 16 uh, pretty uh, pretty gritty win and I want to get your thoughts on that Nate Oates uh, takes Alabama to the Sweet 16 next up North Carolina who's the number one seed the game will be uh, in Los Angeles at the Staples Center All right that game will be Thursday at 8 30 central time on CBS all right um the topics that I want to talk about today, and I'll give my shout outs in just a second. So I want to talk basketball clearly about the victory. I know you guys are watching Alabama versus Grand Canyon last night. You know, you know the antelopes. I knew the antelopes would be tough. I, I, you know, I'm from the West, so I knew that the antelopes would be coming with it. That that game was uh, <laughs> it was a little bit stressful. All these games are like high anxiety, a little bit stressful. Uh, but Alabama able to pull it out last night. Mark Sears, you know, uh, absolutely crushed it. I also want to get your take on Alabama's recruiting, um, and they've been red hot. I mean, what uh, Kalen DeBoer has done in the month of March, landing six commits. The last commit came uh, yesterday on Sunday, and that was from Luke Metz, who's a four-star on Rivals.com, who played the Will inside linebacker position. Talk about that as well. And just recruiting under Coach Kalen DeBoer and kind of that um, – overall philosophy the mentality that has certainly uh, been rolling through so let me get to some shout outs and, and shout outs we always start in the morning and we have tea here in a second she'll roll through uh, but let me know where you guys are watching from inside the comment box always uh, like to hear where you guys are watching the show from so um, oh, and we'll talk about Cochran because the other day when we were at practice, he like he drove by. So, uh, Ruben Poole, what's up, man? Good morning to you. I appreciate you. Uh, he's saying good morning and God bless. What's up, Sports Podcast? We see you uh, inside the comment box as well. Uh, Rocket City coming to us from Windy Huntsville. We appreciate you. Uh, I was like, Windy Huntsville. You know, it's been windy here in Tuscaloosa as well. I don't know what's going on. Um, it was a little bit windy the other day. All right, Rodney, what's up, man? I see you inside the comment box as well. Um, and Angel, good morning to you. I appreciate you. He's coming to us from Pigeon Forge. Says Alabama basketball played sloppy last night. Grand Canyon missed a ton of uh, free throws. A ton, right? They only shot, what, 62% from the, from, from the line? All right, uh, no, what's up, man? Appreciate you being here. Marshall, what's going on? Good morning to you from Jacksonville, Florida. Call line and number is open at the bottom of the screen, 205-850-1994. Undefeated is uh, saying, what's up? Hit the thumbs up. For sure, hit the thumbs up. Next up, Alabama versus North Carolina. Roll MF Todd. <laughs> what's up, Mr. B? Coming from the 205. We appreciate you. Jor is saying, Daddy's home. <laughs> what's up, Jor? Uh, Lucas is saying, this Scott Cochran coming back to Alabama. Everybody's coming back to Alabama, right? We haven't even really had a chance to talk about Caden Proctor. And he coming back to Alabama. And, of course, Coach Kaitlyn DeBoer cannot comment on that at this point in time. But, man. With Caden Proctor coming back, um, I'm going to write that down. Let's talk about the Alabama offensive line, too. Alabama offensive line. 
I think there's a lot to discuss. What's up, uh, Lucas? We appreciate you, man. We'll definitely hit on that today as well. Dwight coming in with the undefeated shirt, man. Loved it, man. Appreciate it. Merrill, number one, bracket challenge. Man, you know what? I haven't even looked at our bracket challenge that we have going right here on Bama Football on YouTube because my bracket was absolutely shredded from like the first few games. You know, look, I've never had a bracket that's went really far, but then again, you know, I'm always like up in like, I don't know, top, top whatever. I mean, my bracket now is trash, utter trash. Um, what's up, Caleb, man? I appreciate you. Sweet 16 bound. Auburn is mad. <laughs> Look, anytime you draw one of those Ivy League teams, it's not. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> one million percent. And, uh, you know, Auburn at home watching Alabama head to L.A. I'm going, going back, back to Cali, Cali. Lions Pride, what's up, man? Appreciate you being here. Jermaine Mims, what's up, man? Appreciate you uh lax with the michael myers man so uh a couple weeks ago i played golf i was in this golf tournament up in uh west point mississippi uh or waverly you've heard of it right the crazy thing was the guy that i was so you know you play for uh for a group and the guy leading our he actually won the tournament his name was michael myers uh, and he was like in all black and he had like black and white shoes, like a Halloween theme going on. All right. We got a couple calls coming in. We got a seven, seven, zero. Let's start it off. Hey, good morning. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? <laughs> Hello. What's up, man? You're Hello, on the line, can you man. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. Come on. Come with it. Good morning to you. My name is Lucas. I, I'm calling in. I'm a, I'm a band fan, road tie. And you know what? I am hyped for the season. I'm hyped for the staff, but um, I, I, I'm the one who tweeted the Scarfing message, and, and when I was saying, I think he's not in the strict conditioning, because you remember what happened the last time he was in the strict conditioning, we don't want to go to that, that, um, to that same issue again. Mm. If Coach Boyd could bring him as a hype guy and go and hype the guys up, I think I so, think I think you're kind of breaking up, but you're talking about Scott Cochran, right? Hold on, let me go outside for a minute. I'm kind of I don't know. All right, I'll I'll, I'll set the stage for you in the meantime. Okay, so um, Colin Colin Line is talking about Scott Cochran potentially coming back to Alabama, and look from so if you're like what what if you're just waking up and you didn't see this. Long story short. The other day at practice, we were out there. We are getting ready to go watch Alabama practice, right? Like, we show up. They tell us to show up at, like, one fifteen. You show up at, you know, a little bit before 1, 12, 50 or whatever. And we're outside of the Mount Moore facility, right outside of the indoor practice facility. And, like, in cruises by uh, was Scott Cochran. So, like, there, I think it was Joe Gaither of Bama Central scooped a picture of it. And then a couple of people did as well. Kind of looked like Bigfoot kind of rolling through. Look, Scott Cochran um, left Georgia. We really never found out why he left Georgia. It was kind of a little bit muddy. There was never like a real big statement made, whatever the case was. As he, This is the crazy thing. Scott Cochran has been a part of like, what, eight national championship teams between Alabama, Georgia, you know, other places that he's been. Um, I think people love Scott Cochran and they love, most importantly, the energy that he brings. I think when you when people are play devil's advocate, they see Scott Cochran as somebody who was tired or whatever to like ACLs. I don't know. I'm not an athletic trainer or whatever. I don't even know if he's coming back. What we do know is that he was in Tuscaloosa. A lot of guys do come back to Tuscaloosa for one thing or another. I'm not sure why he was here. It's exciting because from the one standpoint, and we talk about this new energy, is he brought the energy i like the the staff before you know they were all business it was kind of you know it was like saban's message and the fire came from saban this current staff right now everybody has the energy and i think scott cochran would fit in nicely if he came but again i have no it could be for paperwork it could be that he was meeting with the co i have no idea but we did see him in tuscaloosa hey caller are you still there did you step outside what's up man go ahead come with it We might, I think we lost everybody. Okay, so it's just me. So call on line number is open, 205-850-1994. I want to ask you, undefeated, give me a thumbs up from what you've read, the sites you've gone to, the people you've talked to, whatever the case is, do you feel that Scott Cochran will come back to Alabama in some capacity? Give a thumbs up if you think so. 
I want it. I want honestly. For me right now, I think it's a little bit too early. I haven't looked to um, you know anybody who's like really in the know. I haven't heard like a Josh Pate say that he's coming to Alabama or you know on three or whoever. I really haven't seen uh, too much of that, um, so I, I don't know. Um, would it be a good thing? I don't know. I mean, he seems like um, you know he's been a part of a lot of you know high quality teams. I just don't know. So Byron is saying no, that he's not going to come. Um, so give me a thumbs up. Give me, Yeah, let's do it like this. Thumbs up if you think he's going to come or a thumbs down if you don't think he's going to come. How about that? What's up, James? I appreciate you being here uh, inside the comment box, man. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Cynthia, what's up? Good morning to you. I appreciate you being here as well. Um, yo, um, this could make sense right here. Byron Walken, Byron Walker says that his son, Bo Cochran, 2026 db is visiting uh colleges this can make a lot of sense right here his son if you haven't seen on social media is a monster he's been training um with his father for a long time i've seen because i follow his uh i follow his father on instagram his son's a monster seriously like out on the field he plays running back he was crushing it when he was here in alabama then when he was at georgia this could make sense. He's definitely going to be um, a Division One guy. So 2026, that could be it. Um, I don't know much more than that. So uh, we do have a – let's see if we can get that seven. I think it's Lucas. Lucas, what's up, man? Are you there? Yeah. All right, man. I'm still here. Go ahead, Lucas. Give me your final – give me um, give me your take on Scott Cochran. All right. Um, this, is, this, is, this is what I'm going to take, 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 take on it. I don't think he. I don't think he comes back. But if he does, that come put him on to the to the hype roll, not in the street conditioning. Because what I like I said, he would go. Remember what happened last time he was he was in there. All the players would get injured, so we don't want to go to to, to that same mess again. And so, but he is a good. He he knows how to hype the players up. We need we need to we need to use that. Because right now we don't we don't have no hype guy mm. on the staff, so that's what we need to do. Put him back on the put him using the hype guy. But if he goes in that street conditioning, guess what? Bama's over. Bama's done. Yeah, you, you get injuries there, 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 and so that means he will go in there and mess up Dave Blue. What Dave what Dave Blue has done when Dave Blue got in 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 here, Dave Blue had to do the cleanup from um. From um, Scarkin, remember when Scarkin left, we hit on Dave Blue. Cause Dave Blue had to come in and play cleanup and fix and fix Scarkin's mess. And so that's what my biggest concern with Scarkin right now. I don't want him to go back to the streak of distance. And that's what he's probably going to be going back to the streak of distance if he does come back. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate the call, Lucas, man. Thanks for calling in, man, and I'll, I'll get to you on the other side, man. So thanks so much for calling in, and I'll uh, catch up with you next time, man. Thanks for the call, Lucas. Appreciate you, man. All right, Lucas, uh, Lucas, welcome. Lucas leading off the show. Call in line uh, is open, 205-850-1994, talking about uh, Scott Cochran. So, yeah, and I think um, the one thing that I do disagree with with uh, Lucas, and I appreciate the call, Lucas, man, is just the fact that I think this staff has a lot of hype guys right like just speaking with the staff thus far there's guys that are like certainly amped up and bring that energy and i don't know i think clearly alabama had energy in the past under coach saban but this is different like these guys are i mean I i'm telling you like i'm sure there's a lot of coaches on here or people that have just cruised by you know who was at practice recently was toby toby hit me up and he was like i went to practice the other day there's just so much energy and a lot of it is because of the regentrification or whatever it's just but like shepherd um, you know, Mo Linquist, even Kane Womack. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys definitely have their own hype sense. And I think even Coach Kalen DeBoer has um he's upbeat. He has a really good um aura about him and Clearly, I don't think like energy is something that they need. So I don't know. I mean, who knows about Scott Cochran other than the fact that we just saw him. But I want to talk about uh, kind of the lead off this show is Alabama basketball last night. And I'm sure you guys watched the game. Um, look, these guys are going to the Sweet 16. We owe them some flowers. Let's talk about the game last night and kind of highlight a team that is going to the Sweet 16 under Nate Oates. As you pull up the stats and you look at what Alabama was able to do last night against Grand Canyon, uh, Grand Canyon called the Antelopes. Uh, T, are you there? I am here. What's Hello. up, T? Good morning. Hello. Appreciate Hello. you being here. Um, last night, Alabama is able to beat Grand Canyon, the Antelopes. I, I like I like saying that 
mascot. 72 to 61. Okay, so you look at the stat line, and if you look to the bottom where we're talking about Alabama, you see that Mark Sears posted a double-double. It was his first double-double of the season. He had 26 points, and he had 12 total rebounds, right? Alabama also was led by Rylan Griffin, who had 13 points. Now, um, Mo uh, Diabe down here at the bottom had nine points and actually scored the last nine of, what, their 15 points in that particular game. So Alabama going on to the Sweet 16, the game will be at the Staples Center, right, that's in Los Angeles, and they will take on uh, number one North Carolina. The game will be Thursday night at 8.30 Central Time on CBS. Is that the right time? I got, I got that from the university. Um, Alabama was 70% from the free throw line, but on the other side, Grand Canyon shot just 23 of 37 from the charity stripe and was 62%. Foster um, from the Antelopes shot 16 free throws by himself and only made nine, which is crazy. And uh, Nick Pringle, he was pissed. He got a technical for slamming the clipboard. Nate Oates was pissed. He got a technical as well. That's just the emotion of basketball. Um, I thought Pringle, after that technical, it's crazy what happens kind of after a technical. And I think Nate Oates certainly does that. Steven, what's up, man? Could everybody welcome Steven as a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube? I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for uh, being here, and uh, please welcome Steven. But I think sometimes in basketball, these technicals lead to – um, a bolster of energy. Like it, it's kind of like in baseball, right? When you go and fight with the umpire and you get going and like everybody gets going um, in the dugout. Nate Oates is a genius about this. Now that was an early turnover and, and you even heard him um, talk about uh, to the TV broadcast that he was pissed about the officiating from one side of the court to the other. Uh, so after that technical, uh, things got going for Alabama a little bit, but it wasn't until Nick Pringle got his technical that he got going as well and had that monster dunk uh, last night. Did you guys see? Look, and I posted this last night. You see Mark Sears, when he goes to the free throw line, his mother is on. Uh, she stands up. Her purse is a basketball, and she shoots free throws with him, right? I love it. I posted it on social media, and someone was like, We've been seeing that all year, Kyle. Why are you posting that? You're late to the game. I was like, I like it. I, I mean, what's I, so um, sometimes people are just mad about everything you post. I think it's cool. Plus, I've never seen it in, you know, the, you know, in, in this type of setting. Either way, the kid is killing it. Mark Sears with 26 points as Alabama will now uh, head to take on North Carolina. Fam, I want to get your take inside the comment box. Do you feel that Alabama will beat North Carolina. What's the pulse on this basketball squad? Give me a thumbs up if you think that Alabama has enough fire. You know what? I think they have enough firepower. It's going to come down to more consistency uh, to beat a team like North Carolina. So let me get your take inside the comment box, fam. How do you feel about North Carolina versus Alabama? Thumbs up if you think Alabama will beat uh, the Tar Heels, right? One of the – when you think, like, college basketball – who do you think like the staples are t we were talking about that the other day yeah so i mean i don't watch a ton of basketball but you know just sure yeah that, that's why i the, asked the, you yeah, yeah so the ones that i always think of are like duke unc gonzaga yukon thank you, kansas. kansas right those are yeah. kind of like your pillar teams at ncaa mm -hmm. basketball now um north carolina is certainly up there um but it's um it, and it look this is a uh, i think with alabama playing North Carolina, this is an amazing opportunity for Nate Oates, once again, to showcase his ability from a coaching perspective. It's another great opportunity for Alabama to showcase uh, that this brand is here, that this isn't just like a two-year consecutive deal, three-year, like you look at what Nate Oates has done for Alabama basketball over the last, what, four years that he's been here, it's remarkable. He just got a nice payday getting, you know, past North Carolina in the Sweet 16 in Los Angeles, in the Staples Center. You start to continue to build on the brand of Alabama basketball, which he has clearly done, right? Alabama basketball is here. I think we know that kind of in our ecosystem, but Joe points it out right here. Sweet 16, three of the last four years. Alabama's brand is on the rise, 1 million percent. Um, so getting to the next phase, the Elite Eight, 
um, I think is where this program needs to go. This would be a monumental win for Nate Oates and the Alabama basketball team. This North Carolina team um, is good. As Shane mentions, they're not an overly big team that have that has given Alabama basketball issues in the past or even just recently, right? The teams that I felt that are bigger give Alabama problems. Example would be Florida beating uh, Alabama, what, two out of three times this year. They're a bigger team. They're difficult. They're really strong within the paint. Last year, the downfall of Alabama was when they got caught up with San Diego State. It was a bigger team and eventually bumped them out of the basketball tournament. So I think Mark Sears is playing um, out of his mind. Uh, that three that he pulled up from nearly half court and hit it, that got everybody fired up as well. Uh, Mark Sears is the truth. Honestly, one of the top basketball players in the entire country. And I'll tell you this, um, while we're talking about Alabama basketball, we got a call, uh, I think it's, uh, we got an 832. Uh, I think that's free mic. If you guys want to get uh, everything uh, going for free mic inside uh, the comment box. Um, the fact that Alabama's schedule at the beginning of the season and really their conference schedule overall has had them ready for this point in time. Think about the teams that they have played, right? The Creighton, the Purdue, per, Purdue by the way, looks, I, I, they look unbeatable. Um, you look at the teams that they have played early on in this season. I think that has got them ready for this point in time. So um, Alabama, I believe is two and seven against top 25 teams. They've struggled playing on neutral site settings. They've struggled when playing on the road. All that is erased come the NCAA tournament, right? They went up to Spokane. They were able to play um, in two difficult games. Charleston, look, that team could shoot. Then they're able to beat Grand Canyon. And every single team can beat you at this point in time. We know that. I knew that the Lopes were going to be a tough draw, 100%, right? Why do I know that? Because the, can the cantaloupes, the antelopes, and New Mexico State, they go head-to-head -head all the time. Um, so next up, North Carolina. You welcome on uh, in uh, the Tar Heels, Staples Center. Can't wait to get it going. Uh, I think we got a free mic calling in from uh, Austin. Collect call from the other side. This is Mike in Austin. Good morning. Mike, what's up, man? I appreciate you being here, man. Welcome on in the show, and uh, thanks for calling in, man. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for having me. Welcome back. I haven't seen you for a week or so. For w welcome back, and uh, I've enjoyed listening to the coaches and all that the past week. I think they held down the fort quite nicely. So uh, glad, glad to see you back live, though. Hey, man. As far as the North Carolina game coming up, uh, I want to have to be honest with you, Kyle. Alabama's had a gr a good basketball season. Mm. The Sweet Sixteen. Hey, you can't argue with that. But it's going to be – I'll be surprised if they beat North Carolina. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't know a whole lot about basketball, but I'm just looking at the overall picture. Like, if this was football, I'd be very surprised if North Carolina would beat Alabama in the playoff game. This is basketball. I'd be very surprised if Alabama beats number one seed North Carolina in this game. Possible, but highly unlikely. But they have made the Sweet 16, and so far it's been a great year for NATO. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, it's it's clearly always going to be a tough draw when you get the number one team. But if we look to uh, collectively Alabama basketball, it's really amazing to see where the brand is of Alabama basketball. Because I think like when they first made, you know, the NCAA tournament a couple years ago, people were like, OK, yeah, NATO's doing a good job. We expect Alabama to be here. But now the, the brand is getting that much stronger. So people feel now that an elite eight run is where you need to be. And this is a great opportunity for Nate Oates overall to go head to head with the Tar Heels. Firepower wise, I'm not concerned about it. I mean, this team can score with any team. In fact, they've scored the most points uh, in a collective season going over 100 points uh, more than any other team uh, in NCAA, in SEC history, right? Hitting the 100 point mark like what, like 10 times or whatever it is. Um, look, this team has they they have flaws they they foul too much in this last game the the officiating is what it is um but i think they have enough firepower to get to the elite eight um what what's your take overall about nate oates and kind of where he's brought not only this team but the overall brand of alabama basketball it's definitely trending up, Kyle. I mean, they, they've had two or three good seasons since he's been there. They've made the, the, the uh, playoffs, and now in the Sweet 16, like I mentioned, that, that's, that's a great accomplishment. So definitely trending up. 
But here's what I believe, Kyle, and this this is just my my opinion. It may be not accurate, just my opinion. But, I mean, as far as Bama basketball, I think there's a little bit of a ceiling for them. And the, and the reason I say that is because I mean, it's kind of strange, but Bama's a football school, man. It's a foot. The focus is on football. The emphasis on football. The money's in football. The excitement. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. Basketball's trending up a lot, and 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 there is room for a good basketball program at Alabama. But I look at like you know, like North Carolina, for example, in, in basketball. The, the number one basketball schools, North Carolina, well, their football team is good, but let's be honest, they reach the ceiling, man. They're about a 10-win team, and that's going to be it. That's as far as they're going to do, and that's it. But like I said, it may be an unpopular opinion. But with that being said, Kyle, Bama basketball is trending up, no doubt about it. You can't argue with the Sweet 16. Yep. They have a chance to go to the Elite Eight, and you can't argue with the victory. That, that, that's no doubt about it. So I'm very, very happy about where they're at and definitely rooting for Bama, Bama basketball, no doubt about it. But I think they got their hands full with the number one seed, North Carolina. But we'll see how that plays out. If Bama, Here's what, like I said, Kyle, I don't know much about basketball, but basically if Bama sinks the threes, if they sink their three-pointers, they got a chance to beat North Carolina. If their three-pointers don't fall, then Bama's going to have a hard time beating North Carolina. I mean, that's just the way I see the game. Kyle, as far as, as, far as Scott Cochran goes, because yeah. I know you talked a little bit about Scott Cochran, I'd be surprised if he comes back to Alabama in any kind of official capacity. And the reason why is because he's a Nick Saban man. He's a Kirby Smart mm. man. He's the old regime guy. Yeah. We, th- this is a new era in college in, 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 in Alabama football. This is a new era. So I, I think Cotton Scott Cochran may, may make a guest appearance every now and then. He, he may be a, like an out, outsider coming by to say hi, but I, I doubt seriously he'll be on the payroll at any capacity. Capacity. But I don't think we need the guy. We all have a special place in our hearts for mm. Scott Cochran, but my God, the excitement's there. You look at where we've been in two months, Kyle, from, from getting an uh, uncertainty of a new coach transfer, so like 25 transferring out, of our best players transferring out or whatever, some of them, to so where we're at now with the excitement where we're at now, the recruits we got coming in, our recruiting classes are picking up. I mean, I, I, I here's what I think, Kyle. I think that Kellen DeBoer was the best college football coach hire in all of college football since Nick Saban. Mm. I think we absolutely got either lucky or or this athletic director of Alabama definitely something played out behind the scenes or something. But I think we kind of got lucky because so far everything's looking good. One more thing real quick, kind of let you go. I know this is a wreck. The, I know this is a Bama station. We love Bama, but I wanted to make one comment real quick about the Georgia Bulldog football team. If you look at their schedule, you look at their schedule, I'm predicting that Georgia Bulldogs will take two regular season losses this year. Because, for example, Kyle, Georgia play Bulldogs, they play at Texas, at Alabama, at Tennessee. I, I, I say they're going to lose one of them games, and then all the other games they play with Clemson, which honestly, they can less the first game of the year. Georgia mm. can slip up on that game. And then, then all the others with Florida and South Carolina and all these are, I predict that Georgia's going to lose two regular season games. It's easier, it's, it's harder to stay on top than it is to get on top. And I think that's what Bama experienced for the past 17 years, staying on top is the hardest part. And I think that's kind of where Georgia's at. But it, Anyway, Kyle, that's my rant for the day. Thank you for taking my call, man. Good to see you again, brother, man. Roll Tide. Come on, Bamba basketball. Get her done. Rooting for you 100%. Take care, my good man. Good luck. God bless. Roll Tide. All right. Roll Tide to you, man. That's uh, Mike calling in uh, from Austin. Uh, we appreciate uh, Mike calling in. You guys getting the free thumbs, the the free mic uh, emojis inside the comment box. My name is Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys being here. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, like and subscribe now at 105,000 subscribers, uh, which actually is just 2,000 more uh, people than Brian Denny Stadium, which is amazing to think about, right? Um, we got uh, two more calls uh, lined up in the call queue, a 540 and a 404. Uh, we'll take the 540 starting right now in 321. Hey, good morning. Thanks for calling in. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? Hey, this is Glenn Martin. I'm calling in from Rocky Mount, Virginia. What's up, Glenn? I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much for joining the show. I hope you're off to a really good start here on Monday. Uh, welcome to the show, man. Take it away. 
Yeah, man. Uh, love the show. First time caller. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited about basketball because I feel like we got a lot of good players. They played good last night. The defense was the best we've seen all season. And we know we can score, so I don't know. Alabama's a football school, school, and now it's turned into where it's a basketball school and a football school. I love it. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier is the fact that the brand, and it, and I think it's very important to sell the overall brand. And that's why Nate Oates, Nate Oates obviously got a contract extension and a pay raise because of what he's been doing record-wise and yearly. But also, a lot of this is about the brand. And Alabama's brand of basketball has been pretty much mediocre over the last, you know, I don't know, before Nate Oates came. Even the first couple of years, you know, it's taken him a little bit yeah. to get here. He beats North Carolina. Carolina at the Staples Center, a number one seed. Um, you know, th this brand of Alabama basketball is going to continue to rise. He's done a great job recruiting. He's working the transfer portal um, really nicely. The guy can clearly coach. And the, the signs of a good coach is when people start to poach your coaching staff. Right, because they want bits and pieces. They know they right. can't get you. They know they can't afford that eighteen million dollar buyout. But they want pieces of the staff, pieces of that mentality. You saw what happened over seventeen years of Coach Saban, right? Um, you know, I I barely yeah. covered the same uh, offensive coordinator since I was here, and now I've covered the team. You know, for this is my eighth season, right? I I think the I only had one uh, consecutive offensive uh, coordinator back to back. So that, that's a sign of yeah. a good basketball coach. And you continue to see that. What Nate Oates is doing um, has been fire. People love it. People love Alabama basketball. This is, of course, going to be a, a challenge taking on North Carolina. They're going to be the underdogs. That's fine. It doesn't matter. This is March Madness. Um, so happy to see it. And plus, look, we have to highlight as well the play of Mark Sears. Um, I still think in, in the notoriety that he gets is good and people are starting to hype him up. But what he's done this season is pretty damn impressive. I was surprised last night to see the Swiss's first uh, double double this season, 26 points, 12 rebounds. Um, did you see when he pulled up from like before? I don't know. He was like pff, almost at half court when he pulled up for that three. Did you see that by chance, Glenn? Yeah, yeah. Was it when Estrada passed it to him? Yeah, and he was like, basically, he just like crossed half court and he just pulled up and just buried it. Yeah. I hope Estrada has a good game, man. He, he's he got a real good feel for the game, and he's one of the best ball handlers we got. But it's like sometimes his shots just don't hit. Mm. But he, I'm waiting for him to have a good game. Yeah, and what's what's your take on Pringle? I know he he's he's emotional. Clearly, there's always something going on, you know, like off the what off the court or whatever. He's been suspended. He you know last night he gets his clipboard and yeah. slams it down. Once he can control, maybe it's not even about controlling his emotions. It's about unleashing him because I, I mean when when yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty good. I mean he, he's emotional, but sometimes yeah, I, I like care him. right. I know I kind of like him too. I kind of like that nastiness. I don't. I mean I don't know why yeah. I do. I think if uh, Nelson needs to be a little more like Pringle, and then we'd be set. And and that was the thing. So last night, early in the in the first half of that game, I mean, Nick Pringle, what is he? Is he six eleven? Is he six nine, six eleven? Whatever the it's two inches difference. I think so. Yeah. Right. So he he has that nice block, and that was you know that that got people going at the beginning. Um, he's he's not a physical inside player, and that's not part of his game. Um, if there was kind of if you're playing like devil's advocate on him, you wish he was a little bit more had that like dominating presence, but that's not him. And sometimes you know basketball, you can yeah. like, this exists. Uh, Louis is saying he's six ten. Thank you. Um, but anyways, I mean th this team has enough firepower. That's not the issue. Like you said, if Estrada gets hot, Sears is hot. Shoot, even Nelson gets hot from the outside. Like these guys can score. They've done it what 10, 11, tw uh, 11 times a season, scored over 100. That's not the issue. Um, I think yeah. it's uh, battling teams that are good inside and more physical than them. That is, you know, th those are the teams that beats this Alabama team. But I think North Carolina, and I have any, Jarvis usually has the line for this game. Usually they might not even ha have it out yet. I would imagine that North Carolina is what, like a four and a half point favorite. I, I have no idea. Um, anything Maybe. else? Anything else, Glenn? What we got you on? I, well, that, I think that's about it. But I'm excited for the football season, man. Kalen DeBoer I, and his assistants, man. I, 
feel good about the coaching this year, and I think we're going to have a really good year. Hell yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. You know, we haven't even really talked about uh, football um, on the show, and we're a football channel, but, you know, I have to give Alabama basketball their flowers. But, uh, you know, we're talking about a lot of the, the – some of the football talk has been about Scott Cochran, and I've kind of translated that to energy. The energy here at Alabama is there. You can feel it pulsating throughout the program. Um, and I think that has spilled over into even recruiting because people were saying that – Alabama, you know, they, they couldn't recruit like they did under Coach Saban. Well, Coach Kalen DeBoer, he has six commitments that he's brought in in the month of March, right? And think about where he's brought in the yeah. commits from, right? You have Daryl Johnson from Georgia. You have Derek Smith from Bama. You have Antonio Coleman, who flipped from Auburn to Bama. You have Zymir Smith way up in Maryland. You went all the way to the West Coast to get Abdul Sanders from Los Angeles. Then you go back to Georgia and you get Luke Metz, who's a four-star on Rivals.com. So Alabama is currently ranked sixth in the country in recruiting and second in the SEC in recruiting. So clearly, Coach Kalen DeBoer can recruit this area um, as well as across yeah. the nation. Anytime you go into Coach Loxley's backyard and you can pull someone from Maryland or you can still maintain your West Coast ties and bring in someone from Los Angeles, I like it. Anything else, Glenn? Hey, that's it. I appreciate it and uh, hope you call in again. And roll tide. All right, roll tide, team man. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, uh, Glenn, uh, with a really yeah. good call uh, from up uh, up in Virginia. We got a four hundred four coming next. Patriot Live doing his thing, what he always does, and that is hooking up um, our fans that are watching the show with five football fan memberships. T, how does that work? So, if you want to join Bama Football on YouTube, you can just hit the link pinned at the top of the chat, or you can go to the homepage and get to it from there. Yeah, I appreciate it. And by the way, that's Taylor, our producer, and much more than that right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And that is Patriot Life uh, with his avatar, and he's got the undefeated hat. The undefeated merch, uh, if you want to get the undefeated merch, um, the links are at the bottom of these videos. Uh, T, um, Jay Townsend just sent in another photo of him in the gear. Um, so can we get that added to our gear yes. page whenever we can? And this is what the gear looks like. So our fan funders um, and the chat overall is called the undefeated. Okay, so uh, viewers like you, they support us. Um, the, the gear is great, right? Like you can get the gear and rock the gear, but being a fan funder and a supporter, like you literally support us. Like we are supported by viewers like you um, right here on Bama Football on YouTube. So if you want to become a part of the Undefeated, that's cool. If you want to super chat, if you want to become a fan funder, if you're not in any of those positions, just hit the thumbs up. It's always free to watch, but it's not free to produce. Um, and uh, T, what's the schedule looking like the rest of the day right here on Bama Football on YouTube? So we have coming up next, we have Merrill and Ty for the next two hours. And then at 12 o'clock, we have Smook. And then tonight, we have Jarek and Merrill kicking it off. And then Sean and then Smook ending at 8. Hell yeah. I, I love it. And look, Patriot Live another doing his 10, thing as well. Yeah, five. another 10. Um, man, so basically, you get when, when you get become a fan funder, you get access to the different emojis. Uh, Undefeated, can you show the emojis that you could use um, if you're a fan funder? Um, and then also, uh, you get access, special access. Like when I post videos, I post them earlier for the fan friends to see. Um, I haven't done that in a couple of days just because, um, you know, we've been doing our live shows and you know what, to be honest, and, and I'll get to you in just a second, 404, uh, my bad. Let me finish this out. Um, it's been, you know, an adjustment getting to how coach Kellen DeBoer and his staff conducts the press conferences because of the fact they don't do them all the time in the podium. So with Coach Saban, it was so rhythmic, right? But now they'll tell you, they're like, oh, he's in the field house. So you got to take your, and, and the most important thing is the audio. So you're plugging into boxes, you're making sure like different things so you have quality audio. Because usually I think what they're used to is like, a, it's a huge, there's like 50 people that get around Coach Kelly DeBoer. Imagine getting the audio, like your phone will not do it, right? So we got to like try to get microphones. And by the way, um, I oh, appreciate it, man. Son, uh, son, son, getting the smoothie fun, man. Grab one on me, fam. I appreciate you, man. In fact, I just had a smoothie this morning. You did? Yeah. It was a, a vegan protein, um, egg whites and almond milk. I know. I know. People are like disgusting. You know, they're not that bad. <laughs> I've, I've tried it. No, they're not. No, not th that bad. no. Yeah. It's, you know, 
I'm 40 now. I have to like watch. <laughs> <laughs> LA is like, thank you for the gifted membership. And by the way, Patriot Life has taken care of 15 people right now. Insane. So and make sure your account is uh, open to get gifts, right, T? Yes, you can uh, click on the gifted membership at, right at the top of where Patriot Life just did it. And you should see some settings where you can turn on um, your settings to be able to receive gifts if you don't have it on already. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you so much to Sun Sun and Patriot Life uh, for giving out 15 uh, gifts. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, and we go uh, to the phone lines again with uh, the 404. Hey, what's going on? You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? Morning, Kyle. Hey, this is Coach Al. From, uh, from Georgia. How you doing? Hey, what's man? up, Coach? I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this fine Monday morning, man. Welcome to the show, and uh, um, come on with it, man. Good to hear from you. <laughs> You're 40? <laughs> yeah. <a> break. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I. Uh, so I'll be, well, I'll be 41 this year, uh, you know, in November. So I turned oh, wow. 40. Yeah, okay. so I turned 40 uh, uh, last year. So, you know, it, it's... Uh, Look, I, I like it. I'm embracing it. It feels good, but, you know, back's a little stiff sometimes, you know, <laughs> getting out there is a little bit, <laughs> takes a little bit more to warm up, <laughs> but, you know, here, here we are. <laughs> hey, hey Cal, I tell them, man, look, I tell people all the time, I stopped counting candles a long time ago, man. It's, <laughs> it's really not how old you are. It's, it's how you feel. People ask me all the time, Cal, say, say, Coach, how old are you, man? I, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, but it, it's good. You know, I, I feel real good and, um, you know, happy for, happy for the health that we got, you know, that's, you're, you're not entitled to like good health or anything like that. So, um, here we, here we are. Uh, but anyways, man, I know it's been a minute since yeah. we got to chop it up. So welcome to the show, man, where you want to take it. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Please. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, you know, about the about the game, you know, uh, Alabama's basketball team this year, I think they've overachieved in a great way. I mean, mm. they, they they played a really scrappy team last night. And uh, and one of the things that blew me away is that they broke the school record for most points scored in a single season. Mm. I mean, that that was just one thing this team here, can, they can really put some points on the board. So uh, that means that, you know, in, in, in the tournament, they can, they can get on fire and play with anybody, you know. So um, I love it. That team, the, the explosive of this team. But one thing that I, I want to bring out here too is that NATO signed a new contract, and um, I do think that in the course of that discussions and all of that, you know, nobody's talked about this. It's been talked about around town, but I think a new arena might be in the mix. Okay, uh, and that's that's facilities. You know, that's that's recruiting. That's the whole vibe. That's we're taking this program to another level. Uh, I think all of that comes into play with, with Coach Nate. Uh, I think all of that's in play, you know. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on, I think, you know, uh, for our basketball team. Uh, you know, uh, but you touched on it earlier about one of the Achilles heels for this team is that our low post efficiency. We we just get pushed around the box by our times and, and teams that can pound it down low. Uh, Tennessee did that to us. And Auburn did that to us, you know. Uh, we just don't have a lot of depth down there. And guys that are physical, that can match mm. that physicality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that's one of the things Carolina's going to definitely do. They're going to pound the rock down in the box and just you no know, drive and kick and stuff. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a good game. I think we come to play, you know. Uh, you know, but one of the things I wanted to bring out, though, Kyle, before, I, I'm not going to stay long, but I mentioned that to Sean yesterday because, you know, we chat offline and stuff. Cole Kublick has a show. It comes on Sunday. They mm -hmm. do reviews and stuff. But the Cole brought out yesterday, and I think a lot of people tiptoe around this out of due respect for the GOAT. Uh, that, 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 that it is different in that building. Okay? Um, Coach Coach DeBoer has brought it a whole different vibe as it relates to access. I mean, you guys, with you and Smoop yeah. uh, out there, you know, the interview players, I mean, we feel it on, on our end. Mm -hmm. just the but in the building, you guys got to feel it, man, because mm -hmm. you got access that you haven't had, okay? The vibe with the players is translated over into recruiting. And I know I've been out there, man, in the business. Recruiting is a popularity contest, mm -hmm. okay? And these kids talk. Coaches mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. And 
I know the momentum is building. So, hey, man, there is something new, something fresh going on in Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. And, hey, listen, we ain't dropping off. I can promise you that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to get on to this board. Everybody wants to get on board now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you comment on that, but Cole put it out there yesterday. He had some other comments with uh, Miro and, and the kid that went to Ohio State with the snaps. We, I don't call his name. Uh, he talked about that, too, but I, I won't break it up. But the thing that Cole pointed out, so I know I've been feeling from what you and Smoke been putting out there, mm -hmm. is the vibe in the field. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know what, That's it was a really good strategy. for, And I didn't think about this before it took place, but Coach Kalen DeBoer coming in and opening – up kind of um, Alabama football. And, it, and I don't think it's a bad thing. Honestly, like when we go to practice, it's still hard to see like the, the guys actually practicing. Like it's, they let you in, but they just kind of let you feel the energy. But like the quarterbacks are working on the far side of the field, throwing the other way. I haven't even really seen the wide receivers other than a couple times, just because they're on the far side. They're probably like 200 yards to the right. Um, you can get a little bit of taste of the offensive line and then um, defensive line when we can see them. They're basically just hitting a bag. That's it, right? Um, we really haven't seen any of a 11 on 11. They'll have their first scrimmage this Thursday. But getting to your point about kind of opening things up, we can now talk to the assistant coaches, which I think this is probably the most uh, dynamic part of this strategic approach is it's just not because, look, Kane, uh, Kaylin DeBoer, you're like, all right, yeah, great. Love his message. Seems like a great guy. But if you're a recruit, if you're a player of a recruit, if you are in kind of the circle of this recruit, like a, you know, uh, a trainer, whatever, you get to hear these additional assistant coaches speak to the media. They're sending messages out. You're getting to hear different players sending their message out and you can feel that energy. Honestly, you can. I mean, they, it's been really nice to be able to talk to Colin Hitchler, um, Kane Womack, um, you know, Mo Lindquist, um, uh, uh, Christian Robinson, honestly. So, and these videos are viewed in the thousands and recruits see them. They feel comfortable with it. Um, they got a really great thing going on, 100%. And that's just, that's not like fan, you know, excitement or whatever. Like, this is really special. And the fact that he's been able to have a really good uh, march recruiting wise, I think speaks volumes on that. Now, recruiting makes people happy for sure, but that has to translate to the field. He can't do that yet because we're in the month of March, but he's doing what he can. Um, and that's, this is the time for recruiting and building up your team for a day. He's doing that. How he works the transfer portal, I can't wait because, you know, so far, you know, he, he's been doing a great job recruiting, transfer portal, getting Caden Proctor back, which we haven't even really talked about, um, is really impressive. And to see who he'll bring in um, on April 15th, I think, uh, is even more excitement and just overall college football in general. Anything else, Coach Al, while we have you on? Yeah, man. You know, one thing about Coach Mo, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what, I – Man, hearing that guy, man, I was ready to play. I was, I'm was, i telling you, I think Coach Moe's going to bring back the ride-out mentality, that dog mentality at receiver. I, I just – I mean, otherwise you're not going to play for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bottom line. Yep. Okay? I mean, I, I love the energy that this guy brings, not just for his position, but for everybody else in the warm-up, you know, in, in, in this stretch, you know. I, I mean, this guy, I'm telling you, he's special. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, but thanks for having me on, Kyle. And, yeah. you know, I hooked up with Merrill offline. I love the guy, man. Merrill and I have had some really <laughs> uh, great dialogue about life. You know, he's a great guy, a great addition to the team, to the fam. Man, I so appreciate what you guys are doing over there, man, uh, in a holistic way, not just about Alabama yeah, football. Yeah, for sure. But just the quality of people that you surround yourself with, Kyle, man. You know, so just more power to you and T and the whole staff, man. I love the show, love the channel, man. You guys are awesome. I'm going to say that. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, Coach Allen. We'll talk again, man. Appreciate you, man. Have a have a good rest of your Monday, man. No doubt. All right, take it easy. Uh, Coach Al uh, calling in from Georgia by way of Tuscaloosa, um, always with some really good dialogue. And he was saying, um, you know, kind of on the back end about Coach Merrill uh, linking up with him. It's been great. You know, I know if I'm not online, you guys are supporting um, who I've put online, who me and T have decided to put online. Um, I mean, think about the line. Like, Ty crushes it. He does great. Merrill, and they're all so different, right, T? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Got each of these content creators, they have their different style. Yeah, and they, they all have, like, different, um, you know, like, Smook's really good at recruiting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
different people are really good at breaking down plays, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, I think it's a very yeah, like Coach Sean, you know, and and even his delivery is different. How he speaks to the undefeated, Coach Smook has that energy. I mean, he's honestly he's been doing a really good job here on campus. He's aggressive. He gets in. He asks questions. He'll bring in anybody. Like when we talked to Christian Miller, Christian Miller was like down the way, and he was like, I'm gonna go get Christian Miller, and he just went and like just brought him on the show. So and if he sees like a group of people at campus he'll just be like he'll go up to him and be like hey we're from bam football on youtube subscribe and let's all take a picture together so and people honestly like every single time smook and i are walking into the practice facility there was a bus a student but like uh, a bus that like students ride they stopped and they opened up the door and they're like kyle and smook what's up uh, last night i took my uh t and i we took my little girl to michael's we were working on some art projects and um, a guy came up to me and he's like, love your show, man. Appreciate it. Uh, doing a really good job. So, um, you know, the staff is great. And I appreciate you guys supporting them. Merrill does a great job. Ty, uh, Jarek, um, you know, so everybody, what's up, man? And we see you inside uh, the uh, chat, the champ. Welcome on in, man. Appreciate you being here. And uh, there was somebody up top, T, that went to the basketball game last night. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Hacker Music? We see you inside, and I think we got Trainwreck in there, it, too. Where was the game last night? Spoke Spokane, Spokane yeah. Wow. Oh, Josh. I went to my first tournament last night. Man, what a game. The whole arena was rooting for Grand Canyon. The best part, how quiet they got at the end. <laughs> right, I bet. And best believe, I let them know. Dang, that's that's really cool. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, Josh, that's that's awesome, man. The, the game was in uh, Spokane, Washington. So I don't know, like where you were regionally and how you're able to go to that game. Somebody was at, asked how, you know, why was there so many Grand Canyon fans? I guess Arizona to Washington, maybe there was a... Yeah, and, it, and there <laughs> were because I, I saw videos this morning of mm -hmm. their student section and they travel really well, it seems. They, yeah, they were hyped. I, yeah, I so. saw, I think on al.com yeah I think that's they I send think they send uh like their video staff clearly they have a bigger budget than us i would tell you now we're not we learned a lot from going to the rose bowl <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a little expensive um but uh thanks paul i appreciate it but i realized uh um oh web is saying kyle did you see that josh pate said there's more massive news involving bama you know what? I'm not. I'm not really surprised. Um, it's exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> it's so cool. Every single channel out there is is supported by Bama. Like even if you don't like, I was counting on three's national channel. They've done 15 Alabama videos in 14 days. So now they're they're just they're doing a video every day. Yeah, they're a Bama. And like channel. Uh, exactly because think about it, they can't say they can't talk about Iowa. They can't talk about Florida. Yeah, I mean, they can't talk about North Carolina. Doesn't get the engagement. Exactly. All it is, and that's like the brand is. Oh, like it's like YouTube. Bama's the hook. Bama is like the YouTube football. Mm -hmm. It drives, but they have to because they can't be. They can't just talk Bama. Right. So they have to. They be like, damn it, I gotta talk Purdue today. Mm -hmm. So like you know, JD Pacal, who does a great job, he'd be like, five reasons why Purdue is to watch, and then be like, all right, thank God that video's done. <laughs> So, um, exactly. 100%. It's all about the clicks. 100%. And there's some good people that cover the team outside of the ecosystem. But, like, there's a lot of people, like, aren't here. Like, they don't go to Tuscaloosa. So, that's why it's always interesting to hear their perspective when they're, they don't go to practice. Yeah. They just, like, they're from New York or from Nashville. They don't come here, but they talk about the team. Yeah. Like, they don't even talk to the coaches. Because yeah, they don't have Zooms anymore. Like, you have to be here. Like, Smook moved from Virginia to come over here. Um, let's see. Uh, Josh Miller, get that on the screen. Oh, all right. Let's put that on, T. I live in Tacoma. Oh, that's cool. Um, a little bird told me that they paid for the student set. No way. I think they would be smart to do that. Seriously, Can they that would be smart. Huh. Or at least rearrange our student section. So it's Well, you, you know. know what? So... I remember when Alabama played in the national title game against uh, Clemson, mm -hmm. what they did, and maybe they structured, you know, a more direct flights. I don't know where Grand Canyon is, somewhere like in Phoenix, probably, right? They probably did like a Phoenix to Spokane direct flight and sent all the students or, you know, maybe some buses. Or, it's still a great distance. Yeah. I know this, I'm, you know, from the West. Anyways, what for what they did um, was the airlines had direct flights from San Jose to Birmingham. 
Oh, okay. Which clearly doesn't yeah. exactly. So, uh, you know, in I don't even know right now if there's a Birmingham to Los Angeles direct. There's mm -hmm. not. You got to go to Atlanta and then fly across, yeah. right? Yeah. But I bet you, in di I would be curious. At least a couple of flights. You know, maybe today would be the great. You know, today through Thursday, mm -hmm. or you know. I bet they. I bet they do that, right? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, for football they do. Obviously. Yeah, we have to uh, uh, look it up. Um, James, what's up, man? What I hear is the students were offered a ticket and a charter flight for I think twenty. No way, dang, that's crazy. Huh. That's a, a good intel, James. That's a uh, crazy. What's up, Stephen? Good morning, team man. I appreciate you being here, man. Paul is saying best Bama lineup. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. I mean, there's so many Bama channels, you know, out there. Everybody's you know putting in the work trying to, you know, do different things in regards to their Alabama content. It's cool. I love it. I I honestly, you know, it's going to be interesting to see kind of in the future if the subscription sites will still be what they are because of them that much free content. Mm -hmm. It's all on Twitter or Instagram, right? Oh, like, and think about how Twitter has impacted mm -hmm. everything, right? Be, and there's few people who are monetized on Twitter. Right. And, and from a company standpoint, when you tweet that info out, who makes money on it? I mean, Twitter. <laughs> right? So like, let's say, let's say we sent me to Spokane. Uh -huh. Okay, and I just tweeted all the information, mm -hmm. and we paid for it. Yeah, I don't, it would be a big red, yeah, right? Like yeah. we'd be in the red. Um, and so we wouldn't make any money off of it. So exactly. Yeah. I don't know how they're how that's working. And like we couldn't have our fan funders on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like our fan funders want the content here on YouTube. Right. So, anyways, we run our race and we do what's best for our business. Honestly, that's why we have to stick within our specific ecosystem which is our sponsors our fan funders and our watch time on youtube mm -hmm. that's it like i'm not going to tweet my life away and i'm not going to do things that don't make sense financially so i just I, I can't do that i can't afford it you know yeah, i mean it's it's a business at the end it's a business for sure 100 percent um i don't know what happened to our sponsors there at the bottom t so um anyways um coming up next i think you have uh i, I always forget the schedule is it ty is he yeah next? it's um ty and meryl for the next two right. hours and then we have smook all right cool um what i wanted to uh address uh again the call line is open if you wanted to uh chat so luke metz committed uh yesterday right he came in he's a three star on all three a three star on 24 7 Underneath that ESPN icon, he's ranked as a four-star on Rivals. Um, this is an interesting pickup. So a uh, six foot three, two hundred and twenty pounds, came to Tuscaloosa, and according to Andrew Bone, um, who has his foot on the pulse of recruiting, uh, he goes out to dinner to Chuck's. Um, you can read those articles on On Three. Um, he went out to Chuck's with Kane Womack and um, Christian Robinson. And, um, you know, decides to come home to Tuscaloosa. So he's a 20, uh, 2025 uh, prospect. And what's impressive to me is how Coach Kaylin DeBoer has really had things going up in. Uh, Fred, what's up, man? Appreciate the super chat. He's like, just saying. Appreciate it, man. I like the fact what he's done, done in the month of March. Because I think this has really been Coach Kaylin DeBoer as well as the staff their first um, real big opportunity to showcase what they can do recruiting from Tuscaloosa. Because I think the first month was kind of like all over the place. Then there was a dead period. So now you can host prospects. You can showcase this new brand. And um, Luke Metz is physical. Like he's got physical hands. He's a thumper. He'll be an inside linebacker. I like what he's coming coming with. And then the other thing on compounded on, on top of this is – how Coach Kalen DeBoer has recruited across the nation, but also regionally. Because one of the biggest questions I think I even posed this was, how is he going to be able to recruit in the Southeast, being that you know he hasn't coached here? Clearly, it hasn't mattered. What he was able to do was retain some coaches who clearly have ties to this area, but also add on coaches that have ties to this area. Kane Womack, right? He, he was down in South Alabama. Freddie Roach, he's from here. Um, uh, Christian Robinson, he's from he's in the SEC, like he's built by the SEC. So, and then you look what he's been able to do uh, national. Stephen, right now we're staying. I guess like you could say he's a three star consensus wise, but he's a four star on rivals. 
So um, how it reads right now, and these are the, just the six guys that uh, Kalen DeBoer has added um, in the month of March is you have uh, Daryl Johnson from Georgia. He's a four-star athlete, four-star receiver, Derek Smith. He's from Selma, uh, four-star uh, defense lineman, Antonio Coleman. He was a flip from Auburn. And then you also have four-star athlete, Zamir Smith from Maryland. Uh, you have um, four-star linebacker, Abdul Sanders from California, Los Angeles. And then you have uh, Luke Metz from Georgia. Now, Alabama is currently, um, I think they're sixth uh, on the on three. And again, I'm not like, I, I said this a million times, I'm not paid by on three um, they're, you know, I, I just like their interface. I don't like get kickbacks from any of them. It just makes more sense to me. Like, you know, looking at their stuff. Um, so this is how, and, and you can look at 24 seven arrivals, whatever, all those, you know, sites have the same stuff, but this is just how, um, can we go, can you move that, uh, bumper at the bottom T please? Currently, these are the rankings, um, produced by on three. So Ohio state, is number one in the recruiting rankings and they have man they have three five stars and they have four four stars damn that's a damn good class so far um then you have lsu brian kelly um he has three five g's and eight four stars and usc they I, what they have like four commitments yesterday that was crazy they had a monster day yesterday um they have two five stars two four stars this is pretty impressive those top three for sure uh dabble sweeney has 10 four stars um, Notre Dame has 10 four stars as well. Man, they already have 18 commitments. That's crazy. Um, in Alabama right here, um, number six, no five stars yet from this class of 2025, uh, six four stars and two three stars. So that's how it looks recruiting wise um, as of uh, March. But, you know, um, you know, there's been so many times that, you know, when you talk recruiting, I remember there's been times, I think when Alabama, remember, <laughs> when was it? Probably Jor probably remembers this. <laughs> like a couple of years ago, we would be in April and Alabama had like two commitments and people were like, saving sucks. And like, <laughs> they were like, and I was kind of, I was like, Ooh, this is, this looks kind of a little bit bumpy. And then he landed the number one recruiting class. Right. Like it was correct because like June, you kind of go back and, you know, it's like a down month, like for everybody. Mm -hmm. There's just no, there's not, not a lot to talk about. And then I remember because I was, Bone and I were working together at the time and be like, Damn. it'd be like five commitments and you'd be like at a barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're like, like, just give me a break today. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, uh, so I don't, you know, the recruiting will happen. These guys are clearly and uh yeah we bring in uh ty hayes man ty give us a thumbs up man if you're ready to roll all right we bring in uh ty what's up ty what's going on my man how you doing i uh, appreciate you being here man yeah we're just you know recapping um alabama basketball last night and uh we we're talking about recruiting and you know <laughs> i posted uh just a graphic that it's pretty it's actually pretty impressive and i think you even tweeted about this yesterday usc what they did how many guys did they land yesterday three four they landed justice terry isaiah gibson hilton Stubbs, and gus cordova for yeah but but is that going to be enough to retain juju lewis and i and here's the interesting <laughs> thing um I'm super excited to see about their defensive line coach, Coach Henderson. I actually did a dive into him yesterday morning, right? Like, whenever I saw Justice Terry flip, I was yeah. like, okay, that's interesting. Who mm -hmm. Who is this coach? Well, Coach Henderson yeah. out there, the defensive line coach, played college football, played in the NFL, coached mm -hmm. in the NFL. This is a guy that coached Aaron Donald, Vaughn yeah, Miller, he's... like – and he had Aaron Donald personally vouching for him, being like, nah, this guy took my game, like, no. heck of a defensive line coach. And yeah. I don't know if y'all heard, Aaron Donald was his personal guest at USC this past weekend with all these wow. recruits. And Donald was out there being like, nah, this is a dude. So mm -hmm. imagine you're Justice Terry, and the best defensive lineman in the NFL is looking at you saying, nah, that's the coach right there. That's the coach yep. that, got, that, that got us right. Wow. It's it's going to be interesting to see what USC does next. Um but they they got two big commitments out of Georgia, one mm -hmm. big commitment out of Florida and a and a commitment out of Texas. Yeah. 
No, it's impressive for sure. I mean, um, you know, clearly in the early recruiting rankings, you know, they're making noise. Ohio State uh, making noise as well. They also have three five stars. And then you have Brian Kelly, who's landed three five stars as well. I was surprised to see, uh, looking at the rankings this morning, that Notre Dame already has 18 commitments. They always do this. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not even April. I was just telling everybody in the undefeated that, you know, there's been times covering Alabama where they've had like two commitments in April and then things heat up when you have your cookouts or whatever. So, um, look, a long way to go. But I think what Coach Kalen DeBoer has done within the month of, of March has been pretty impressive. Uh, Luke Metz jumps on board yesterday. Um, he's a sixth commitment this month. Alabama now ranks sixth in re- recruiting rankings. Um, and, you know, if, if you've watched Metz's film, and I know Coach Smook had a great breakdown on him, very physical. Um, 6'3", 220. I think he checked in at 223 pounds uh, during his visit here in, in Alabama. And he, he's going to come back to Bama, you know, over these next couple weeks and, of course, during A-Day or whatever. But it's been an impressive uh, month of March for recruiting for Coach Kalen DeBoer. And clearly that new energy is spilling over, guys coming in. I really like the additions of Abdul Sanders um, and Luke Metz. Um, I'm excited about those two guys. And I like the fact that he's been able to recruit um, – in this SEC ecosystem, but also kind of spreading your wings to Maryland and to Los Angeles. I think it kind of gives you an overall approach. And I think quarterback wise, I don't think Juju Lewis is out of the equation. That would either. break the internet. Um, you know, uh, Josh Pate said there's more news, you know, coming with Alabama. What does that mean? I have no idea, but there's always something with Alabama football and I can't wait to see what happens. But um yeah, and, and we talked about uh, the basketball game last night and um, kind of just the overall brand of Alabama. It's just one thing after another. And you can't forget about, you know, the baseball team and all the great things going on here at Alabama. But uh, let, let's talk. Do we have a graphic for Ty's show? Um, it's going on with Meryl. Okay. All right. So we got Meryl rolling up. Uh, oh, we got Meryl. Uh, Meryl's. What's up, Meryl? Let's get Meryl on, too. Meryl, Yo, what's up? Man? What's going on? What's going yeah. on? I love what you guys are just saying. A second ago that was very interesting <laughs> yeah um i mean t- yesterday um you know you get luke metz to jump on board i'm sure you have time to watch this film or maybe you haven't um and then usc kind of you know garnered the headlines yesterday with landing you know um some big time prospects so welcome on in man i hope you guys have a, a really good segment please support uh, Ty and Merrill, these guys crush it. We got Smoot coming on as well on the back end. We're all a part of Bama football on YouTube, along with T, uh, much more than just our producer. So, you know, we all make the wheels go around. Please support them and all the content right here on Bama football on YouTube. Fellas, have a great show. Please support them undefeated. And uh, I'll talk with you guys soon right here on Bama football on YouTube. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Kyle Henderson. Thank you for kicking us off. T in the background, thank you for everything you do. This this is impossible without three individuals, and one of them is more than an individual, but you'll get my point. Three individuals that make this possible. It's not me. It's T in the background. It's Kyle for having the platform, and it's all of you in the undefeated. That's what makes this go. That's what gives me the opportunity to come in here. That's what gives Merrill the opportunity to come in here. Coach Smoot, Coach Sean, Coach Jay, like all of us, it really allows us to come in here, have a great time. And -hmm. that's what it's all about. So a special shout out to everybody in the undefeated, a special shout out to Kyle and T in the background. Hope y'all enjoyed. I I think y'all were on a vacation not too long ago. I haven't gotten to talk to Kyle since then. I hope they enjoyed that vacation. But Jake, how you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm good. And and you're spot on Ty. I mean, it's, it's awesome jumping in. I love listening to Kyle. I love listening to all the guys, honestly, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, I saw the fireworks go off right when you said that it was, it was that epic. It was perfect. I tell you what, man, I was like Come on. on the money. It's boom. <laughs> I don't know how to make but, it happen anymore, <clears throat> but I love it. I love tea in the background. And you know the chat and all you guys who come in and watch our show, like in each one of our segments as we go through the day. And, and yeah, you and me have done something different, and it's been a lot of fun, man. Like, oh, yeah. I love this. I love combining up with Ty in the mornings and, and doing this thing. We, we, uh, we enjoy it. So you guys get us a little longer through the, through the, the part of your day. You know what I'm saying? Peace out. Oh, oh that's, that's, oh, a, that's a bad one. You don't yeah, want no, that that's, one, man. That's, that's, that's no good. No good. No good. I look but, like the um, next germ. <laughs> that's what i was thinking last time you did it, man 100 yeah, that was it you know so 
Um, but gosh, you know, it, it's it's uh, cool to be on with you guys. Make sure you hit those thumbs up, subscribe, become a fan funder, and appreciate our sponsors down below. Do, 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 do. Uh, appreciate you guys, and uh, and we'll jump right into it this morning. And I see everybody in the chat, and I also want to say hi to all y'all. Coach Al, I heard you this morning. Really appreciate you, man. 100% your calling was great. I appreciate the love. And, and just everybody, like I said, everybody brings that, you know, and, and T said it best, everyone brings like a unique difference. So, um, which is what we're seeing with uh, the kind of the coaching staff and recruiting, <laughs> which, which is, I mean, Ty, you hit it on the head. If you weren't going to say why USC got the two guys they got is well, just like that, you know, because like for Isaiah Gibson, right? He was like just on campus. Um, and, and, and shoot, so is Ty Hilton, which I'm, an, I'm interesting to see. Uh, or sorry, Hilton Stubbs. I'm sorry, Ty. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking Ty Hayes. Well, Ty no, Hayes in, in camp, fairness, Hilton Stubbs, in yeah. fairness, I, and this isn't related. Did you know T.Y. Hilton has a son that's about to be in college? Uh, I did hear about that. Yes. That's, that mm -hmm. blows my mind. Anyways, neither yep. here nor there. It is, cr it is crazy. I mean, it's just like, uh, what's his name's kid last year, you know, from Ohio state. So yeah, Marvin Harrison jr. Is yeah, about Marvin to go Harrison to the league. And I remember watching Marvin Harrison on the Colts. Like that just seems <laughs> like yesterday time flies. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I agree, Josh, I hear you, man. Josh just said, said something funny, Jake, we need to get you a, your white back background updated. Yeah. I do need to do a better background. hundred percent. Maybe I'd get a green screen, do something different, you know, make it look, make it look better. Sorry guys. I know it's it that that is brutal, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, maybe that does make a huge difference when you got like some of these said guys coming out. And on top of that, you know, you look at from a recruiting standpoint, I I still feel really good about recruiting. I feel oh, yeah. phenomenal, honestly, about recruiting in the end. So like, I mean, what we did, what USC did this weekend was interesting, right? It's like we saw a lot of these guys on campus. You know, I was big on Justice Terry. I think it. I think it does play though a huge role. I mean, that's that's stuff you you can do in LA. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. The bright lights of LA, Hollywood. People talk about it all the time. It, it, it's been USC's recruiting tool forever. They have used that forever. And honestly, I have a lot of respect for USC and like the history of USC uh, with some of the things that have gone down. But USC has also, I mean. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I come from the Huskies, right? University of Washington. USC pisses me off. Two schools piss me off the most, Oregon and SC. Okay, I have a little more respect for SC. Uh, Oregon just straight up, man, like, man, I, I don't even want to get into Oregon. But I'll tell you what, SC has used that Hollywood factor forever. That, I mean, go watch Trojan War. That, I mean, you can listen to it right there uh, with Pete Carroll. And Pete was phenomenal at, at using that. Like you want to talk about somebody who was a mastermind at using the Hollywood factor for recruiting. He had dude every time he had his top dudes there on recruiting, which they which they just had this weekend, right? They brought in superstars um, to utilize. Like, hey man, this is what you get. You get these sort of connections. Miami does it too, uh, or they used to. I don't know how much they use it now, but Miami used to be like that too back in the day when the U was the U, you know. Um, so. I, it's just interesting to see how this will play out with some of these guys though, because what they don't realize is guess what dudes like you, you guys want to go there and, and respect you saw Aaron Donald or you saw, you see his coach is there who he's so close with. This guy's going to make you into this. That's your thought process, but no, everybody is different. Okay. That's what something, that's what these guys need to realize. Um, okay. You're going to go there with a bunch of other D linemen, one of you or a few of you or a good chunk of you are not going to end up what you thought you were going to be. Okay. So you have to think about that. What type of, I guess, from that mindset, what, what are you going to, what are you going to develop into? And do you have that, that similar work ethic? I, I mean, I don't know, man. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. A lot of interesting stuff. I mean, they, I don't know if you remember for USC, they got Matt Entz to come over and coach linebackers. He was the head coach mm -hmm. in North Dakota state just comes yeah. and coaches linebackers over there. So they've re tried to revamp the defense. It's going to be interesting. And now I'm over here mm -hmm. looking to see who their strength. Okay. Yeah. So they still have the same guy who's in charge of the strength and conditioning over there. And you mm -hmm. remember, you remember Jake just last week, 
It's so ironic. Just last mm-hmm. week, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that may have missed a segment Jake and I did, I don't know whether it was Friday or Thursday, you and I talked about USC and how I had genuine questions about their strength and conditioning program. So much yeah. so, you remember Ebony was in here saying like, oh, we, we couldn't, we, we were figuring out whether she was meaning Baloo scared her or the guys over at USC in terms of like, oh, I'm, I don't like what they're doing over here. Mm-hmm. Turns out it was Baloo because he's super intense and he's a dude, but. Oh, he is a dude. That's a good it's, thing though. It's a good thing. Oh, great thing. That's what you want in that strength and conditioning coach. But listen, Coach Henderson is a fantastic addition for USC. You're not going to hear me argue against that. His resume is very impressive. And the fact that he's getting personal testimonies from guys such as an Aaron Donald about how effective he was, that's interesting. But I still, same question remains. You can have a fantastic, fantastic defensive line coach, but if your strength and conditioning is not up to par, is it going to make a difference, right? Or am I going to see a guy who has all the talent in the world just get pushed around because they're not repping the same way that Michigan is repping or Ohio state is repping. And that's who they're playing now. Or even in Oregon, Jake, I mean, listen, we do know that that the Oregon, they, especially when Cristobal was there, they took that strength and conditioning serious. Now. I mean, they're big dudes out there. So stuff to watch. Now, I think a lot of people have this question. Mm -hmm. Does USC's weekend affect Alabama? Because Alabama is trying to flip, Juju mm. Lewis, Alabama wanted Justice Terry. Heck, Alabama, after Gibson and Stubbs, what does this mean for Alabama recruiting? Ladies and gentlemen, Alabama is sitting pretty, mm-hmm. sitting real pretty. True. Every college out there, they're going to get their wins. And listen, That's applause right. to yeah. UFC, USC for getting your wins. You have a need, and they're hitting their need. Good job. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what yep. you need to do. You're you're making a better opportunity for every kid on that roster. And Jake, you and I have talked here and off camera. I just want these kids that work so hard to be able to have a shot at their dreams. Whether that's getting the degree, making it to the NFL, whatever that is, this is your moment by all means. Like I'm just happy to see you go and succeed. But Alabama, ladies and gentlemen, is going to continue recruiting like Alabama. They're still sitting pretty. There's a ton of great defensive linemen out there. There's mm-hmm. a ton of great safeties out there. And it's going to be interesting to see how they move forward from here, right? It's just one of those things where you pivot. You're still 100%. one of the top 10 recruiting classes. Jake, go ahead. 100%. Spot on. I, I mean, this is an interesting comment by you, Jeff. I, I want this, you know, this is kind of a, this is an interesting dig. I, you know, Washington Standard under DeBoer, right? Like, or, or just Washington Standard in general as a program. I think every school from a recruiting aspect wants to get the best players they can. Like to 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 say this is 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 kind of a shot, man. Like I I I don't support this. I don't agree with this. Like in the end of the day, like that is not the the way to look at recruiting from an aspect. You got to remember too, these these guys are 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 kids. They're not adults. You're not talking about the NFL here where guys are getting paid millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, some of them they, they are getting paid now 100%, but these guys are kids and they're coming out here and and they want to develop and be the best they can. I think what you have to remember with recruiting on this aspect too is that not every kid pans out to be what you project them to be. Okay? That's that's why I just, Even literally what I just said. 100. I mean, you can get all these guys in the world you know, LSU has a stud DB coach, right? I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's why they get some of the defensive backs they're probably going to get with Corey Raymond coming back, okay, from from uh, from where we were at last time, right? And I'll tell you, like, with Corey Raymond coming back, <clears throat> um, I'll say you, you have to understand that he has coached a lot of good DBs, and people like that. They like that history. They like that. They respect that. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Sometimes we got to step up and we got to get into a point where we have to uh, prove ourselves. And I think a lot of recruits want to see that. But from a standard standpoint, I think the standard's there. You got to remember a lot of these kids also that like they've been recruited. You're forgetting the, the beginning. You're forgetting the time frames before, right? You're, you're forgetting even during like Bear Bryant's era. Okay. Like, I mean, USC was a stud school back then too. And there was a comment in here earlier, right, about that. Um, regarding like Bear Bryant and the respect he had for John McKay at USC. All right. Like, so 
I mean, the, from that standpoint to say Washington standard, I think every school has a standard. And, and honestly, it's a, it's a dig at me too. Cause that's where I played, dude. Not cool with that. I would love, <laughs> not cool with that, bro. <laughs> well, and, and to take it a step further, listen, y'all know I bleed crimson. Mm-hmm. Which team beat Texas this year? 100. Which team made it to the national championship this year? Yeah, seriously. Weird comment, man. And like, I, I hear you because Saban had five stars, but this is what I said the other day. Everybody's asking, where are the five stars? Mm -hmm. Guys, did, we just had this conversation the other day, right? About, hold on. Let me go back in all my notes. My, my brain is already toast because I cover, you know, recruiting as a whole. So I get lost no. in all these recruits. Going mm -hmm. back to my notebook. Right here, ladies and gentlemen. You see these right here? Forget my bad handwriting. That's recruiting classes and how many five stars. The reason why I point that out is because Alabama right now has Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson, for the 24-7 sports composite, is the number 28 player in the nation. There has only been one recruiting class since 2010 that did not feature at least 28 five stars. He's going to be a five star. Oh, yeah. If he stays number 28, he will be a five star. So mm -hmm. there's your first five star. Then That's I'm right. getting texts from people that don't cover Alabama. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm getting texts from someone who, before Luke Metz had an offer to Alabama. Jake, you remember this. It's yep. one of the first times you and I talked all the way back yep. in February. I mm -hmm. got a text saying, hey, uh, if y'all offer, he's, he's committing. He yeah. loves the new staff, loves what's going on there. There it is, right? Mm -hmm. That same guy sends me a text and says, hey, y'all are doing a lot of work in the background for these offensive linemen. He said, and I quote, Bama is still doing Bama things without Saban. And he's like, hey, he gave me four offensive linemen that he's like, y'all are really pushing for. Mm. Two of them were five stars. Oh, so, yeah. It's it's very early, ladies and gentlemen. We are in March. I That's remember, right. Jake, sitting Gosh. in May and on Twitter mm -hmm. two years ago, two years mm -hmm. ago in May, Alabama was number 65 in the nation in recruiting. I, I'm yeah. sorry, maybe it was three years ago. It's the year where they broke the record for the top rating in recruiting. A&M broke it the year after. But in, mm -hmm. in May, they were 65th in the nation. Yep. It's Bama is is sitting just fine. And this is what I always say. Turn on the film for Luke Metz, and the first question you're going to ask yourself, how is he a three-star? How is he not a top 300 guy? Turn on the mm -hmm. film for Duke Johnson, and you're going to be plenty pleased. Turn on the film for Antonio Coleman. That's a top 100 prospect in the nation. If you're asking, right. why aren't we recruiting to Saban standards, Saban recruited that cat. Yeah. It's 100%. Like a lot of these guys that they're going after, Saban recruited a lot of them. They were, yeah. they're on the radar. Like, I mean, you guys have to understand the recruiting process is not just, we don't just start with 25 on in 24. We're looking all the way back. Like I said, there are guys probably, there's kids probably in eighth grade that people have heard of and their, their, their name is somewhere on a board somewhere just to pay attention to as they develop. I'll tell you right now, 100%. I had Nebraska and Oregon in my eighth grade championship game. Like 100%. That's what happens. And that was a long time ago. It's even different now. So that, that, that information is even further out there, but I'll tell you, man, like, I, I think in the end of the day, like for these kids, it does not matter. And you have seen guys say, you know, there was a kid on campus let me see if I can find his name for you guys real quick, who I thought said one of the coolest comments I have seen, oh man, where is his name at? I, it was awesome. It was phenomenal. He goes, I, I'm happy to be, thank you for basically, thank you for rating me a five-star. That's super cool. But in the end of the day, no one cares when you step on the field and you're between the sidelines. You're in the middle of the field playing. Nobody cares what your stars were. It's all about performing and working. I will tell you that right now. Like how many people want to talk? A good example of that, I think, when we look at it, <clears throat> and Red Morgan's a dog, so is uh, Drake or Patrick, Patrick Jr. But guess what? They got their recognition levels weren't. Yeah, they got recognized for their talents, 100, but not on a, on a scale of some other guys. But guess who's making plays in the field right now? Okay, that people keep bringing up. Red Morgan is working with the ones for a reason at that Husky position. And I have to tell you, when you hear about guys like that, 
who people who are like, ah, we'll see. I'm even me. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I said, Hey, I think he could come downhill really well, but he's going to have to develop over time. Wait and see is never a bad approach though, Jake. No, right? With recruits, I, and wait and see is never a wait, bad wait approach. Wait and see, right? But you just never know who will step up and who 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 picks up on concepts, right? And and, and Womack says it, and we'll go over like all the coaches and what they've said, because there were some really phenomenal interviews going prior to the or on Saturday, right? I think it was Saturday or Thursday, maybe prior to the weekend. But <clears throat> um there's there's just been so much said. But to sit here and say, okay, I I am only going after five-star players. I am only going after four-star players and nothing below. You are giving credit to a bunch of dudes out there in this industry who respect them 100%. They've watched a lot of football and they get to see stuff, but they don't always get it right. True. You, you, you know what I'm saying? That's why you have guys like Courtney Morgan. That's why you have Jatavius Sanders. You know, that's why you have Tony Jones and Aaron Hodges. Yeah, and there's even more. Uh, J- Jarrett uh, McElwin right? Like you have these guys out there who are, who are, who they do this for their living. Every time, you know, Aaron Hodges, every time I recruit, you you see all he's active on social media. I'll tell you what, man, the guy is paying attention to everything. He is your, that is your next general manager for a team. uh, Or maybe it's Alabama. Like I'm telling you, man, like just they're, they're looking for people who fit the system. Right. Did you see the, uh, the social media hires they made? Yeah, yeah, I did. I One did. of those guys it. does a lot of content with. I mean, you you went to his Instagram and he just did something with Ludacris. Like this guy is in all the celebrity circles. Someone uh, told me that apparently one of those guys is very close and has done a lot of content with Drewski. Mm-hmm. I don't think I need to say how Drewski in one video kind of, you know, roll tied Willie on that. Drewski video and now all of a sudden like don't get me wrong Roll Tide Willie was Roll Tide Willie before but Drewski has such an audience that he put so many eyes on him Drewski and Roll Tide Willie were just on the Theo Vaughn podcast together you know what I mean like if this guy that Alabama just hired he he has got the creative side down and you Mm -hmm. add him in I wanted to piggyback off of something you said Jake because I love it so much if you get caught star watching Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about a time where a coach, a great coach, a coach that recruits at an elite, elite level, and this is not a shot at this coach because, listen, he's a winner. Yeah, okay. He's won two national championships. I'm talking Kirby. So, you know, you can't take a lot away from Kirby. You're recruiting well. You're sending a ton of guys to the NFL. You're getting hardware. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's what you're here to do. I don't know if y'all remember. A few years ago, there was this kid in Georgia. You turned on the film and it screamed different. It Mm -hmm. screamed, this is a future top 10 draft pick. He was rated as a four-star for the longest until he got around to the All-American process and then shot all the way up to the number one edge in the nation because they finally got him around guys that they deemed to be five stars and he smoked them. Kirby didn't offer because he was a four-star. and He was going after some different five-star edges. That name, ladies and gentlemen, was none other than Will Anderson. <laughs> didn't get offered because he was a four-star and Kirby was five-star Oh, changing. my God. That's so crazy. Saban offers him, and he does Mm -hmm. one game. And I have a little bit, not like a personal tie to Will Anderson. Let me get that out there. Not a personal Mm -hmm. tie, but I've always felt some connection there uh, in terms of the video that got me going on YouTube, that got people watching my channel, was after Will Anderson's first game in college, Alabama opened up the season against Missouri. I -hmm. put together a video, and I said, book it now. Mm-hmm. He's the best SEC edge rusher I've seen. And this is off of one game, Jake. I said he's going to be the best, most explosive edge rusher the SEC has seen since Jatavian Clowney. Damn. Proof was in the pudding. I didn't care no. if he was a one-star, star, it. three-star, four-star, five-star. Didn't uh-huh. matter. I saw yeah. all I needed to see. Stars are great. They are not yeah. the end-all be-all. No, not at all. Not at all. And to say that, like... You know, Washington standard, Bama standard. I get Bama does have a standard, but like when it comes to like recruiting, everyone's recruiting the same kids. It's just, it's it, it again, we get down to this. It's just some schools, honestly, in the end of the day, 
Like you have that tradition, you have that script day, right? Like script day means something. It, there, you know, how much, there's so much history there. And, and we've talked about this. And I mean, I've talked about it a little bit when, when I was first getting on with this, uh, with this channel, right? Is like the history of Alabama, there's not very many schools who can match that. You know what I mean? Like maybe Notre Dame, maybe. But we're talking college football history here, right? That, that goes into these legacies. And then we just walked out with the greatest coach of all time. So, of course, you, you should say like that you bring in another coach, but with KD, who who truly I think will earn earn that very quickly. He's going to earn his own title here. KD will have his own statue in, in that, in that um, walk of champions. I'll tell you that. His, his statue will be there. 100%. It is going to happen. You'll see it. And you know, for some kids, here's another thing too. And, I, and a lot of guys aren't understanding this. So for some guys, they, they catch on to it really fast. You know, like all of our dudes in our recruiting class, you look at them and what, what was going on, what they see, what they realize, right? And that is the fact that in the end of the day, right now with our recruiting class, you, you can say these guys have picked up and understand that there's something special here and that's why they're here. Okay. Um, but here's the next factor is for other guys. And you've kind of heard it a little bit, right? Is the fact that they want to see what happens and that's fair. They want to see how, how they go into the season, right? Like that's fair, man. Um, and I think that's what you're going to see as soon as we start getting after it and it's going to happen. I want to tell you right now with a staff like this, I mean, you, you, shoot, they're just talking about how excited Nick Saban is to see this team play. You know what I mean? Like, did you, I mean, did you hear about that? He's excited to watch this defense. Yeah. He's excited to see it play. Nick Saban is saying that about what he already knows. And, and again, I, Nick Saban had, if you don't think he plays a part in finding his successor, hmm, I'll tell you, I know he does. I know he does. Well, and you yeah. know, it's it's interesting whenever all this came out about, mm -hmm. oh, well, Bama really wanted this guy. Then why was the Jet in Seattle when Saban yeah. retired? Why wasn't the Jet in Tallahassee? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't the Jet in Eugene? Why wasn't the Jet in Austin? The yep. Jet was in Seattle when Saban mm -hmm. retired. That's where yeah. they went. The first yep. place they went was Seattle, not Tallahassee. Good not Austin, not Eugene, mm -hmm. all of which great coaches. Yeah. Make no mistake. This is not, but facts supersede everything else. That's right. The Jet was in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And remind me, Jake, who did Saban go after last year for offensive coordinator? Oh, let me see. Hold on. Let me think about this. One second. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Yeah, think about this. One second. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. It was, it was Kalen DeBoer's offensive coordinator. Is Ryan Grubb. So, dare I say, mm -hmm. and and you know what's funny, didn't Saban, didn't Byrne have an interview where he said Saban told him after last year, like, hey, I, I can't commit to how much longer I'm going to be here outside of like one year at a time? Mm -hmm. What if that was the setup? Yeah. What if the play all along was get Grubb, get DeBoer, Right. Mm -hmm. Like, what if that was the play? All I don't know. Now, I am really just I'm really I know. Get yep. your 10 hats on. If anybody's in here, understand this is Ty's <laughs> 10 hat theory. I and love I'm not it, even saying hats. that I believe it. I'm just saying mm -hmm. whenever you look, he wanted grub. He wanted grub back. And then yeah. this year before he retired, he was interviewing Shepard for the vacant mm -hmm. wide receiver coach. So oh, yeah. there has been a consistent connection to Washington and specifically more specifically than Washington to DeBoer. Yeah. And that's intriguing. You know, you know, I'll start, I just want to bring this one point up, you know, for, for, uh, Jeff. Okay. I know, I, I know I'm, 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 that comment really got to me, man, because that was a lot of disrespect to Washington too. And that's somewhere I come from somewhere uh, now, some good chunk of our guys come from for our, our head coach comes from our couple of our coaches come from. But you know what's funny is you talk about that standard. Well, Nick Saban rose that standard, right? Well, Nick Saban comes from the legendary coach Don James from Washington. Weird. He's the one who starts his coaching career. He's the one who gives Saban the understanding of the standard. You get that. So it's there's a lot of connection there. 
there's a lot of love there. And when, when Washington is involved with Bama like this, there tends to be a lot of historic stuff that happens. So I don't know. It's a theory there. I might pay attention. Watch out, right? And with USC, you know what else is funny, uh, Ty, is like Jen Cohen, okay, uh, the, who is the AD who hired DeBoer, who finds DeBoer to come to Washington. She's now the AD at USC. And, and listen, I, I, I mm -hmm. have, and I've made it no secret for those of you that have been around my channel, Louie. I, I know I've seen you around my channel. I know that for a fact. If Hacker's in here, I know Hacker will listen in the background. Hacker can certainly attest. I have had consistent questions about USC's defense. I straight mm. up said it week zero last yep. year. I forget. Who did they open up against? Was it San Diego State? Does oh, that man, sound I right? I think week I zero. They, I think they opened up against some, some school, right? Mm. At halftime, I was already in the studio putting together a video saying USC's not going to win the national championship and they're not going to make a college football playoff. Why? Because you cannot disregard defense. It doesn't work. The worst defense since 2000 that has won a national championship. It was San Jose. Thank you so much. I knew I knew it was one of those. Thank you very much, Louis. That was going to mm -hmm. drive me crazy. This is why the undefeated is undefeated, Jake. That's right, man. They know everything. I love that. I kind right. of love that because they'll hold your feet to the fire, and I, I appreciate that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I said it then. You cannot forego defense just for offense. The worst defense to win a national championship since 2000 was that yep. uh, Auburn, Cam Newton team. And they mm -hmm. were even a top 50. Outside of that, only two others, three in total, have ranked outside the top 30 scoring defenses in the nation and won a national championship. But I got to give a lot of credit to USC for hiring aggressively the members mm -hmm. of this defensive staff they did. Right, like well, going to be interesting to see. Going to be interesting. It will. To see. It will. I think there's a battle there, and I think they knew that. I mean, the, you know, let's be honest. In the end of the day, you know, Riley, his job was on the line. Like he had to do something. It's the same thing that Ryan Day is yeah. doing. I mean, it, and I mean, honestly, you have, you have to look at um, what is it? Is is it Brian? Oh, Brian Kelly. Yeah, LSU. He's doing the same thing. Like these guys are freaking out a little bit, right? And am I freezing up here? I think I'm freezing up a little. Sorry, guys. Yeah, a little bit. Nothing too bad, but I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what's good. And that's Patreon mm -hmm. Life coming in here with the Gifted Five Bama Football on YouTube with Kyle Henderson memberships. Patriot Life, you've changed up your uh, profile picture. You, you're you not going to get it past me, right? You're not going to. But the details are something I noticed. You're not going to get the change in the profile picture past me. I noticed you don't that's have right the on. motorcycle anymore, but he is donning the undefeated hat consistently showing love patriot life you already know you the undefeated this show isn't possible without you guys yeah. it's just not yeah without mm -hmm. you guys without t and without kyle this doesn't happen we could do it over That's on my right, channel man. but i have one fifth of the subscribers yeah so, <laughs> we're not gonna get the the spread we get over here thank you so much for that patriot life i mean it, it oh, really man. does allow us to continue going on yeah, yeah, 100. But uh, speaking of recruiting, like, and yeah, thank good. you, Patriot Life, 100. percent Is uh, is I know with our big commitment, uh, and I love it with Luke Metz, right? And Luke, you know, there's funny because there's some arguments and some some more stuff on star rankings. Like, dude, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, from the star aspect, we got to get away from that. We really do. Just look at the player, watch. You can and you can see the different levels of talent when you just watch film. Like, go watch the film. Luke is amazing. I mean, I put him right up there with with the other guys out here that are just phenomenal. You know what I mean? Like, we look at some of the the guys they brought in, and they're looking out from a recruiting aspect. And, uh, and you, you know, you, Ty Jackson, okay? Ty Jackson, he was just here, right, from Seminole Ridge High School, Loxahatchee, Florida. Um, Ty Jackson is a stud, considered top linebacker in this class, 25. Amazing. Like that, that guy's a baller. You, you combine his talent, right. With, a, with a guy like Luke Metz and there's several, several others too. I'm not, to, to just pick him out alone. I mean, I, I like Dawson Merritt, right. And Dawson Merritt dude out of blue Valley high school, uh, out of Kansas, his dad is the DB coach, I believe for, um, Kansas city chiefs. Um, you look at Tyler Lockhart, right. Tyler Lockhart, another dude, uh, out of, um, Winona right mississippi stud 
absolute stud. These guys were all just here. You're talking about probably potentially um, one of if, if they can bring in the right dudes. And there was there's a couple others too that I I know they just they were high on just recently. And I wish I could figure out the other guy's name. I think I put it down. One second here. It was, I think it is. Where's he at? Where's he at? Zadarius Rainey's good. Uh, Sale out of Washington, right? And then, oh, Jaden Harmon. Holy smokes, Jaden Harmon was another one I really liked. But these guys are all. This is potentially is one of the best linebacker classes you could ever see at Bama. I'll tell you that. And they need that. That depth is needed there. They need to. They need to bring it in just like they did with the DBs this year. Okay. Um, I think that's probably why we don't see nearly as many defensive backs too uh this year i'll tell you that if you notice kind of how our recruiting has been going we're targeting very specific defensive backs they, they are very very specific they are there's not a lot of them there's not a ton of them um i'll be honest it was, it, was, it was interesting to see hilton Stubbs just be here on campus and then commit after that over at sc uh obviously i think there's there's probably some just talk amongst the recruits that happens a lot you develop relationships with guys um, and that does happen, but I mean, the guys that we are looking at from, from a standpoint, like I, I love the dudes we're going after. I, I mean, I really, really do. And I love the fact that like you look at Grayson Littleton and that's, that was a dude. I really, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. He, he's a stud. Um, but these guys, some of these guys are going to take time to get here. Okay. But you, you talk about Luke Metz and what he brings to the table and his overall, I mean, I, I broke down a stuff, right. When he plays and he hits people. I mean, he he brings the hammer, the absolute hammer. I mean, explosive, explosive. And then he just sees the field really well. He runs well. He blows the ball well. Uh, he has good pad level. I mean, he takes on the block with exactly the way you'd want to when you when you come in the blitz hole or come off the edge, right? Uh, in a twister stunt and. Overall, the guy plays with that energy level that is perfect for this defense. I mean, I see Luke, and I, I mean it, it's going to be hard to. With, he could he could play just about any of the three spots as we call it, right? He could play the Mike, he could play the Sting, he could play the Wolf. Okay, um, but I'm really happy with Luke. I think it he, we will see him ranked really highly at the end of this, just like all of our guys that have already committed. I mean, same thing goes with. Uh, Abdul Sanders, right? Like he's another one who I think you have a very traditional uh, mic there. Could he, he could he grow into something else? You know, we'll see. So I just, just the whole recruiting class in general right now looks really, really good. So Jeremy, we're going to dive into Dijon Lee right now. But before we do that, I want to hit on two things, Merrill, you just talked about. Talking hmm. about Luke in, in uh, particular. Just last week, you and I were on here, and both of us were sitting here saying, ladies and gentlemen, if, if there's one thing I want you to pay attention to in this Alabama recruiting class, and especially with KD, yep. those of you that watched our segment, you're, you're probably going to know what word I'm about to use. Versatility. We did a whole 20-minute breakdown on the versatility of the players. Yeah. KD recruits Luke Metz. Yeah. Noah Carter, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Duke Johnson. I mean, super, super versatile guys. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I will talk about, right? Because I, I do think it's a little bit cool. You talk about Stubbs, and I completely agree. Whenever you look, Alabama is going to recruit the defensive back position. They're still going to get in depth. You need the depth, but you have to do so thoughtfully. Recruiting mm -hmm. is about needs fit, right? Think yep. of those two things. Do yep. you need that position, and is that player a fit? You could have a five-star in your backyard, but mm -hmm. if they don't fit the scheme you're running, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, they could be the number yeah. one player in the nation. It simply doesn't matter because they might be better maximized in someone else's scheme. Now, mm -hmm. speaking specifically about Stubbs, there is an interesting connection here. Hmm. The defensive back coach right now at USC is Doug Belk. Alabama fans will know that name because Doug Belk was a graduate assistant at Alabama from 2014 to 2016. He comes from Valdosta, Georgia. So mm. th that's the interesting little connection there, right? Like he's yeah. familiar with this SEC landscape <clears throat> and uh, mm. he's he's just familiar. So it's it's not inherently super surprising whenever you are a Stubbs, you go out yeah. to USC, 
you got Coach Henderson over there with Aaron Donald talking to all the defensive line guys, and then you got Doug Belk back there, who was just defensive coordinator at Houston, if I'm not mistaken, at the very least co-defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, hey, I, I'm I'm familiar with the SEC territory. You're from Florida? Heck, I was a GA at Bama. I'm from Valdosta. And we oh, need yeah. defensive help in a bad way. Come on down. <clears throat> I'll develop mm-hmm. you. Year one, we're going to get you out there. You're going to learn in the fire, but you're going to learn on the field. That's the pitch, ladies and gentlemen, right? Like, And, and mm-hmm. people say, oh, NIL. The reason you don't hear me talk about NIL a ton is because, one, I don't know what's what's true and what's not in terms of the numbers that get thrown around. And two, NIL is legal now. Everybody's participating in NIL. And so it's one of those things where I'm not going to just spend a whole bunch of time on it. But playing yeah. time. That's a massive, massive positive to some of these guys, and good for them. Now, Dijon Lee. Meryl, Mm -hmm. this is interesting because this seems to be a battle of two SEC teams, Georgia and Alabama. What are you thinking about Dijon Lee after he finishes up the visit to the Crimson Tide this past week? I I think he's really excited in the end of the day. I think he liked it. I think he truly enjoyed it. I think he's taking his time and, and hitting his visits. I mean, he made some really interesting points, too, as far as like, you know, he, his, his grandparents, I think it were, who really enjoyed, right? I think it was his grandparents, but his family really enjoyed the coaches. They enjoyed the atmosphere. Um, he enjoyed the atmosphere. He sees these guys. I think what was cool is uh, he hung out with Damani Jackson a uh, majority of the time, right? And then uh, he talked with Xavier Brown, and they really talked about, um, you know, with Coach Mo, Mo Linguist, like his development aspect. And the, the guy is going to send you to where you need to go. I think I think we are going to see that. Um, it's tough because when you go against these other coaches who bring in players that are, you know have current, just played in the NFL or currently playing, well, Mo has that experience too. I think people are forgetting that. Like, yep. do not do not sit there and think that he does not have experience. The same thing goes for Hitchler, right? And then you have these two coaches in the background, and not and not just that. I should say this is for those who who think differently. Um, as far as the defensive back room, well, guess Coach Saban is still around. Like recruits can need that team need to remember this. The guy is still out there. He's still giving his two cents, right? They're still meeting with him. They're still having these conversations. Okay, um, you're still going to have that chance to interact with him. I mean, he was a great DB developer as well, right? And so, with that all being said, you know, I and I think with Womack too. Like you see the, the aspect of the standpoint that where he comes from, the system is meant for DBs to thrive in. Like, don't just look at these coaches and think you're going to develop into a superstar. There's a lot of work that's to be done. They can help get you in the right direction. They can show you the drills, right? They can sit there and they can, they can try to guide you the best they can. But number one, it's your mindset, your work ethic, your attitude. There's so many other factors that play into this. And then the system itself. Like if you don't fit the system, you want a system you can thrive in. You want a system you can see the field in, okay? And and, and that's going to be very key to a lot of these guys as they go through. Dejon Lee is one of those guys who would fit perfect in the system due to his cover skills, right? I think he had a great visit, and uh, and I'm excited to see kind of how the process goes out for him, 100%. I, I feel good about him, but again, he's he's a California guy, right? You can cut, he comes from a modern day and We'll see how that goes as we continue through this process. It's a long process. Very You're interested to see how many guys stay on board at SC, too. That's another thing. Yeah, and that goes across the board. you got to recruit these guys mm-hmm. 24-7, 365, That's right? right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think that that right there, it's going to be interesting. Now, I do want to answer some questions that the undefeated have posed. Kosi asks, is it an NCAA violation for USC to use Aaron Donald in recruiting, or is that rule just for alumni? I believe it's just alumni, Kosi, but once again, I don't really know. I'm not 100% certain. I will do some digging, and if I can find that information, I will certainly talk about that on tomorrow's show. I don't want to steer you wrong. I'm not 100% certain, though, Jake, you might have some more insight on that than I do. Do you, do you know this the specifics about that rule? Is it, a, is it a violation? No, I don't believe so. I think that's, that's part of maybe... I mean, you see it all the time with our previous players, right? Um, I don't, I don't think it would be a violation. I mean, I don't know if there's a specific around that, but I, you know, I'm, I'm looking back on it. I don't think so. I think that's been going on forever. Guys use 
guys all the time. Now, Aaron Donald didn't go to USC, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, from the standpoint of you 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 look at coaches and who they're close with, they're, I mean, nowadays, I, well, I just talked about this. SC did it with Carroll all the time. You had, like, Snoop Dogg there. I mean, who else did he have? You had Hollywood guys there all the time. They're, it's not just Snoop. There's a bunch of dudes from up in Hollywood, always at practice around when recruits were hanging out. Like, so, I mean, you're not directly sitting them down with them. It's more so like you're crossing paths. So there's probably a gray area if there is a rule. You know? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to uh, look it up. I'm currently trying. I, I currently actually have open some of the mm -hmm. NCAA bylaws and stuff, and I, I will be searching through that cozy if i can find it in this stream I, I will certainly let you know i'm just not 100 100 certain and i never want to lead y'all wrong right we got another great question here adam adam been a while man uh, happy you're back around he says isn't hmm. anyone concerned that womack will face a tough transition to the sec so i'm not it's certainly going to be a transition there's no arguing yeah. that it's not but here's why i'm not concerned adam and then i'm, I'm going to be very brief on this jake and then throw it to you mm -hmm. one Nick Saban specifically said he was trying to pull from Womack's principles over yeah. the, the, what was it, the last year or so? He was trying to pull some of Womack's mm. principles to implement into his defense to kind of merge his schematic with Womack's 4 2 5. So, this yep. is a guy that has understood high level defense. On top of that, Adam, and I get it, he is not his dad, but he's not unfamiliar with SEC football. His dad was a yeah. massive part of the 425 at Old Miss, right? So mm -hmm. he's got an innate understanding of the SEC. SEC coaches at the high school level know the last name. They're familiar mm -hmm. with the last name. They're comfortable with the last name. I, I'm not super concerned about it. Jake, I'm going to pass that to you. No, I, I think <clears throat> if there's one guy I want from a defensive standpoint right now who is like the hot hot man, like – Kane Womack is not going to be here very long. He's going to end up getting grabbed for a head coaching position somewhere. We'll see. It, it I would imagine under the longest time frame we have him is maybe two years. Okay. Don't I say think that. That's, don't, don't hurt yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I would, it'd be great to see him longer. He's here. The only reason he is not head coaching still uh, is because of the fact that he's very close with DeBoer. And this is an opportunity for him, right? To come make a legacy here there, there's a legacy here as a coach no matter what position you coach at uh how you're involved there's a legacy here at alabama right and so i think with womack the one that probably one of the coolest things you'll see with him is like you guys talk about this already they love his energy they, womack talks about setting the standard as a coach right every single day like what the expectations he goes i have to bring that every single day from a standpoint of focus in and making sure my guys like if i'm not there at that level how can i expect them to be at that level right and i mean <clears throat> I'm, I'm almost from a standpoint too of saying you look at what Devonte smith right smitty just says about womack and that's huge man huge because he talks about womack almost raising the bar and what the standard already was like there, there's something to be said about that uh, I think you are going to see a defense that is lit. I'm going to be honest with you. I think this defense is going to come out out of the gates, like in a way that in the energy level, in the tenacity, in the aggression, like I want to see an angry defense that plays as one. And if you hear about them talking about how the DBs communicate between um, Sab, between Malachi Moore, right? And, and then, you know, Devontae Smith getting in there. Oddly enough, playing Husky, like there's some there's some switch ups here that I didn't expect. And I like it. I like it. Obviously, Womack has a different way of thinking. Whenever you bring in someone who is innovative with with passion, with this this ferociousness to be the best. Um, it's a scary combination and also technically, technically very, very smart. And then you put the coaches around him with with Mo Linguist, right? Colin Hitchler. Right with Christian Robinson, um, with F Freddie Roach, like we look at j this combo of coaches, and you just you have to sit there and be like, oh my god, this defense is about to be lights out, like lights out. You and know, here, and Adam says if the defensive line gets consistent pressure and shuts down the run, we will have a top ten defense. And Jake, how many times have I said to you, 
over the mm-hmm. course of the past week. Man, am I pumped up for this interior defensive line group and really the front as a whole. Jamarian yeah. Latham talking about how, hey, you might not know me, but this is going to be my year. You have Keenan. You have mm-hmm. Otis. I mean, you have got Smith in the background, Jordan Renat. You got a lot of cats. Edric Hill, right? I mean, Edric Hill coming out of, uh, mm-hmm. out of high school. I remember I had about four or five different content creators from different fan bases being like, no offense to you, Ty, but we're praying on your downfall for Edric Hill because that's one of my favorite players in this class. I'm not, I had so many people for different fan mm-hmm. bases, Jake, text me about Edric Hill being like, we think y'all just got a heck of a sleeper. And he's our, I think he was a top 50 or 75 prospect. Even then, guys from other teams were like, no, that's a sleeper because he should be well up that board. Um, so yeah. a lot of exciting stuff there on the front. A ton of exciting stuff. And James Smith, he says, is an angry player. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. And the 4-2-5 is going to allow for more flexibility. It's going to allow for more versatility. And this is what I've always said, Adam. Um, hot, we will we have not yet, but that will be our next topic. Flyboy says Otis is not a threat. I could not disagree more, Flyboy. I think Otis, when healthy. And we got to remember last year, they almost moved him out of his natural position to allow for more flexibility along the defensive line, right? Like they they mm-hmm. kind of were moving him around. Now he's going to get back to his more natural position. He's going to be able to work. He'll have Keenan next to him, taking up some of that space. I, I mean, I, I think Otis is in for a big year uh, with this new defense and the fact that he gets to retain Freddie Roach. But we will talk about Cochran uh, next. Jake, do you have mm-hmm. any comments on that? Which one on Co- Cochran or Otis? <laughs> Otis, uh, a- anything. Yeah. Interior defensive well, line defense before we move uh, to recruiting yeah, and, ju- you know, Cochran. I would just say, like, from a standpoint with with, with, with this defensive line, again, I think you guys are going to see people who we have not heard their names in the media. We have not heard them talked about much maybe over the last year or so, right? Maybe they're a big recruit and they came in and, and guys are excited, but then they've kind of tapered off and been doing their thing for a minute. I think you guys are going to see a lot of people, a lot of guys pop that you weren't expecting to see pop. And I think you guys are going to see from a defensive line standpoint that this, this, these group of guys really get mad. I mean, they, they are hungry. They, the, the, the talent level is there. The depth is there. It, I'm excited to watch from every standpoint, right? Uh, from every standpoint, I really, really do. Uh, Ro- and Flyboy G, okay, Roach has not given us a dominant D line since he's been here. Why the faith now? I think again, we we talk about this like you had a this group was really, really young too, and I, I think that's the, another thing to consider. To, that's why the depth is there. But now you come into a defense where, from a concept standpoint, easier to pick up. Right. You get to play for your natural ability. Right. You get to go after it. Maybe you don't have a two gap assignment necessarily. You have you do your job. Like you're going to see guys truly come out of the come out of the woodwork just from a standpoint that they had, the confidence is there. The mindset's there. The development is there. They've had time now. They get it. These coaches are there every single day, making them the best they can. And not saying it wasn't before, but you hear the players talking about it. it's just different now. We also haven't had a dude uh, and and fly says what's mm. what's his tackle for lost stats from last year i, I would very much well advise against stat watching because yeah, my first ridiculous. my first stop whenever i'm evaluating a player is not the espn page that's not no. what i'm going to do my first no. stop and jake can attest to this because i sent him a bunch of all 20 i got Jake, I, I show you remember I streamed that day and I, I opened up the file. How many teams do you think I have? They're all 22. A hundred? Oh, oh yeah. I, I for sure. I, I got so man. much all 22 film, it makes my head spin. That's my first stop. Always. I got I got mm. Bama's entire last year all 22. I sent Jake Washington's all 22 and South Alabama's. So when I look at this. Once again, Fly, he was asked to almost play out of position. That was a big talking point last season is people were wondering, is this going to allow for more flexibility along the defensive front? And then secondly, he was Mm -hmm. banged up. He was banged up a lot of last year. He was not playing at the same clip he was because he just wasn't healthy. But Freddie Mm -hmm. Roach is a heck of a recruiter. 
And I think mm-hmm. this year you're going to see a defensive line really start coming together. I'm not worried mm-hmm. about the interior yeah. defensive line. Yep. Yep. Not at all. Not a, in the end of the day, you guys want to, you know, fly G you're going to sit there and, and talk this, all this stuff. I can tell, man, I don't know. Maybe you're not a, a you're well, he's only a, been here since 2020. Yeah, um, so, I mean, I, I don't, again, your points that you're making is, are interesting and probably get away from a lot of your comments. Cause at this point you just, it looks like you're just trying to get us riled up here. <laughs> I am untethered and my rage knows no bounds. No, listen, listen, I'm all for a uh, debate. Mm-hmm. If you have concerns, yep. please talk about yep. them. Right. Because it is what it is. Daryl says, Texas women's basketball, Bama's women's basketball. Hey, man, good win. Good win. Like, it is mm-hmm. what it is. But uh, yeah. I think Bama's men's basketball team is still going. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't Texas get clapped by Tennessee? Mm-hmm. They did. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, mm-hmm. it is what it is. I think it doesn't Texas. I think it's funny. I had a, a Texas fan actually on my channel the other day, Jake, and they were talking okay. about how I did a video and they were like, they said, I'm going to bookmark all these positive Bama posts and come back. And it's like, y'all were nothing without Saban. And I said, my my brother in Christ, you can take away Saban's national championships and Bama still doubles Texas national championships. Like, what are we doing here? Well, and Nick Saban has more national champ. Yeah, Nick Saban has more natties than Texas his whole career <laughs> in football. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, They're man. leveled. There are levels. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, well levels. and you're nothing about say it's like, dude, how can you say that when they just hired a coach that beat you two years in a row? One of them is going to a national championship. Like, get out of here, man. And so those are those are dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy to hear that. But I mean, and then you're saying to you, and we jump back into this was from a standpoint of like Cochran, right? Like on campus. Because we talk about that energy and what this I guess what each guy is saying from a players, from the coaching standpoint, um, from what guys feel from this, I mean, this extreme loyalty, this bond, this team bonding, different, right? Different. So, I mean, what was your take on on seeing Cochran on campus? I think, it, listen, his, his ability as an energy in the program was awesome. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm big on Cochran. I know he's had some things in the background. If he's good, right, that's that's what I care about is get right, yeah, man. man. Get right. Yeah. Because you, you have an infectious personality. You have mm-hmm. got a, a great ability to connect with these kids and to be a leader. Um, Right? It, it's one of those things where it, if he's good, I would love to have him around the program. But I, 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 I would love to have him. No doubt about it. Stop with the steam scheme excuse. Well, listen, that was something people were negative recruiting against Alabama. Um, I don't think that the scheme was necessarily a detriment at all. So I'm not going to give a scheme excuse. Certainly not. But what I will say fly is that Bama just hasn't had that guy on the interior um, since then. Right. And now you look Tim Keenan put together a heck of a season last year. If Mm -hmm. he backs that up this year, there's your answer in terms of someone who could be pushing first round status. If he's able to build on what he did last season. Right. No doubt about that. Daryl says, I well, love NIL. Hey, man, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Still no, didn't help right. y'all beat Washington, who has significantly less NIL and significantly less resources, and they clapped y'all twice in a row. But what are you doing? What are you doing? And I, I hear you. Yeah. Ain't no oil fields in Tuscaloosa. Daryl, where did Texas finish in recruiting last year and the year before that? Let me ask you this, Daryl. Has Texas beat Bama in recruiting since NIL was legalized? I know the answer. Mm. I know the answer. But yeah, I don't know if they know the answer. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Mm-hmm. It, is what it is. It is what it is. And like, again, going back to like the scheme excuse, I'm sorry, but I mean, it, it's almost like you, you have to ask some of these times, like, hey, do, do you understand? Have you ever tried to learn something when you were younger that was really that was difficult or different? You know what I'm saying? Like it. It, it takes a minute to learn it. Like you got to do it over and over, or maybe like from a development standpoint, it takes a second to develop. Right. But then someone comes in or maybe something changes here or there a little bit and you pick up on it really fast. That's how development works. That's what you do with players, and especially when you're young, right? You had, a, you had a good group that was young. Okay. So over the years you want to, I mean, you're talking about these guys, other coaches who develop guys. Okay. Again, everybody's different. Some things take different things uh, or different amount of time. Different coaches have different concepts. I'm telling you right now, you, 
if you want to question Roach or question like the defensive line, just sit back and wait and watch this season. It's not, it's not even at this point an argument because the scheme actually is really important in what you play in to the, uh, I guess, to the potential and to the production of your players. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like you said, Bo Davis, Bo Davis was a great defensive line coach, right? Mm -hmm. You're never mm -hmm. going to hear me. I love Bo Davis. I love Bo Davis. I loved the rant he did on the Texas bus because that's exactly yeah. what the Longhorns needed to hear. It's funny because yeah. when I was interning at Dave Campbell's, I actually made a video that kind of ruffled some feathers saying Texas fans need to be ticked off. Jake, they had only had, I don't think they had a first round draft pick on offense since Vince Young for like 10 years or something mm. like, or maybe they only had one. It was wild. Like, the, the yeah, drought crazy, in though. development and Bo Davis basically got on that bus and was like, y'all think that logo is going to win you something, but that logo is not winning nothing. Mm -hmm. And he was embarrassed, but that yeah. was exactly what Texas needed to hear. That's exactly what the program needed to hear. Right. Uh, um, so, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that the scheme, you're certainly not going to have me arguing against the scheme flyboy, but what I will say, Freddie Roach didn't have the guys. And when he mm -hmm. started getting the guys, now you're seeing this development. You're, yeah. I'm hearing in the background, pain is also really developing, really coming on well. You have That's Tim right. Keenan, who's really developing well. Otis mm -hmm. was moved around and banged up all year, but he's a guy that if he gets healthy, if he gets into his natural position, he's going to do really well. I think we're writing off Roach a little bit too early, Fly, where there's some nuance into the conversation that I feel like is getting left out. Uh, but once again, I, I don't disagree with you, Fly, about saying, no, it wasn't the scheme thing, because listen, we know what Bama was doing with that scheme. I, I agree with you there, but I also think that Roach, since he's came here, hasn't had that, that dude, right? Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. And it's going to be interesting. Bama is still paying players with chargers while Texas pays with Ferraris. And yet Bama is ranked ahead of them. <laughs> that, that's a set. That's a, that's a self owned Daryl. That's one where I might be like, why is it that if we're giving Ferraris mm -hmm. and millions of dollars, we can't recruit better than them. Is it something about us? What could it be? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it is. I love, I love Texas. I do a lot of content with great yeah. Texas fans. Shout out Fanatics Perspective. Shout out mm -hmm. Nino Sports Corners. Love those guys. We do a SEC Connect every Wednesday night. I love going over there with those guys and wrapping it up. Daryl, you know it's all love. We're just giving you a hard time over here. Yeah, we're trolling us. We're going to troll back. But that's what this is all about. That's yep. what all this is about. In the end of the day, I mean, 100%, like I said before, like you guys come in here and ask whatever you want, kind of jump through and – and we just want to make sure that we're giving you guys fun stuff to talk about at the yeah. same time, like give you our opinions. So yeah, we're just having fun. Um, yeah, it's 100. Love. It's all love. And I think you look again, like with recruiting and the aspect of, of what is happening, right? The amount of guys who we had on campus this, this through the weekend was pretty insane. Um, I, that I will say, and then we have guys coming up. We, we have another big one. I think basically the weekend, I think of the 28th, <clears throat> we have a lot of guys coming in. Uh, and it will continue to kind of roll through in the beginning of April too. So I feel, I feel good again. It's, it's interesting because we are so early in the whole recruiting process for the guys that make their decisions. I mean, Justice Terry flipped from Georgia to SC. We knew he was going to probably leave Georgia anyways. <laughs> uh, we, we got that feel early on. Uh, it's funny because I think the only thing that makes them flip, obviously, is that the, the coach and that who they hire, which I, which again, I don't blame them. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't blame them at all. Uh, but I feel good <clears throat> about the fact that, you know, he was really high on, on Roach and, and the guys um, at Alabama and our coaching staff. And I love that. But again, you look through this list of guys and you're impressed. You're impressed from the offensive tackle standpoint of who they're going after you can tell that's a big deal to them from an offensive line and guys who are very versatile right you talk about you know ty haywood um i think it's andrew babaloa you talk about obviously who i've talked about before is david sanders jr <laughs> um, yeah, and we have a question on him right here Flyboy asking what's the okay. news on the tackle from charlotte yeah david sanders jr mm -hmm. i mean right now but from from what i've heard right, is that he is very, very high on Bama. Again, you know, Sanders is one of the top, if not the number one player in the nation, just based on whatever evaluations and all this different stuff. But, I mean, he is a stud. 
Uh, he's one of those guys who, in general, like he makes an impact wherever he goes. Right? He he fits KD's offense perfect. I've talked about that before and his versatility. I mean, the guy the guy doesn't look necessarily like an offensive lineman when he's out there running and moving. <laughs> I mean, he can line up at at. I mean, you've seen him play defense. He's a stud on defense too. Um, so I think with him, I think there's a lot of positive feedback. I think there's a lot of love right now. I think that's that their, their focus is is definitely the offensive line and continuing to build that towards how this offense works. And then it's it's this kind of hybrid, right? Like you have these super super athletic guys, but also with good size, but they have good bend, they have good movement, they have they're disciplined. Um, they're really looking and and targeting these guys, and we're seeing it even in 2026 class. Um, with the offers that you, they've put out to office linemen. I mean, we, we had a guy on the show, Langston Hawk, right? Uh, stud. Now, I think he's a little younger, but from the standpoint of uh, you look at his versatility, this is one of those guys who's going to be, you know, really, really, really good. Um, again, has that interest from Bama. So they're looking at all sorts of these different guys and really making sure that they set themselves up from, because that's your future, right? That's your foundation is the offensive line. Uh, and the defensive line too. You know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Recruiting that is going to be at a premium. And not only uh, was Sanders there, someone that Alabama is going to be pushing for, but here's the one thing with 2025 prospects, ladies and gentlemen. Alabama is creating relationships because they have so many new coaches, while other mm -hmm. schools are sustaining relationships. That's I right. mean, you're talking about some programs that have been after these kids since they were freshmen. That's mm -hmm. four years of consistent relationships that Alabama is trying to supersede, and they've done so very well, right? I mean, yeah. a brand new Alabama staff was able to get Isaiah or to get uh, Ryan Williams to cancel his Texas visit, cancel his Alabama or his Auburn visit, cancel his A and M mm -hmm. visit, even though you had Holloman Wiggins going over to A and M. So it's all about creating these relationships yeah. it's all about superseding the relationships that have already been put in place but that's very difficult right like you have teams that recruit at an elite level and they've had relationships spanning back for years and that's something alabama is going to have to supersede i think they're going to recruit at an elite level this year yeah. 2026 is where i'm like oh that's that's like that's going to be huge that's yeah. going to be huge for what Alabama is able to do recruiting. And, you know, we talked about Sanders, but what about a Jordan Davidson, Jake? Five-star running back from IMG. And I don't know if you saw, but a uh, running back that was interested in Alabama, and Alabama has had some interest, he committed mm -hmm. elsewhere this week. Now, yeah. Bama already has one running back. And mm -hmm. if I had to guess who the second running back would be, I think that they it's a, it's a debate between Ackland Deer and Jordan Davidson. Really, to me, it's whoever pulls the – trigger first what are you thinking on that jake yeah yeah J jordan Davison, i think is actually modern day um yeah. and yeah so he he's he's a stud uh, i like him a lot uh ackland ackland deer obviously i think he's rated by some if not all of them i don't i'm not sure yet but as the number one running back in the nation um absolute i mean that guy i mean you can just see his skill set on the field his decision making skills his ability to find the hole uh, his vision and obviously his athleticism throughout his film, but I feel good about honestly both of them. Um, I like it. And and that's something that I've talked about a little bit before is like as from a running back standpoint, that's something that you shouldn't be scared of in this sort of system. Uh, because number one, you want longevity as a running back, right? Like I, I do not want to be that running back that gets absolutely abused, used and destroyed throughout my college career. Uh, but I want productivity still, but at the same time, if I'm overly used and I'm worn down running back, I mean, there's a reason why they have short lives in the NFL, even in college. It's a, it's a very, it's a tough position. You take a beating, uh, especially today with the, with the level of players, right? Size, speed, strength, it just keeps getting bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, you take a beating. So if I'm a running back, I want to go into a system where they're going to utilize two to three running backs every year. Right. And that is the type of system you see again uh, with overall our our uh, our type of offense and what KD runs. Uh, you look at him in 2022. We've talked about the film, but 2022, the way that he used the running backs at Washington, uh, that was huge, right? There's two, three, I mean, four four guys getting carries, uh, two to three of them getting majority. 
Uh, the same thing, I think you see the next seat, this fought in the 2023. Now, maybe not three, you had ma mainly two guys. Uh, and then they put that load really on onto, uh, you know, Johnson from Mississippi State who transferred over. But uh, I would like to say from a running back standpoint that you're, you're right. Like we are in this position where I, I, I would like to see two more. But then, you know, it's funny because you did bring up the one who committed elsewhere uh, to Miami, I believe. Pringle. Mm-hmm. Troy yep. Bring Pringle. Yep. Heck of a player. Yep. But Al Alabama, you already have turbo rogers you keep mm -hmm. him in the fold you add another That's running right. back i think they'll take two running backs um maybe they'll take three but that was kind of the saban mo i'm gonna take two mm -hmm. running backs i don't yeah. know if you remember he got two five stars richard young justice haynes both yeah. coming in that class so it's going to be interesting to see what they do at the running back position i have a feeling it's it's a matter of who pulls the trigger first it is 100. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be what it is on the recruiting front for running backs. Now, you yeah. said e earlier, you were talking mm -hmm. about how you were excited to dive in to some of the interviews that went down. And someone in yes. here earlier asked if there was a scrimmage this weekend. I don't believe there was. I think the first scrimmage actually takes place this week. Okay. Yeah. So I, so we, based on the schedule, it looked like Saturday was going to be a scrimmage day. I think they got some work in but not like a full like scrimmage scrimmage. It sounds like that's, they're, they're going to, they changed that. And it's actually going to be this week where they get the scrimmage. I don't know if media availability will be the case, but they got, they got good pad work in and guys are out there hitting and popping pads. And that's, that's what's important. I mean, they're progressing based off of obviously evaluations from a health standpoint, right. Which, which we have an amazing, amazing, like, you know, uh, program here, as everybody knows with how they treat those, those players and keeping them healthy. Um, but we, we were able to hear some really, really awesome and positive things from a team standpoint from coaches. Maybe we don't necessarily get to hear from all the time. Um, so it, I was excited, man. I mean, have you did you catch any of, of what they had said? I didn't. OK, well, I can dig into it for you, Ty, if you want. You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So uh, the first one was Womack. And I think what was Womack was you kind of looked at the questions he was asked and he was asked about the secondary a little bit and how these guys are doing what what's his take on the secondary uh had a lot of praise um Frank saying like from an experience standpoint with Damani Jackson and Jaleel Hurley right and like what they're what they bring to the table um that was impress impressive he's just saying like these guys are out there they have those reps we're seeing them really come together uh, on the field and and use utilizing that experience uh, in the system I think and from this is from a cornerback aspect right then he then he gets asked like from the standpoint of all the freshmen and that was that was interesting he's like you know as a freshman he asked competition wise like with um i think it was uh, zay mincy uh, zavian brown like them coming from certain types of programs and uh, there might have been another one certain type of types of programs that were bigger facing maybe tougher competition in high school does that help them now right and th he does he says it could potentially help them but you know, I could see where it could benefit 100%. He goes, but the thing is, is once you get in here, you you have to, you still have to learn everything to perform basically at your max. So he he thought that, and this is a really good point. We've brought this up before that with these guys learning this defense, um, some getting there faster than others, uh, that overall, when they play against this offense in the scrimmage, that these guys are going to get those reps on the field and actually, you know, play like, to the game speed right and be able to get these mental reps because that's what he's saying he's like it's one thing we could teach all day in a classroom right but these guys got to go out and move which is the truth in the end like he, for these freshman defensive backs especially at corners right you got to go out and you got to move you, you got to you got to realize what it's like to to break on a ball right to to work this zone coverage so you are putting yourself in a position to understand like majority of time or or tendencies, right? You got to see those tendencies. And so that really helps. And, and Womack talks about how playing against this style of offense, um, you have to be aggressive, obviously, in your installation of your packages, but it really helps the development of our young guys. I mean, really fast, really fast. So 100%. that's, I mean, that's pretty exciting. I, I like hearing that. I like seeing the fact that with Womack and him talking about these, this, this core group, right? Because uh, it is so young, like our our cornerbacks are so true, truly young. 
Yeah, and one thing, let me get in here and chat. Guys, let's let's chill on the whole, Todd, you hit the nail on the head, let's chill on the whole Sark thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's not what we're doing over here. We're going to we're gonna chill on that, right? We, yeah. we got the coach that beat him twice, mm-hmm. head up, <laughs> bounced him out of the playoffs, and that's what, yeah. that's what you can talk on, right? If you're going to mm-hmm. talk on Sark, talk on that. Sark was yep. someone who did fantastic work for Bama. Saban mm-hmm. trusted him to be the offensive coordinator, um, and he's done a really solid job taking over a program that was really down, couldn't develop, yeah. um, has all the resources in God's green earth, and was not able to do it much with it. And Sark is really helping turn it around. But if you're going to talk about anything, mm-hmm. uh, know that th- y- your argument here is that Sark is 0-2 versus Kalen DeBoer. We're not talking about anything personal. We're not talking yeah. about anything like that. So let's yeah. let's keep it let's keep it football, guys. One hundred percent. Like oh, and a lot of props to them, you know. Um, but you're right. And then Brian Oswald, you know, what do you think about from a this is a good question. Um, I still think we'll hit the portal for one or maybe even two more DBs. What do you think? Yeah, I do. I do think that would be the case. I do think there's a potential for that. Um, they've talked maybe a little bit about that, that there could be some experience stuff that we would like to see. From a cornerback aspect, uh, I don't necessarily see that at safety just based on what I've heard, but could be just from a depth, make sure we have that good depth. Um, so, yeah, I think from the portal aspect, yeah, that is one position. Uh, could maybe grab one or two defensive backs. Uh, we'll see what happens, right, with that depth. I, I was looking over the portal. I didn't see anything that stood out uh, as far as what we would grab, but that was just my own observation. I they, they, they could see something different than I than I've seen. I just don't think that's necessarily there. But right now in the portal, we'll see what happens. Um, but then jumping back into it, you look at what he says about like Devonte Smith. So that was one of the key comments that was made from Smith getting healthy, two hundred plus pounds. So he's put on a lot of size, uh, and you can see that really in his photos too, right? Um, but he was really impressed, and then talking about that husky position. So that kind of was a giveaway to start because there's a lot of questions on who would play where with that secondary, especially, um, you know, who's playing your free safety, who's playing your Rover, who's playing your Husky. Right. And uh, to see, see, I thought more so we would see maybe Devante at the free safety, but I, you know, one of the things that I had to remind myself after I heard him talk with Womack is he's talking about, he goes, this defense is very, very strong down the middle. Well, that is the key to the defense right there. 100%. You, your strength is down the direct center from your tackle, to your middle linebacker to your free safety, right? Or your safeties. Where's your strength? And it should be down the middle in order for this defense to be successful. So that's how he looks at it. And that's from that, that understanding of who do we have there? And that's where you see, it sounds like you have Sab, right? That free safety position based on the understanding a little bit here, right? You have, um, I, I, who was he saying played that played his middle? I forgot. Was it Campbell or was it uh was it Lawson? You I'm sorry. Was? I, I was, I was dealing yeah, no with worries. that. I, I've been, I, yeah. I'm not, I, I have no idea what was just say that. Yeah. No, no good. You're good. Was who is a, uh, who, who did he slap in the middle? Was it Lawson or was it Campbell? Lawson. Yeah, that's right. Lawson. So then you have your Campbell at sting and then you got, um, and then, well, well it'll be interesting to see who's going to end up playing that no tackle position. Right. Because that's, that's going to be your big one there. Um, I'm interested to see how that plays out. I know there's a few names that they were rattling off that had some really good work in. But he also talks about what's cool, man, is he gets a couple of uh, questions overall, like around Lawson and what he's doing over from a standpoint of how he's making the impact. He pulls him aside, does some one-on-one stuff with him because this is, this is an interesting standpoint from the coach's uh, thought process, right? Is he pulls Lawson aside. Lawson being you would you would consider your leader on defense you have several leaders right but overall your defensive leader you pull him aside so when you need to correct something and make sure technically he is very sound and understands the concept or scheme right he corrects it and then what it does is it allows him to help everyone else around him very interesting utilizing your resources to get the message to everybody uh quicker who are on the field with him there, I, that is a, that's something a lot of coaches, I think, skip over and, and maybe miss um, at times 
is that how do you utilize these leaders in your locker room to get that message across as quickly as you can, uh, but in an efficient way in that, in that it allows, I guess, builds that camaraderie, right? Because when you're a player-led team, you can win. You win off of player-led teams, right? You, that, that's where that buy-in comes from. So he utilizes his guys. He uses Malachi Moore. We hear about him being talked about a lot. A, a lot. Uh, we, we, we are starting to hear about Sab being talked about a lot. Devonta Smith from an overall team aspect, right? We, we're hearing about these guys. And, a lot, and Lawson being a huge aspect, being that communicator, being that centerpiece, right, for that defense. But making sure he understands that concept so he can make sure everyone else around him is doing their job too. So, and 100, Byron, I like that. I, I have, I don't do much fishing, Byron, but I, I used to live right off of, uh, Right off of a creek in Gainesville, right? Little mm. little break. And guys, Jay, I, I saw you asked a question in here earlier. Why I, I didn't see him first start the personal insults, but you bet your sweet bippy, the first personal insult I saw that he threw, I, I banned him. And y'all know I will debate with a wall. So when I ban somebody, that means that mm. they've done something absolutely ban worthy. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, even if you're an opposing fan base, if you want to come in here, you want to troll, and it's good nature college football trash talk, I am down with that. I am 1,000% down with that. That's fun, right? Yep. And I get it. People can say, well, go to – if you're just in here having a good day, being like, oh, you know, I'm a te- we're going to beat you again this year. You know, it's the tides are changing. That's fine. Talk football. Mm-hmm. If you talk football, you can disagree with everything I say. I don't care. I don't care. Talk football. The second right it moves now. past football, and I apologize, guys. It is. It gets a little difficult to try and moderate chat, uh, especially when there are so many of you guys, and y'all are awesome and the undefeated. Mm-hmm. The chat absolutely goes like a machine gun sometimes. It's it. If I missed it. Um, I apologize. That's on me. If I missed the original personal insult, you guys know that that doesn't fly with me. Right, yeah. That doesn't fly with me. If we're talking football, yeah. you can say my team sucks. I can disagree with you. But if you're talking mm-hmm. football, that's cool. That's cool. Yep. Um, but the second – I'm not going to say what he said, Adam. I'm not going to say what he said. Um, but the second you start wanting to do personal insults, one, I, I, I am a former debater. You lost the debate. Right? The second he said that, I was like, oh, we got under your skin, and you're just you're just showing that you, you lost the debate. It, it's – that's 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 not that's not what we're gonna do here. But no matter what, guys, we, we in the undefeated. I don't care what anyone else does. We set the standard. That's right, man. Bama sets the standard. Doesn't matter if they go below the standard. Doesn't matter. We set mm-hmm. the standard. That's right. Um, but he's out of here, uh, and he's not just on timeout. Uh, I I I I banned him like full on. Yeah. Yeah. Timeout. Like timeout is like something. It's just like oh, okay, you know, but. At the point where people were saying there were multiple, um, no, guys, don't. It's all. It's all love. It's all love. No, nothing to apologize about. It's. It's. It's just. We did. We're, yeah. we're gonna. We're gonna keep on keeping on. That's what we do over here. We talk football. That's you right, noticed baby. everything I said to him. Football. I talked yeah. about championships. I talked about recruiting. Uh, football. You move yep. past football, you're liable to end up in timeout. You say something egregious, you're liable to get banned. And. When when I when I ban you, you already know it's it's bad. But Byron, I don't do a lot of fishing, man. I know I should. Would really love I to. Know, man. Let's 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 take a deep breath, everybody. We're gonna get into a little bit of a Thai story time, right? We're gonna get into a Thai story time real quick. <laughs> Calm the nerve. Yeah. So mm-hmm. growing up, I lived off of a creek, right? And so all the time, I had one of my friends I went to school with. His grandmother they owned a dairy farm right down the road. So sometimes we'd go over there. I'd hop on the back of a horse or I'd hop on the four wheeler and drive over there. But if I was Mm -hmm. on a horse, you know, you just ride over there at first. It was super cool because there was like an old native American burial ground there. And I mean, graves from like the 1700s etched, like just super cool stuff. Right. Yeah. Back behind their house was that same Creek. It's called Elm Creek in Mm -hmm. uh, North Texas. Well, we'd yeah. go back there and swim in this really deep area. I'll never forget one time I felt something, hit, you know, touch my leg. And I was like, oh, it's a fish. That's cool. That's cool. I looked mm-hmm. down, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Meryl, we were talking about how we have the mesquite trees out here. Yeah, man. And, yeah. And I, I've had, I've been back there trail riding, right? In the back <laughs> yeah. and, and had to come in 
and I'm pulling uh-huh. horns out my leg this long because they're just lodged in there. Um, dude, dude. But anyways, we're the other thing we got is alligator gar. Y'all ever oh, seen yeah, alligator yeah, yeah. gar? Dude, those things are huge, man. Yeah, they're so massive. I look up and I got about a four foot alligator gar right in front of me, and I'm 12, 13 years old at the time. Yeah, boy, I got out that water so quick. Yeah, that, that's my little, not not a great story, but a story nonetheless. A story no, like it, man. nonetheless. It's a good story, man. I hope everyone liked that story. That was a good story. That's freaking crazy, dude. That's wild. Like, uh, I saw a couple of questions in here too. While while Ty was yeah, going over this means, awesome please, epic please. Let's, story, let's I love some, it. Like, let's get some questions in here. Um, no, I did not cheat in basketball. The basketball bracket, I didn't cheat. Everybody, how are you doing in that? Followed my instinct. I. To be honest with you, I, it looked like I was getting whooped. I don't think I was number one, but I haven't checked today, so I got to go back and check. So Dwight keeps asking that. He says, you're number one. Uh, no, this is not a daredevil hat. This is not. This is Victos. Tactical gear, baby. Victos. Love it. Uh, it's a shield with a sword. I know it looks It looks like it, though. It does look like a D, though. Um, for dog. Uh, we get it, right? And so, and then... Uh, <laughs> For down bad. <laughs> That's right, man. Uh, just a duck. No. And so, and then in, in here, I think somebody asked for a little bit of explanation from like four, what two, a four, five. four two five. Um, I like Great it. Question. We, Great question. Yeah. Hi, can you, you want to jump in on this a little bit? Yeah. So I'll, I'll kick it off and then I'll pass it over to you. So DeAndre Please. Washington says, can I get a brief explanation on the four, two, five? So the four, two, five originally, as I understand it, and, and the, the fascinating thing about this is I've said this multiple times. I have a friend mm. who played for Gary Patterson and oh, for my yeah. football guys and gals out there and for my football historian guys mm. and gals out there, you will know Gary Patterson is Good like a godfather yeah. to what we what we now understand is the modern 425. I mean huge. So getting yep. Denzel to to sometimes break that down um to Dude. me was was unbelievable. But what it originated off of DeAndre was if you didn't have the talent of say Alabama or Georgia, you could play this versatile defense that was able to maximize speed and get your guys out in space to try and bridge the gap for more talented teams. And specifically, whenever you're talking about the modern passing attacks, mm-hmm. college football, you'll, you'll hear a team say, oh, we're, we're a 3-4 base or we're a 4-3 base. Yep. In theory, over the past 10 years, you've been a 3-4 base or a 4-3 base. Merrill, how much do you think, even the teams that are 4-3 or 3-4 bases, would you say it's fair to say that it's 65% 60 to 55 percent of the time they're lined up in a in a nickel like that's oh, just oh yeah especially today yeah. I, I would say it's probably even more i would say it's closer to like 65 70 percent of the time just with your facing these like offenses just like kds i mean you're running you're having to run like this you know nickel package majority of the game and sub packages and that's I mean, that's basically it's it's a it's a way to take guys when you're under man, like you're smaller from a defensive standpoint. The four two five was or maybe not as extremely talented. Right. But you were fast. You're athletic still. Uh, this That's what the four two five defense did is it capitalized on that speed and made sure you got more people to the ball. Right. Flowing from a run game, flowing the ball into alleys. Everyone swarmed to the alley. Right. It's all a flow game. Guys have like their single single um, responsibility, uh, it, and then from a from a pass game standpoint, it's like this zone read drop concept. And when you run like zone read drop, you play you play with it with the aspect of you, you get to play with a little more freedom. You get to use your eyes. You get to learn positions on the field to get to where the breaking points are, um, and it allows you to just, you know capitalize on your athleticism and speed. Which that's why I'm saying is it's a little scary that that with these athletes how <laughs> they taking that yeah 100 percent so it's a I mean it's a phenomenal defense I love it Jermaine says it right here Ty imagine Gary Patterson with Nick Saban's players that's what we're going to see guys I have Gary Patterson so fascinating to me because he had an eye for mm-hmm. talent man like he yeah. had an unbelievable eye for talent he would see a two three star cor- quarterback mm-hmm. like Denzel was. 
Denzel was only a three star because our high school coaches wait until the, his senior year to ever mm. do anything for him in terms of recruiting. Nothing. Yeah. He played in the NFL, Jake, but they did nothing for him in terms of recruiting until his senior year. And then all of a sudden, Over. Washington was his first Division One Power Five offer, followed mm. by TCU. Denzel was a quarterback. Yeah. They had him as a safety his first year, first team, all Big 12 safety. And after Smook gets done, hop Mm -hmm. on YouTube, type in Denzel Johnson. You're going to see one of those major highlight channels that do highlights for like Kool-Aid. He has a highlight on YouTube that's got a bunch of views. He was a baller, bro. I'm telling you, if they would have done more for him, he'd have been an SEC player. He'd have been... He is great. And the other guy I went to high school with that went to a small school in Oklahoma is David Mm. Moore. And some of you may know David Moore because he was with Seattle forever. I think he actually caught a uh, pass in the playoff of Tampa Bay. David and Denzel played on the same high school team. And it was like an and one mixtape because David was the wide receiver and Denzel was quarterback. It was an and one mixtape out there. It was awesome. Mm. So much fun. Ballers, man. Straight ballers. Like, and that's what, that's the thing is like, that's, it's funny you bring that up from a standpoint um, of these guys and what you're looking at uh, in the talent level that is being installed into this defense. I mean, in, in two, I, it's also interesting to see that, that Womack uh, and Saban really, when they do meet and they talk about it to make sure everything's like almost synchronized or what's similar there's the differences, but what's similar, we can, we really want to make sure we're speaking to it in our terms from Womack's side to the players, but how did, how did Saban run it from his side of, of his, you know, um, defense. So, and he ran this, like, you know, basically this like three, four nickel. So, I mean, it was, it's pretty, pretty cool from that aspect. And I'm excited to see it, um, just, just pop off. Right. Like that's what I'm excited for from the defense. So hopefully that explains a little bit about your defense. Um, but you know, what was interesting, Ty, was uh, with Christian Robinson, the new outside linebackers coach. Right. This is this is cool. So they did hit the interview with him. I am going to be honest. I'm really I'm impressed with each one of our coaches. But with Robinson, I didn't realize Robinson had so much familiarity with uh, Kane's dad. Because he was a GA at Ole Miss under Kane's dad. So he knows the system really well. So, like, you know what's cool is he says, he goes, you know, so I'm coaching these outside linebackers. You're wolf, right? Your wolf position from a standpoint. Uh, and he's like, you know, we're just ready to hunt. And I go, oh, my God. That's that's the new way. Because, you know, wide receivers have ice, wide receiver you, right? Um, I don't know what the DBs are going to do with their thing. But then you got uh, – but then you got – like Christian Robinson, who's like, yo, I, I coached the wolf, but right? and, and somebody brought that up in the interview. They're like, from a standpoint of these these positions crossing over, uh, and he's got like, man. So you're coaching the wolf position. Is that like a the, the theme you guys use is hunt? And he goes, oh yeah, we're ready to hunt. And I'm like, dude, that's man, that's cool. I like that. You guys, everybody's kind of getting their thing going on, right? Like their own theme for their room, right? And Christian Robinson's amazing. What's up? This is a good question for you. Um, mm-hmm. Is LT Overton playing the same position as Keon, or is LT playing a more defensive and defensive tackle role? Yeah, he's playing bandit. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly yeah. where they're moving Keon to, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, Ke- but I, but I, it was interesting to hear how that's playing, right? Um, how they're doing because Ke- Keon's getting there. He, you know, he's 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 putting that work in. It's a, it's difficult to switch the position like that uh, to go from standing down to the ground and 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 really focusing on technique. Uh, and I know Roach is out there working with him, which is awesome. Um, and I think he's going to get there. But but we could also see him in different sub packages too. That will be that'll be interesting. But <clears throat> but we could also see <clears throat> uh, from a standpoint with Overton, you know, he's getting those reps. It, it, it's it's an interesting thing at that bandit position i think again we have so much depth on the d line like who's gonna pop off right that's what they're the spring springs hard because it's a new defense and the installations of the new packages it's difficult to to get after that right with spring ball like that that's that's frustrating when you're when you're out there and you're trying to learn something a new position and you're having to understand this new install of packages so um 
I'm excited to see who picks it up fastest and then who excels fastest right out of that from that D line aspect. And and we've heard it like you, you'll see progression. Um, and Womack talks about this a little bit from a standpoint of <clears throat> from his from the coaching aspect of like these guys, like how he wants to see them progress. Uh, <clears throat> and one of those things that he said was like from a vision coverage standpoint, like he wants to see these guys continue to work at their vision coverage because the better you get at it as time goes on spring, uh, after spring working on outside and then fall ball and then to the season that they sh these guys should progress, right? It's all about evolution. Uh, with learning defense, being more comfortable in everything, getting to this vision coverage aspect where they are breaking right where they need to, to, to make plays, whether that's interceptions or, or knockdowns. So I like it, man. Like I, I love that. That's a great concept to think about. Like, you know, everybody wants to see, are you the best right at this exact moment? Well, we don't play games right at this exact moment. So if these guys are, are doing what, his evolution theory is and they're progressing to where they need to be to start the season within those first two games and they're hitting it off there then you have to feel good about momentum going into the season and that's the whole goal right is how do you get momentum and then how long can you carry it right so the big we'll mo mm -hmm. a big mo yeah, yeah. i people said yeah, he might not guys here's the thing he's learning a new position and we have to remember mm -hmm. he was he's a huge individual He's a huge yeah. individual. Uh, if he if he gets the opportunity, he's going to do great things. Super excited for his future. Very talented prospect, right? Mm -hmm. Very talented yep. prospect. Said uh, in spring portal, guys, warden the coaching circles as they expect 20 to 30% turnover in the spring portal across the sport going to be wild. Just judging from the people I've talked to, uh, go ahead and strap in. Get ready. Yeah, man. <laughs> spring portal is going to be great. I bet you there's some teams that are going to like get some teams who are really, really good right now who are going to be broken potentially after the spring portal because of depth and everything else. Right. And then there's teams who maybe had an expectation of being sub all right. They'll be OK. But all of a sudden now their depth is really good or they get this talent level that's going to be really good and they're going to they're going to push. Also, I mean, we don't know how much like from a standpoint that stuff where guys are already starting to look at, but I can tell you it's, it's going to be, it's going to be wild. I mean, you had Michigan's D line coach, like who they just hired Greg Scruggs, right? He's gone with that uh, OWI. I mean, speaking of that, you have Trevor ETN who gets a D DUI over the weekend at Georgia, uh, which it, that's another thing, man. It's like, you, you, you got to do a better job of holding your players accountable. Like, how can you have that going down? I mean, yeah, it's it's tough, but you've now had two incidents, uh, especially with, like, potentially drinking and driving uh, within a short period of time at Georgia. Like, you guys really need to start locking your shit in. Like, this is that's ridiculous. And, yeah, listen, I get it, right? Because I've seen people saying, oh, well, it's, you know, it's it's people making bad decisions. But the bad decisions have cost someone's life, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. not that anybody cares. I have personally buried mm. three really close friends from yeah. drink, drinking and driving. That's why I've had these bottles of whiskey back here. And you can tell they, they might move that much over a month. I I'm not a big mm. drinker. I I've buried way too many friends. I'm yep. not even 30 yet, but before I got out of high school, I buried mm -hmm. a close friend. The day I was about to drive down to see one of my friends for his birthday, right? I was all ready. I already had my bags packed the night before. I, I wake up to a call at 4.30 in the morning that they'd flipped the car. People got scared, ran out, and unfortunately, he didn't make it. Well, that was the day I was supposed to go see him for the... So it, it's one of those things where I, hopefully it does get solved at Georgia. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pile on because of my personal experiences. Yeah. With drinking and driving, my biggest hope is that everybody is able to get through this. It, it's a learn. Uh, best case scenario is that this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. It was an incident that should have never happened. Nobody was hurt, mm -hmm. and that's where we can see yep. the turnaround. That's what I'm going to be praying for when it comes yeah. to the, the Georgia situation. I'm not going to pile on though because I that that's that's a that's a very touchy subject for me.
um, yeah. in terms of the drinking and driving. That's a very touchy subject for me. 100, man. And that's, there's a lot of respect to that too. Like in the end of the day, just, you know, make good decisions. That's what it comes down to is like, you got a future. So I, I tell uh, my wife all the time, whenever her and her teacher friends go out, they already know. Mm -hmm. I, I, yep. I tell them, here's my phone number. You need me 100. to come get you. I'm there. Uh, I actually, mm -hmm. I didn't drink after oh, wow. uh, that, that last one I told you about for eight years. I didn't have oh, any yeah. alcohol because I was just like jaded. I, I was in a fraternity at University of North Texas, and I was known okay. as the uh, the designated driver because I told oh, them, good. if you need someone, I don't care if it's 2.30 in the morning, you spam mm -hmm. my phone until yeah. I answer, and I will be there. I don't care if you're in Dallas. I don't care if I have to drive two hours. I'm going to come get you. Mm -hmm. It's all love. Like that's – that you know. We, yeah. you, that's, that sucks to see. Hopefully that's nipped in the bud, right? Because that's, 100, man. you can't have that. It's already cost people. It's already oh, yeah. cost lives uh, of people. Yeah. And that's just awful to see. Um, you, you never want to see any of that, man. I was the no. designated driver back in my dumber days. No, <laughs> Jor, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's interesting. Okay. Like, okay, Jor, I, I don't even know what that stands for. The I, I know what it stands for. Oh, we're gotcha. Gonna, okay. Well, we're going to leave. He's, he's making it. Jor is Jor, man. He's just funny. Uh, yeah, he's just he funny, funny, dude. Adam, uh, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's, that's life, Adam. You know, you live, you learn. Unfortunately, right. some lessons come with far deeper consequences than other lessons. Um, that's 100, man. And that's just the nature of life, man. That's just the nature of life. It's all about how you adapt to the lessons you've been given. All right. Yep. Um, True fact, dude. But I saw earlier, Adam, you were saying you were stung by some jellyfish, right? That that does suck. I, have you ever been stung by a bunch of jellyfish, Jake? Oh, I have. Man. Dude, the Puget Sound, like so, like Washington, right, in the Pacific Northwest, Puget Sound, yeah, you get jellyfish out there. And it's cold. And I tell you what, man, you swim in that, it's like taking an ice bath. Okay. Pacific Ocean, Puget Sound, it's an ice bath. But it was great in between two days in practice. You'd go and jump in and just basically that was your ice bath. So See, it's, I it's always a worry. way to roll. I, yeah. I always worry. I, I've always wanted to get out there to the West mm -hmm. Coast, specifically the northern West Coast, because I love mountains. Okay. Right. Yeah, like, I know. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love, like if I if I whenever I go to like Virginia with my brother mm -hmm. and them, I'm either on the slopes or you can catch me on the beach surfing. So like areas that give me the both of that, the best of both worlds is awesome. But if I ever went to Oregon or Washington, I worry mm. I wouldn't come home, Jake. Like that's why I haven't <laughs> ever gone out there because I would just get a little piece of land, a, a little house out there with a mountain. Yeah. And be like, I am so just content here. Like I, I wouldn't come home. I'd be out there. I've told you this. I, I don't know. I've told the mm -hmm. people this before. Uh, before I really got deep into YouTube, I was big into bow hunting. I mean, oh, we nice. do spot and stalking. That's something we do yeah. out here, uh, spot and stalk, but hogs. I love it, man. So you're That's on the awesome. ground going through kind of the woods with a bow and you're spot stalking hogs. I'd mm -hmm. be up there elk hunting uh, with a bow, spot stalking Ooh. up mountains and stuff like yeah. that. I, let me tell you what, you guys would catch me again. I'd have on a flannel shirt and a beard down to here, uh, looking dude. real rough, but I'd be happy as a clam. <laughs> They'd love it, man. That's, I mean, seriously, that's kind of like what you get, especially if you got like to the east side uh, in, uh, in Washington, the east side of the state. Like, you, you definitely get that over there. Like, the, the west side is way different because it, it's separated. The state, the state's a big state, but it's separated by a mountain, right? The Cascade Mountain Range right down the middle. So the east side, you have a lot more farmland spread out. That's where you get to go do that. I love that stuff. But I tell you what, man, on the on the west side, it's like packed out. It's West side's crazy as hell in Washington, man. Like everyone's like, well, you guys don't got that many people. But I'll tell you what, it is crazy as hell. So, uh, but it's has some beautiful areas too, like 100%. And I, think, I think for me, I think it's like Idaho, Montana. Man, I mean, I lived in Montana as a kid. I'll tell you that. I was cool as cool as can be. And Montana's pretty. Wow. Yeah, they took me out to Colorado one time. We stayed in oh, a little yeah. cabin and I could walk to the uh what's the Pikes Peak National Park? Like the fence okay. of Pikes Peak National Park was less than a hundred oh, yeah. yards from the cabin, and we would just go hop the fence and go walk yeah. through there. And I uh if I hadn't have been in the eighth grade, I'd have stayed there. Like I mm -hmm. you put me in environments like that. 
um, uh, it's it's done. Patriot Life yeah. with another, another ooh, five ooh, gifted ooh. subs for Bama Football on YouTube with Kyle Henderson. Kyle Henderson, geez. Thank you so much, Patriot Life. Always killing it. Now, Louis, new, <laughs> Louis says I'd be out there wearing opossum bottoms. You're probably right. Yeah, no, that, that, that it'd be bad. Someone else asked, I don't know if you saw this, they asked uh, mm -hmm. whether it would be me or Blaze in the woods. I think the sad <laughs> part is you'd see them become one and the same eventually. And then yeah, just molding together animals, animals, beasts, dude. I love it. Man, I'm serious though, real quick. Did you, have you seen the size that Devonta Smith has put on? Yes. Yes. Like he is, dude, he is, he got buff. Like he's put on, so he got thick. I like it, man. Like he's he's prime for that role of husky. And it's not just him, right? We talk about mm -hmm. and let's let's talk yeah, about this, saying. right? The, the Bama strength and conditioning. It, it, mm -hmm. it really is incredible what they're doing. You know, you talk about Devontae Smith, a hundred percent, Jake. What about like a Jalen Mbakwe? Where whenever oh I first saw him mm -hmm. in that video, I had just seen the the roster, and I was like, okay. Yep. There, the, he's number nine, and then I see number nine in drills, and I'm like, "That's not Mbakwe. That dude is huge." And like Mbakwe has mm -hmm. got the frame to put on good weight and not diminish oh, athleticism. Yeah. But I was like, "No, he's not going to look like that a month and a half into him really working out at Bam." No, he has put on such good weight. He looks he good. Put on such, but it's 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 awesome, man. Has Damani gotten um, any bigger? Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. tell. He's gotten a little bit bigger, but Damani's kind yeah. of a lean, long guy, and mm. he's always been that way, right? Like, yeah. he's always just, he's kind of like, he's built, don't get me wrong, but he's he's got more length to him. Um, mm -hmm. Super athletic guy. And like I told you, super. Jake, the one thing I loved whenever I was watching that drill where it was like, press, press, and then release, his yeah, feet, yeah. his footwork, oh, yeah. you can tell what a supreme athlete he is because his mm -hmm. footwork was really nice in that i'm really excited for what mo linguist is going to be able to do with him in particular um because oh, yeah. he he has all the ability in the world it's just mm -hmm. about the consistency just about getting him repped up a uh, lot of exciting names in the defensive back room ladies and gentlemen a lot of exciting names I mean, seriously dude like the, you got you, the, those guys back there especially from that freshman standpoint you look at those dudes like you have so you have guys especially as they develop and get better and better and better I mean, you get you definitely got some first round draft picks out of that defensive back room, or not just didn't like he, one or two. You got a lot. Didn't he run a? I don't want to say this out because I could be wrong, but I, I want to say he got a sub 10 3 100 meter Whoa. dash. Really? I, if I'm not mistaken, he clocked like a 10 2 7 at one point, but I, I don't want to. Oh, let me look. Let me look at this. I want to see, man. I want to like, see. He is really, really fast. Yeah, 10 2 5. Yeah, he well, same. He ran a four-two-one in tenth grade. But that's a YouTube video. I don't. That's pretty freaking insane. So I, get, I'm only going off of the Los whoa. Angeles Times. Modern days, Damani Jackson ties 100 meter record at state championships with a ten-two-five. That's insane! Wow. <laughs> whoa, dude. That's and, and uh, he's like six foot one. Carries good weight too. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. is. I and don't think. I don't think the average, even Alabama fan, and and part of that is on me. I, I haven't done mm -hmm. my due diligence and really talking about him as much as I probably should. But that kid has got different athleticism, Jake. Like oh, yeah. genuinely different. He's yeah. the one percent of the one percent. Mm -hmm. Like he's a stud. Stud. Well, honestly, that would be a guy I would talk to. I mean, you talk about like from a. USC standpoint, he comes here and he's super productive. Okay, they had a changeover of of change of guard on the defense for USC. Fair enough. All right. Like we, we still don't know though. Right. So I mean you talk about like all these recruits wanting to go to USC. Well, you look at Damani Jackson, who can, should be considered probably one of their best grabs ever. Uh, who okay, he didn't thrive at SC, but is that his fault? No. Again. Development is huge. Development is huge. You can't talk about it enough. Continue Nobody to make these guys the best look good. Media. No, man, it's is brutal. And from his standpoint, he comes here, and we've already heard like how how good he looks. I mean, truly, like we, there has been a lot of things that have said from the back standpoint of like you know the fact that Womack brings up Damani Jackson 
one of the first names he brings up in his interview. Like it, it's happening. Yeah. It's the truth. It's happening. These guys are putting in that work and that drive and that focus. And I'm excited to see him. I'm excited to see him out there playing, man. I can't wait to see him play. Like it finally have that that sense of, man, I belong here. I'm loved. I'm focused. I'm driven. I love that. I love that. So we'll see where that uh where that goes. What's what's around the table sports TV? Yeah, he's saying that? just just the principle right here. I love this. Talking about wait till Ryan Williams gets here. Listen, best on best. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? There was a video yeah. the other day. Uh, one of the guys I do content with, his he's got family that's actually at Colorado. Uh, oh, okay. Omarion Miller. He's related to Omarion Miller over there at Colorado, and they had a clip of Omarion Miller and Travis Hunter repping against each other. Like, Whoa. I mean, you just think that every single day. You're going to have Damani Jackson repping against Hale, Law, Prentice, Ryan Williams, Jeremy mm-hmm. Bernard. Like, that, that gets you better, man. Like he, that gets you a lot better. And that's going to be the guys lined up across from him all the time. Love that. Yeah. I, well, and that's, that's the thing is like, you have this, this wide receivers coach, like you can, I can guarantee you shepherds out there pushing those DBs as hard as he's pushing the wide receivers and everyone else. Right. I'm in your head all day. I'm in your head all day. He says it out there. Right. You know, I catch everything. He, that, that competition that they create and then, Mo Linguist, it's not like he's some quiet, laid back dude. He is a technical dude. And they talk about his energy. He will show you the drill. He will do the drill, show you him actually do it before you do it. That, that says something because there's not, I mean, yeah, there's college coaches do that. But I mean, he, he like goes through the drill. He brings that type of hype, that energy. And he's a technical guru. So I love listening to Mo talk. But you, you don't think those two have competition out in the field? Exactly. That's part of the. That's part of that whole aura. That's part of that fun. That's part of that excitement. So yeah, these DBs, especially from a cornerback standpoint, you get out there and you go one on ones with these wide receivers. Man, I love it. And uh, there's a question about Jaleel Hurley right there, ZG nine. Like, so I've heard. I heard he is doing great things. I heard that he has the right mindset. That he he's just he's dedicated. He's driven. Um, that he's really like worked on himself. Worked on. Um, understanding the game better his game and what he brings uh and improving through this defense you know he was the other name that Womack had brought up during his uh he talked about Demai Jackson Julio Hurley and what they bring to the table so I, I would expect they continue to progress uh and continue to learn this defense and uh and I think we're going to really see those two have some time on that field right whether whether starters are rotating into different packages so for and sure. defensive back I know there's a lot of new names, Mm -hmm. but this is something Jake, I kept talking about for a while where I I sat back and I was like, if, if I had the opportunity to talk to Mo Linguist or Colin Hitchler or even Womack and I said, Mm -hmm. Oh, how's the rebuild in the secondary going? I'm sure they would answer the question, but I know that there's a part of them that would almost be laughing inside being like (laughs) rebuild brother. I have more five stars in one room than I had on my entire roster at the last school like yeah you think yeah Bama pulled three five-star defensive backs did Wisconsin have three five stars mm-hmm. I don't know like I I don't think that they, uh, they I have don't think three so in one room I, I just yeah. I would love to ask linguists like what do you think about this rebuild because he came from Buffalo he'd look at you and be like rebuild I have Keon Sab. I have yeah. Zay Zabian Brown Tony Mitchell who was a former five-star at one point, still mm-hmm. a top 300 prospect when it was all said and done. Jaleel Hurley was a former five-star at one point, didn't finish it out, but a top 100 prospect when it was... They have more talent in one room than Linguist had oh, yeah. on his whole roster, and he's hearing, oh, you have to do a rebuild. He's looking around saying, rebuild what? Yep. The five stars yep. are here. <laughs> what do you want me to do, man? I'm just going to coach him up. I, I would, I would, I'd be tickled to hear what they had to say about that. Oh, 100%. Like, I, well, you know, what's cool is like when Hitchler got up to interview, I think what was interesting with him was like, number one, his, his personality. I like his overall personality. Like he's just one of those guys who he's easy to talk to. He's low key. He has that big kind of scruffy looking thing going on like a beard. I don't know if it's beard or what it is, but you know, Hey man, it's, it's, it's working. It's all good. But you get up and you listen to him talk and he talks about, like how excited he is and how nice it is to work with these guys 
uh, such as Sab and Malachi Moore and Devonta Smith, right? And how these guys all work in. And from a safeties room standpoint, like just the talent back there and how the transition for him has been, right? And he is one of those coaches that I think people are going to be very, very surprised by just because he doesn't have all necessarily a bunch of flashy stuff in his background, but he's very, he is very, very sound. And he has a lot of, uh, a lot of unique experience that he brings, which is innovative. And when you have that as a coach from uh, a life experience standpoint, not just with sports, but life experience in general, um, it's interesting to see how those guys use it to get the communication and the messages and uh, things across in a different way. And I think it really helps players, you know, it, when you hear a different style of message, right. Or a different style of communication, it really helps. And I, you're truly seeing it with those guys. Those guys say, have a lot of good stuff to say about Hitchler and what he does. Right. I have made it no secret. The first coach I talked about whenever everybody in the undefeated, you all asked me, Hey Ty, what, what coach are you super pumped up about? I, I was sitting over here saying Hitchler, easy answer. And I love all the hires we've made, but Hitchler on defense, that's that's the name yeah, I'm going to give you. I, I thought it was really funny, Jake. It was like mm-hmm. a week after I had done a segment on Hitchler and why I was so big about him. Josh Pate was on there and someone had asked him a very similar question in his mailbag that he does. A mm-hmm. great okay. segment where he does okay. the mailbag segment. He answers yeah. people's questions via Twitter. And he did a whole expose on Hitchler as well, being like, Bama got one. And you're going to find out real quick that this cat mm-hmm. is different. Um, love that addition. Love the yep. Hitchler addition. Super pumped up about what he's going to bring to this room, especially now that he has sat to work with. Oh, I know. Well, and we'll see what happens at the portal, too. Like, again, I'm not really ruling sad. out that we can't grab depth uh, potentially off of the portal and what happens you know um and here's there there you go there's your question um what rooms do you think we'll lose guys in the transfer pool? i i don't know there was something just said recently uh by devonta smith right um they were they call it smitty that's what that's what coach Womack was calling him for a nickname smitty um there was something said if you haven't seen the article uh i think it is let me check here it's on I think it's on, yeah, Bama Online, okay, uh, by Charlie Potter. Great article. But um, he talks about, Devonta Smith, when he talks about commitment and loyalty being number one. Uh, he talks about the guys in the room uh, in, in general on the team and, and understanding that loyalty. So, I granted, not saying it's that prevents guys from leaving necessarily, okay? But I'll tell you, man, like there's something going on where these guys are really trying to come together as one one whole unit, one whole team. And, and like I said, player-led teams. Player-led teams will have the most success, right? Um, holding each other accountable, keeping their standard high, and buying in and, and make sure everybody is in on the plan to and what we can do to win. So I, it's hard to say which rooms would, would be the ones, obviously, to lose. I mean, we could just go based off of depth or how much how many people but i don't know what do you think ty yeah i think i think you hit the nail on the head it's always a little uh, i'm always a little hesitant to speculate who could leave right because mm-hmm. that's that's a tough answer right and i and i don't want to be the one to put anything out there because it's it's not my news to break if someone did decide to leave that's their that's their story to create and i'm here to just tell the story after it's already been laid forth. I'm not here to lay the foundation of their story, right? I'm just here Mm -hmm. to tell their story. So I I don't know who will portal out, but the transfer portal comes for all, right? One of the things we've talked about is the transfer portal giveth, the transfer portal taketh. That's the (laughs) universal truth of the transfer portal. It giveth, it taketh. That's That's, That's how it is. So, just to operate under yep. that assumption, right? The transfer portal giveth, the transfer portal taketh. That's that's oh, always sure. how I refer to the transfer portal. Yep, I mean, it's like Doctor Strange, right? From from Marvel, it's like, it, you know, he just opens up those circles and they go yeah. to another world, right? So uh, it's pretty funny, man. Like it's just so ah, it's just crazy, man. And uh, there's a couple. This guy, I see, I see this question, and I see one above it about the takers. Yeah. For those who don't know who the takers are, that is the other nickname 
for the group of wide receivers that um, that Shepard has. So his thought process is we, we, we don't we just don't go out there and they give us the ball, right? As a wide receiver, we take that ball. We go out. So it's it, it, it's funny because uh, that's a that's kind of Womack style too. Like with the defense of take we we take those uh, those turnovers, right? They're not turnovers. They're not like they don't, they're not given. We take them. So that's cool that you have these two competing concepts of the same <laughs> on offense and defense. But um, but yeah, I mean, you talk about Jalen Milrow. What's I mean? Where do you look at it from a standpoint? I mean, he's one of the highest returning, if not, I, I, and I, I forget the, the exact voting, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah. but he, he's one of the highest returning players in the nation and it got votes. He mm-hmm. is now with an offense that is far more friendly to the quarterback position. He has not had a quarterback coach at this level ever. Bama has not had a quarterback coach at this level since, and I've said this before, what was it, when Sark and A.J. Milwee were here? Yeah. I mean, they have not had someone that does with the quarterback what mm-hmm. Kalen DeBoer and these guys do. And with him being a grad student, he's able to put a lot of a lot of focus on football. I think Jay Lamilro mm-hmm. has all the tools. He had one of the highest percentage of deep ball passes in the nation last year, automatic yeah. over 20 yards. And mm-hmm. we have to remember, he had an offensive line. Yeah, William, we're talking about it right now, my man. He had an offensive line last year that half the time, have you ever seen that uh, that family guy meme where Stewie is sitting back there and Stewie says hut and then he looks up and says, oh, nobody's blocking. And everybody just exacts him. <laughs> that was Jalen Dilro for a lot of last year. He'd say hut and look up and be like, ah, nobody's blocking. And then just get yeah. They were 129th yep. in the nation. Mm-hmm. offensive line allowing sacks that's first off that's inexcusable the fact that you yeah. made it to the college football playoff mm-hmm. that with that porous of an offensive line is unbelievable right so you sure up the offensive line he now understands what it takes to be a starter yep i i think i think jalen milrow is poised to succeed that's why i'm so excited about it I'm really excited about him. Oh, I agree. What you're you're spot on right there. I think also, you know, from the offensive line standpoint, I think we're going to see some dramatic improvement. Um, and I I I know those guys. Those guys are driven. Pete, you know, there's a reason each one of the recruits rolling in right now. Um, uh, that our offensive linemen. If you've seen some of their comments that they've made about attending practice and seeing it, like I said, Langston Hogg was on with us the other night. Uh, this last week and then uh, we've seen like Tyler Merrill <laughs> it's funny he has the same last name as me man but uh, he's a 2026 offensive tackle and then there's several other big big names that we're looking at uh, from the 2025 guys too right uh, that are studs I will tell you like that offense offensive line has people excited coach coach cap has people excited a lot of good things there so um, I mean overall it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool to see. Uh, man, my computer I think is freezing up a little bit over here. But it's gonna be cool to see that um, that development and how these guys truly bring it together in what Milro does. I think I think you just are gonna see a completely different. Just that from a offensive line to a to a quarterback standpoint, right? You you're gonna see something, a product that is so so much more polished. Um, and so much more on on the same page with with synchronization with their wide receiver room and running backs that just that just eat in this offense i really do i mean it and and you, not to mention you forget about the tight end room that is going to have a um a unique style of play in this offense that it are they're going to exploit against teams who don't realize it that and we're going to have an offense that features pre-snap motion mm-hmm. far more and last year, I was just down in the dumps by how few, like, we did not do enough pre-snap motion. Pre-snap motion is just helping your young quarterback out, like allowing him to figure out and get more reads on what the defense is doing. Uh, no no offense to Tommy Reese, I did not think that the offense was conducive to helping a young quarterback. It was almost for a quarterback that was already supposed to know all of these things. 
not yep. one that's a first year starter learning it, right? Mm -hmm. Pre-snap motions, that's going to help him identify coverages. That'll help the offensive line. It'll help everything. Now you have an offense far more creative. But ladies yeah. and gentlemen, you hear the music. The 12 mm -hmm. o'clock hour is here. And here soon, Smook will be with us. But we're going to hold it down for a bit longer. It's hard to yeah, be mad at Reese when we got a new offense that was at least coherent. Now we're just going to be like, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think Reese was like, I don't know. I always kind of defend Reese. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I always say it with, it's not like, I'm not saying he was a fantastic offensive coordinator. My defensive Reese comes from the standpoint of he, was, he wasn't there long. He'd never worked with a quarterback like Jalen Milrow. I mean, you look at the quarterbacks he worked with at Notre Dame. They weren't close to the skill set Jalen Milrow has. So that was already new. He didn't get to bring in his offense. He's 33, yeah. 34 years old and instantly, while still learning to be an offensive coordinator, comes to Alabama and is told, oh, now you got to learn our offense with our players. I've always defended Reese a bit, but there is no question. As much as I kind of defend him, there is no question. You're in better hands now. You're in much oh. better hands with this offensive staff. Oh, yeah. I mean, overall, from a standpoint, I mean, I've talked about this like time and time again, but you just look at the bright, amazing minds of this offensive staff from our tight end coach, from our analyst standpoint, um, from our head coach, our offensive coordinator, passing game coordinator, offensive line coach, every one of them. I mean, and we forget about the analysts. Like there are other guys who work and help the offense from the back standpoint. And um, and I don't have a list of all their names, but I'll tell you, man, I do think that these guys, Katie is not just going to feed the media a bunch of BS about Milrow, like looking as good as he looks. He's not just going to say that. It's it, it, it That's not how it works. He's not just coming up with all these things, right? Like he means it from the standpoint, guys are seeing it in practice. The media is seeing it. It's good. Like, you guys are going to be excited. So, but I know we do got Coach Smook about to roll in here. Uh, yo, yo, what's good, family, brothers? What's going on, man? How y'all feeling? Good, what's man. Good? How's that? How you doing? I'm good, man. Look, this morning, it got a little spicy this morning on the social okay. media platforms. Y'all, it's, it's, it's buzzing, but we got some good oh. vibes today. Got some good energy. Uh been talking to a lot of recruits this week this weekend i talked to a lot of recruits like a Good, lot man. yeah saturday right. sunday um saturday was a big one and then sunday okay. after luke Metz, uh like all yesterday evening just inbox left and right uh yeah somebody i think everybody be excited about that i was able to talk to is david sanders oh i like it man i like it and you know when i have an agenda you know, mm -hmm. I, I I put I put some extra juice on it, right, Paul? Yeah. But uh, put some extra energy behind it, and uh, I think I think I'm gonna put my name in the hat to be like a, a on on the scene recruiter or something like a like sub subcontract me to be a recruiter or something. I think oh, I'm I getting like good it, at man. this. <laughs> good man, you got man. I'm excited to hear what you uh, what you have to say, man. I'm I'm God, what you see how that we can go. Huh? What you over there reading, Ty? I'm just chilling, looking at two four seven. What are they talking about? Nah, nothing. I'm just looking at recruits and stuff. Like I told y'all, someone asked about the offensive line recruits. Mm -hmm. Like I told uh, Jake earlier, Smook, and you'll remember this. The first person that was really like heavy, heavy talking about Bama and Luke Metz was my OU guy. He hit me all the yeah. way back in February mm -hmm. and said, yeah. "Hey, watch this name. If y'all offer, because we hadn't even offered yet." There you go. We hadn't even offered Mets yet, right? And so he started saying it. Then you were getting your scoop, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's legit. Well, that same guy actually texted me a few weekends ago, and he said, hey, and I quote, Bama is doing Bama things behind the scenes without Saban. And he's like, I actually need y'all to suck this year. That way you don't take all of our recruits. He's like, because y'all are killing it. Specifically, he gave me three offensive linemen. Ty Haywood. Ty Haywood, one to watch. Marlo did I not just say this, Jake? No, you did, man. One hundred. Trust me, I'm I'm spot on, man. I know. Yeah, Ty Haywood. Um, another one who I'm not mm -hmm. going to dive into super super deep right now. And uh, 
Actually, he gave me like three or four, and he was like, hey, y'all are killing it on the trail for these five-star offensive linemen. Y'all are moving needles. So that mixed with what you've been told, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking yeah. real good. Be honest with you, that's the group that I I would be targeting between linebackers, which they're doing, uh, and offensive linemen. I mean, that's the group you go after for this recruiting class for sure. And they're doing that. You know what I'm but saying? I think I think you got your specifics with DBs, um, and you kind of narrow that down to the guys who really fit uh, with this group who can compete with these guys. That's a hard group to compete with. You yeah. Know? But, man, and listen, that's... you you know it's good whenever you're hearing from outside mm -hmm. sources and that's the that's... same thing that smook is hearing and he is an in you get what i mean so like you have someone that's not even a bama a bama yeah. guy he covers an entirely different team and he's backing up everything smook is saying being like no 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 no, no. there's some wild stuff happening in the background whenever you're hearing it whenever smook is getting the scoop and i'm hearing from people that don't even cover bama that's how you know ladies and gentlemen Things are moving in the background. Things are happening, and it's going to be very exciting. And you know what's scary, Ty and Jake? It's not a money bag situation. This is mm -hmm. kids coming. And they, so uh, a kid that uh, we were kind of asking about a, a few weeks ago in the chat, I know when I say the name, uh, Daylon Upshaw from Central Phoenix City. We mm -hmm. were all yeah. like, man, if we can get his attention, that'd be cool to add him and have him in the mix. So apparently initially his first initial visit when he came after Saban retired he wasn't getting much attention a lot of recruits were feeling the same way that first week or two when they were having you know a lack of contact now these kids coming back now that things are set in stone and they're rolling there's like been a flip it happened with Juju Lewis it happened with Antonio Coleman it happened with uh who was the young man that just committed also let me pull this list back up Abdul Sanders, uh Abdul Sanders, but but he came with the same when Saban was here. Like all of these kids that are able to show up mm -hmm. now with this yep. staff in place and they're like they're able to, you know, do what they do. It's it's a mm -hmm. different vibe, man. Oh, 100 man. Like I said, I'm I'm excited to hear. Obviously, you know, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about all this and man, I <clears throat> and just to dig in and and uh and break this down from the recruiting standpoint because recruiting Recruiting's fun. It's like a competition outside of football, right? Like all year, right? So you're just constantly playing these from team to team. Like who's who's doing what to win the game? Shout out to and, my bro Brody. Brody oh, yeah. in the chat, man. Love it, What's man. Up, Brody, we oh. gotta get Brody on, on on screen one day. We gotta make sure he don't violate uh his contract or anything like that. You know, Brody big time. So we gotta gotta talk to his uh his uh personal assistant and his uh brand coordinator and all I that love it. <laughs> I love it but, that's my brother man but yeah, yeah man wait. that's that's what we got today on my segment I got a few segments set up and I think it's gonna be a good one today I really do I love it well hey coach Smook love it man Ty thank you for the time today I know we had a long me and Ty had two hours and it was a long I know man I like y'all two hour segment I love it I, <laughs> yeah, I love it it was fun, man. It was. It was good. We got into a lot of different stuff. And then chat and undefeated. Appreciate you guys. See you all this evening. Yeah. 100%. 100%. All right. Yep. Cool. Much love, y'all. All right, time, all. everybody. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all already know Smook's got you covered. Like I said, whenever you hear the people outside of Bama are saying the same exact thing that Smook is being told, that's how you know it's getting crucial out here. It's mm -hmm. getting real crucial, and Smook is about to have y'all covered for this next hour, doing a fantastic job, as always. Have a good show, my man. Roll Tide, brother. Roll Tide, my man. Oh, no, yes, he sir. removed himself. No, nah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. It just do the automatic switch out. You know, we're trying to, trying to juice it up a little bit. Pause. I got to stop saying it, because y'all be killing me. Y'all be killing me. What's up, chat? What's up, Undefeated? How y'all feeling, man? How y'all feeling? It's Monday morning. Y'all know I'm coming in motivated. We're coming in with the energy. Nothing but that tie, baby. We don't give a piss about none. We don't give a piss about none. But that tie, baby. Yes. Yes, what's good, man? What's up, Ricky? How you feeling? Tim Nolan, how you feeling? Brody in the building. Nicole in the building. My boy Hot Like Pew94 says, uh, people are talking like it's better now as far as connecting with younger generations. I think it's amazing Saban still was able to do it recently. It is. But the thing is, that's what Saban, 
I don't think y'all realize how how much Saban was eluding to the fact that he was kind of losing touch with how things were changing with society. Saban's mindset and what society is integrating to doesn't align. So he felt like the moment he was not able to be an impact for a positive, a, a positive impact for the, the university or the program or young men in general, that's when he will remove himself. I commend Saban because he did it on his own terms and nobody had to push him out. Saban left at the top of the game, bro. Saban left as a, he left the team, a top 14, clearly playoff team, right? He left us with, and the roster still is talented. As you all can see, he left us with a, a culture that was winning. Like Saban did it, did it the perfect way. Yeah, let's go. Chris Walkman from Panama City. Let's go, man. That's what I'm talking about. Pull up, pull up everybody. Wendy, how you feeling? Yes, Cynthia in the chat. Let's go, Xavier Barker. Y'all know what to do. Run it up, man. Run it up. I'm showing. Hey, I'm showing y'all love today. It's Monday. I'm going to make sure everybody motivated. I want to make sure everybody's ready to hear about Alabama football today. We've talked about Alabama basketball with Kyle. We talked some recruiting, some roster depth, all of that schematics and stuff with uh, Jake and 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 Ty. Y'all come in. Let's finish this uh, morning session off. Let's finish this first half of the day off with some energy. Let's talk about some future stuff. Let's talk about recruits. Let's get into it, y'all. Let's go. Nicole is in there. Chance Fawcett. Hayes, little cousin. What's good, man? James Cloud is in the building. Megan is in the building. Ruben is in the building. Let's go. Let's go. Ricky Smith said, hello, sweet 16. Yeah, them boys, they, them antelope wasn't playing, though. I'm telling y'all, them boys could jump. What's up, Nicole? She said, I'm with the scoop, baby. Yes, sir. I got a little bit. Got a little bit, you know. We're trying to do it. Ruben in there. Hey, Chad said that. Hey, you ain't you ain't Hayes cuz I'm <laughs> listen, man. Appreciate y'all for hanging out. But before we get into our segments, y'all, before we get into the segments, let's run this commercial, man. Y'all know we gotta pay our pay our bills. We gotta show some love to our sponsors. Shout out to Residence Inn in Ocean City, Maryland. Shout out to Rogueshop.com for the CBD, the legal CBD, hooking your bodies up. And then Demetrius Mana, the main group, Big Money Meets, my brother. Man, appreciate y'all for supporting and, and being sponsors. Check out this commercial. Kyle, take it away. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special Bambo football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com. Use the promo code Bama. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is BAMA. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day how do you do this make sure you're logged into your account this is on a computer you can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership once you click membership you can see different options you can see an upgrade button right there to the right if you want to go through the different levels we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at bama football on youtube very easy to navigate let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on bama football on youtube and of course if you want to rock that undefeated gear Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in O. I'm mad that joint was looped, though. Y'all see they tried to double up on the commercial? We ain't trying to double up just yet. All right, listen up real quick. I got to make this tweet because two of uh, players from my city will be here this week. And y'all will be excited to hear about this. Yeah.
Hold on two seconds, y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hold on, I got hold up. I gotta do something else. Gotta do something else. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. I had to make this tweet, y'all. I had to make that tweet. So midday roundup, y'all already had the midday roundup. Y'all already see what we're getting into today. Listen. Jumping on top of these things, I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I might run this back the opposite way. I got my my topics on here, but I'm gonna run it back. I'm I'm gonna run it back like this. Uh, this week we got some some high end recruits coming in state guys that I thought we were out of the picture for early on. Um, uh, well for the 2025 prospect, I thought we was out of the way. I thought I thought we kind of messed up our chances of getting them. Um, having them come on campus this week is going to be awesome. But from the same school, uh, you got uh, another prospect that I've been highlighting and talking about maybe maybe for like three, four months now that since we've been in the offseason. Well, I've been on top of this young man for a while. I've been I've been following them for a while um, to baseball and softball games. They be they've been losing late. Hey, Jarvis, <laughs> they said I need to start showing up to a lot of games. <laughs> but listen. We got two kids in state guys coming. Um, they'll be here tomorrow. You got uh Daylon Upshaw of, of Central Phoenix City, class of 2025 wide receiver. He'll be here tomorrow. Also with his teammate, Tristan Lyles. Y'all remember the name Tristan Lyles. I have been talking about this young man for a while, and I can't wait to see what happens after their visit. Uh, something that I've noticed that a lot of these kids that were looking at Bama or that Bama was looking at during the Saban's exit. Um, naturally, it's going to scare you when the GOAT retires. You're not sure what's supposed to follow up. You're not confident, fully confident in what's supposed to uh, develop, what it's supposed to develop into, right? So you look at where some of these young men are standing, they're kind of up in the air with any decision. So the moment Bama reaches back out and says, hey, come check us out now, that's when you're going to take advantage of those opportunities. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I mean, the the, the recruiting trail is, is burning up. They're blazing. Um, does Alabama have practice today? I do need to check the schedule. I believe they do, though. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Like, around this time is when I start getting real active uh, on, on socials. This is when I start getting real active. So the 12 o'clock, the noon hour, it's going to take some adjustment um, with, with how we're growing. Uh, but listen, I seen a question that I kind of want to acknowledge. Um, Smook, you gotta. That's not it. I think the office is going to be explosive. That's not it, Coach Smook. I just want to say you have proved yourself as a true insider in a short amount. Oh, this the one. This is something that I want to highlight real quick. Caleb, I appreciate the love. He said, Coach Smook, I just want to say you have proved yourself as a true insider in a short amount of time. Every time you say look out for this guy or that guy, he ends up committing. You had a scoop, Caleb. It's not just me. I, I want to give credit to this this whole team, um, Kyle, for putting me in position to, and, and pushing me to have his confidence. Uh, Coach Sean, he has some ties to and like he really the one jump started me and figuring out who I need to talk to. Not necessarily talking to him for me, but who I need to go and talk to. And it's all about re building relationships. Um, there are other people who are recruiting insiders or analysts that work for other platforms. Um, one thing, one one consistent thing that i've heard is that uh you know they're not focused on building relationships they're focused on the story me personally i miss on five or six recruits and knowing where they're going to commit if it's not bama right i miss out on that i want to focus on the guys who really are considering alabama and figure out what i can do to open their mind up to really see the benefits of becoming part of the, one of the greatest programs in the country if not the greatest historically as a recent history alabama has been a, the, the best program to be a part of and how do we continue to create that culture well the culture is changing for the better society is changing right so you got to create new ways of engaging and that's what the staff is doing and i'm just following the staff's lead indirectly following their lead 
And I'm just trying to be what I can as a, as a true Bama fan, as, a, as a, a person who's passionate about my work and what I do. I love it. And because of you all, you guys, every time you support, every time you share or like something or, or retweet, it helps out, y'all. It helps with getting into these recruits' minds and getting to, get into those conversations and establishing those relationships. So I appreciate y'all. It's not about me. It's, first of all, it's all glory to God. You know, first of all, it's all glory to God. But then Kyle and T and what how they structure this, having Jake and Ty guys that, you know, have some experience and are outside the footprint, right? Uh, then you got Coach Sean, who's in the footprint with me. Then Coach Jay, he just knows so many coaches, man. Um, you kind of learn the mentality of the people that we're dealing with and that are on the recruiting trail. So it's kind of, as a as a personality reader like myself, a person that reads people, I, I think it, it kind of just fell into place. God really knew what he was doing with that. Uncle Jay, what's good? No veg speed, what's good? Smooth. You think we may be surprised by any departures when the April windows open? I do. I, I, well, I don't. I won't be surprised. Maybe you are, but I won't be surprised. Um, and I won't put no names out there. This uh, people watch us, but there are a few. I think it's maybe two on the defensive side that I, that we might see go. And it is one. I think is about ninety percent. I'm about ninety percent sure one on the offensive side, and it's not in the quarterback room. I say that. Except Will Johnson, look at you being humble. I like it all. Hey, it. it I, this is just me, man. Uh, Will Johnson. Hey. Y'all remember everybody was on my neck because they got quiet, right? Watch what happens with Michigan after their spring game when the spring portal opens up. Watch what happens. <laughs> Coach Jay said we got something to do with uh with the commits. I, hey, I won't claim it, but uh, I will say this: me and me and Young Luke Metz, man, that's he's like a little brother to me. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm glad he finally committed. Uh, and you all saw Mike Mike Carroll come on. I check in with every recruit I make contact with. I check in with them at least once a week. I mean, and it's not it's not much, but it's not always. Hey, where you at with Bama? No, how you doing, young man? You you had any visits this past weekend? Like when Duke Johnson was in Texas, um, that was that was. I was curious to hear about his Texas visit because I know Texas they wine and dine you, and that's a that state. I love the state of Texas. Uncle Jay live in Texas. Texas is an awesome, a beautiful state. I mean, some of the best, the best sites and attractions and travel is in Texas. Like food is in Texas. So, uh, and speaking of food, y'all, I went to King's Kitchen today and I got another plate. So I will be sharing that with y'all after this uh, live stream. You know, I might go live and y'all get to see me do some edits and stuff. Uh, I slick want to show y'all how I do edits uh, for for our channel. So. Um, not the full scoop, but show y'all how we how much work we put into this. It's not like click and go. We really sit there and take time and do these edits. So uh appreciate y'all for supporting. But yeah, let's jump into it. That's all the big recruiting news I had today. Um, we also might be having another, we might have a, a 2026 four-star showing up this Thursday. I'm gonna confirm it by uh, you know, hopefully I'm able to confirm by the time we get off of this live. So Got a lot of big name recruits showing up. Tristan Lyles, Dalen Upshaw, excited to see them. I just tweeted at them boys. They they know I'm, you know, Phoenix City on uh, Adrian Lyles, which is Tristan's dad. Me and him talk often. We we grew up together, you know, running some of the same circles. So I plan on trying to make a push for them boys. I really I really plan on making a push for them boys on a personal note because I know how Central boys do when they get to the, get the Bama. I know how them Phoenix City boys. Earl Alexander, he was probably the one that didn't pan out the best coming out, but he came in a different age. You know, uh, Earl Alexander was a freakish athlete, just came in a different time. If Earl comes out the year I come out, him and Julio probably one and two receivers on bound, right? <laughs> so, yeah, put it on, put in that work. Facts, Tim. Hey, listen, Texas is definitely somewhere to go visit. They really do have a lot to do down there, and the food is definitely top tier. State ain't big for no reason. Hey. The, the saying, everything's bigger in Texas, it, it really is. I mean, they do everything bigger. Everything, high school football is different. I mean, I lived right next to Colleen High School, literally next to the stadium that they played in. And I would enjoy watching that. I think they was 3A ball in Texas. I enjoy watching it. Some solid stuff. Uh, Stephen Brown says, good job, Smooth. You're on your way. God bless. Hey, appreciate that, Stephen Brown. If this the comedian, Steve Brown, appreciate you for real, man. You know, I, I used to rock with the Bama Standard. I rock with some of y'all over there. Not all y'all. Just a few of y'all. 
if that's you, Steven. You know I rock with you. You big bro. You a fool though. You know you clown. If that's you, Steven. But if that's not Steven Brown, the comedian, shouts out to the Steven Brown that's been supporting the channel, tapping in and coming in, showing up. Keely is gone. Jermaine Mims, you're on to something. And it's not a loss if we do lose him. And we have a lot of receivers, so I expect one of them elite. Surprisingly, Jermaine, surprisingly, I don't think we'll see a, a, a receiver leave this year. I honestly don't. I honestly don't. With the flexibility and the amount of young guys to uh, veteran talent, I think we might see an early exit for the draft because of pr productivity from the likes of Kendrick Law, Kobe Prentice. We might see a strong year from E-Man, you know, and see him go. Uh, Cole Adams is going to be a good spot player for us this year. Um, and these guys that's going to be spot players for their career, you know, that's going to be around next year, but they understand that their role is not to be a primary target. And that's nothing wrong with that. I think what this, this staff is preaching is do your job all the time. You don't have to be a star. There isn't going to be a star. To me, we won't have a star receiver this year. We won't have a go-to receiver this year, in my personal opinion. I think there will be a, a, a wide spread of how the ball is dished out and how targets are, are, are pushed out there. You know, you're going to have a primary guy possibly in Jeremy, uh, not Jeremy, but Kendrick Law. And, and I honestly believe we will see a true freshman end up being a quote unquote starter in Caleb Odom. That's my per that's my. And, and so that, that kind of leads us into the first segment. Let's get into it. True freshman impact. Right. I want y'all to look at something while I try to pull this B roll footage up. Um. We do got some B-roll somewhere. Here we go. There we go. Now we got some B-roll. Hey, there we go. Little vibe. Y'all like that? Y'all like that vibe? That B-roll vibe? I kind of, I'm rocking with it. So, uh, something I want to tell y'all uh, with the true freshmen in this class. Let's start on the offensive side. Um... You said our taker's going to do that. Oh, I feel you on that. Smooth. Now you know I got to say it. <laughs> Dwight, all the time, bro. Uh, all the time. All the time. I promise you. I'm going to be trying. Like, And then now I'm in the gym, so it's going to get crazy. So let's talk about the true freshmen on, on the offensive side. You got the likes of Caleb Odom, right? That's on campus now. Not the guys that's coming in. Ryan Williams is not there yet. So um, Enrico Scott is not there. Uh, Kevin uh, Riley, the running back, he's not there. Uh, we don't have we don't have a lot of guys. Uh, let me pull this up. I got to pull this list back up. Sorry, y'all. I thought I had everything organized. That's on me. I'm, I'm trash. I'm dog water. Here we go. All right. So you look at this class, right? And I'm looking at the freshmen. Um, I'm looking at. On the offensive side, you got Caleb Odom. I think he's going to end up being the starter at X. That's not saying that Jalen Hill isn't going to be a primary guy. I just feel like Caleb Odom is going to be thrown out there to create mismatches early. One thing about Kalen DeBoer, Nick Sheridan, Jamarcus Shepard, they don't have a subtle mentality. They don't have a subtle mentality to, to, to gradually build in games. They want to come out and hit you with the best every play. They're not, they, I mean, schematically, yes. You're going to scheme to set certain things up, but like uh, Ty and, and Jake were just talking about, there's going to be so much pre-snap motion. There's going to be so many times where you see shifts and, and looks that look the same, but have four options stacked on top of them. You're going to see this because there's so much talent to be used. The likes of Caleb Odom, he will be used to create mismatches early. If you look at Rome Adonzi from last year from, um, from Washington, Caleb Odom is going to be using that same aspect. He and uh, he and uh, Jalen Hill at the X. And then a young guy like Rico Scott. And then also uh, another name that I've been seeing at the X position doesn't fit the mold of that, that style of receiver. But um, I've been seeing Jaron Hamilton go and line up in that line with Odom and, and Hill. Hill has been first, but you see Odom get thrown out there a lot in a lot of the pass scales. I mean... And it's maybe because Hale is just grasping it so much, he doesn't need as many reps. But I think this, this receiving core is going to be nice. You're talking about the freshman um, on the offensive side. I'm looking at Bubba Hampton getting nice reps right now. Second team, third team reps. 
he's been repping greatly uh been been being used in a lot of the option work right a lot of the screen work so as you know Bubba Hampton to me we've been calling him kind of like the Jalen Waddle of this 24 class right and so uh you look at how they want to use him you're gonna you're gonna see him used a lot early on not necessarily not necessarily you know primary but when he's on the field he will be targeted uh jumping into the chat real quick I see y'all got a few questions were you seeing Emmanuel Henderson Emmanuel Henderson is a, is a solid a solid rotational player I don't think he's going to be any breakout I think he's going to be a mismatch problem because of the because of the role he's going to play so as a, and that's what these that's what college football and players who are playing on good teams need to buy into you don't need to come to, to Bama to be the guy be that dude go to Bama and do your job like be be your do your job a hundred percent all the time do not sit back and try to think you're just going to be the feature like ryan williams if ryan williams comes in which i believe he's already came in with the attitude already has the mindset i'm just coming in to work hard and compete that's going to be crazy to deal with with guys that just want to compete and I, I alluded to it yesterday i was in a twitter space and i was talking about how when you talk to this receiver group especially the receiver group you hear a lot of even caleb odom uh, we, we trying to have 4,000 total receiving yards this year. We trying we trying to break the record. We trying to have 4,500, 5,100 uh, total receiving yards amongst the wide receivers. We want three wide receivers with 50 plus catches. We want to have a total of you know 500 plus receptions. We want to have less than less than five drops this year. Like when you hear those type of messages being thrown out in the locker room amongst the brotherhood, amongst the players, especially when you're talking about guys that are competing for playing time. That's the type of mantra and the mentality you want. It's infectious and it, it rubs off onto the top things uh, flow on the field. It creates a, a different level of continuity. So I appreciate when you have guys that are leading, like Kendrick Law, guys like Caleb Odom, who's open and receptive to being learned, uh, to, to being taught. And, and I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm excited about it. Jermaine Mims, 100%. That's why I said you won't have one guy. One week, Kendrick Law might be the primary. Next week, Jeremy Bernard might be the primary. The next week, it might be whoever's whoever's rotating at the slot. And an alignment I did see, I saw Kendrick Law at the Z. Y'all know I, I always like to go and correct myself before y'all do. I saw Kendrick Law getting a lot of reps at Z. And then at slot, I saw Kobe Prentice, which to me, if you think about it, I and I said this before, I said the Z is the guy that you put on the boundary, right? You put him to the field as a number one receiver on on the far side and you want to motion him because it causes defenses to shift without using leverage having without using shifts to change your leverage on your formations so if i bring my z who's split out wide to the right um in the boundary not in the boundary but to the field if i bring him in motion now the boundary corner either has to follow him it's the, it's an easier pre-snap read for the quarterback either the boundary corner has to follow him and show his man look pre-snap or he comes in and he bumps the guy that was covering the slot over. And so I love seeing Kobe Prentice one-on-one -on -one in the boundary. So pre-snap motion, bringing your Z, Kendrick Law, or Jeremy Bernard across the formation, getting them in motion on the running start. You're always making the defense respect the jet sweep look. You're always making the defense respect the one-on-one -on -one with Kobe Prentice, who's your who's a route technician. You're making the defense respect any handoff looks or play action look out the, the backfield, right, with that jet motion. And you also got one-on-one -on -one with your ex receiver and Caleb Odom or Jalen Hill. And then you also got your tight end group that's probably the most athletic that we've seen since the group of Irv Smith, OJ Howard, um, and uh what was the uh the young man's name? Not Dial. There was another kid. Dang, I forget his name. But this is this is an, an athletic tight end room. We don't give them enough uh enough credit. So um excited about those guys. Bubba Hampton, uh Caleb Odom, uh, another name, another name on the offensive side. Kevin Riley, excited about him when he gets on campus. Does it, don't, don't expect him to get a lot of crazy carries, but expect him to, when he does touch the field, to give us something like that uh, Justice Haynes field when he's on the field. Him and Daniel Hill are going to be a crazy one-two punch when it's their time. And then also on the offensive side, can't forget one of the guys I'm super excited about, very underrated, very uh, – overlooked early in his career here jay lindsey the tight end 6'5 235 i mean he's probably going to get a little bit bigger but when it's all said and done i see him being the next robbie Oots for us a little bit more athletic though is a little bit you know what i'm not even gonna lie 
they about the same they are one and the same you look at their size similar size similar build i think he's a little bit taller than robbie right i think uh, robbie is six two six three so and uh jay Lindsay is six five so looking at those guys and their builds i think jay Lindsay is another developmental piece that understands his role and how he's going to contribute to this team irv smith yeah miller four star there you go caleb there you go miller four star i feel like this tight end group that was an athletic group four star battled a lot of injuries but they were they were an athletic group news on the two guys from montgomery you talking about on the defensive side james smith and quay russo is that who you're talking about it's too bad he didn't start a down who wait who we talking about oh no veg hey we're gonna jump to the defensive side in a second we're gonna jump to the defensive side in a second all right let's go to this let's go to our um our graphic here uh we, we we're talking about um freshmen on the roster right we're talking about freshmen on the roster uh when i look at freshmen on the roster uh on the defensive side let's go to the defensive side and uh let's talk about those guys because i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna just go off top of the head before i even look um red morgan is starting right now red right there's morgan from central phoenix city shouts out to three three four my central phoenix city red devils and and then also man i want to give love to, to but this is not on topic I want to get love to Russell County High School, Smith Station High School, that whole area, even though, you know, I didn't too much care for uh, Smith Station. Their staffs, they're doing a lot of different things that we weren't privy to as uh, when I was in school. So I'm, I'm proud of what they're doing. The recruiting is picking up for all of those different programs, even Glenwood High School, uh, the private school down there. The, the recruiting, that area is just full of talent. Uh, you got Columbus, Georgia, right across the water with some highly touted kids and some powerhouse programs uh so um it's it's good to see all of that it's good to see all of that and see these kids getting the exposure they deserve but um these guys can win one game at a time they win it all how are the centers doing in that work ricky smith i got you i'm gonna start that comment because i was definitely going to touch on that as we get into our other topics oh thanks Bama fan why did i think he was he was battling uh he wasn't that's the thing keon keely it's a mental thing but all uh defensive guys uh freshmen that i i, I see impacting early Jalen and bakway i feel like if any freshman is going to start this year and y'all remember i wasn't confident in it i didn't think that i i always said if we needed it we would be fine right if we had to start freshman we would be okay now i'm on the stage of if Jalen and bakway starts it's because he's that dude right there is morgan is that dude he's actually starting over uh smitty right now based off of what we the some of the the news that we've been getting um and kyle can confirm this right there is morgan is probably the the biggest surprise of the early spring practices he's always he, he's repping with first group is he sab and malachi moore is your your three safeties on the field he's at husky you got uh sab at free and you got malachi at rover right and then at your boundary corners the last week the last practice i saw you had Demonte Jackson and you had Jalen Mbakwe out there with first group. So if I'm looking at that that lineup, you got two true freshmen starting with the first group in the first at the first week of uh, spring practice after the first full week of spring practice. And I think they had their first scrimmage also Saturday. So um, that's that's huge. And Red Morgan, the only thing I've said, and y'all have been here, the only thing I've said about Red Morgan was, hey, if we can get some weight on him, get get 10, 15 pounds on it before the season we might see him make an impact another name on the freshman side on the defensive side as far as freshmen and the secondary that we need to pay attention to is Peyton Woodyard I've been on Peyton Woodyard for since we signed him he was one of the ones the gems that I said if we could steal him from the west coast and keep him from going anywhere else we were going to really really appreciate that Peyton Woodyard is one of those kids the moment he sees the field you're going to understand why he was recruited by Bama I mean, and he's gotten his weight up. He went from like 185. He's about 205, almost, you know, pushing 210. I mean, all these DBs are getting big, right? But Peyton Woodger is probably more rangy than Keon Sapp. I think right now with Sapp making plays, coming in, being that consistent, uh, showing showing up and actually being what we, we thought he would be, I think that's a good thing for Peyton because now you don't have to rush him out there, right? Antoine, what's good, Cuzzo? What's good, brother? How you feeling? Oh, hey, listen, I'm not forgetting anybody. You got to let me you gotta let me run it, TJ. You got to let me run it. We're talking about Peyton right now. 
Uh, but Peyton is the next man up when it comes to that free safety position. Um, I know in dime look, I'm not sure if uh, so in dime look, I'm, I'm 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 expecting when we go too high safety, I'm expecting Malachi Moore to slide up top with Sab and then bring Smitty in the box with uh Rodarius Morgan, you know, and you put in you you're gonna take a linebacker off the field, right? So you you probably gonna have Justin Jefferson or Jahad Campbell at that mic position, right? And then you're going to have uh, your four down guys. You, you're going to have probably some some big edges out there that can get out in space and cover. Um, Keanu Colt, he's not a freshman, but yeah. Uh, so you look at how that that lineup sets up. It puts a it, it puts another freshman on the field, possibly with Peyton Woodyard, maybe being a dime safety, right? So that's that's huge. Now Xavier Brown, I saw Xavier Brown and Zay Mincy. Both of these guys, to me, they're one and the same. Looking at them on field. You look at their film they they kind of they have their differences right but on the field at practice they're one and the same so if you have a, a if you have an injury with Damani jackson or or jaylen mbakwe i feel very confident with putting zay mincy and Xavier brown out there and you could play both of them on either side boundary or to the field um and they're going to be effective there is a young man and i was looking at the roster earlier yesterday and i want y'all i remember y'all were talking trash about it when I brought it up, right, it was a walk-on kid. Uh, and I'm going to pull his name up right now. I'm going to pull his name up right now. I'm going to pull his name up. And he's 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 not, uh, he's not a big name, right? He's not a big name. Screenshot alert coming at y'all. Screenshot alert. Pop off for me one time, chat. Screenshot alert. And I want y'all to check this young man, this young man's uh graphic out because I want y'all to see where he came from. And tell me who else came from this this organization. I mean this school. Why won't let me do this? all right so check this out this young man here elijah may y'all remember when i was talking about number 38 during practice when we was looking at the film as a matter of fact i think the clip about to come up now yeah jermaine you remember i said that you remember i said that jermaine and everybody was tripping everybody said i was tripping everybody thought i was over oh you just hyping people up you talking about a, a walk on listen he is repping with the second group. He is in front of Xavier Brown and Zay Mincy. And I want y'all to check him out because one, 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 he is, he is, the, he is, he is a dude. But look where he came from. He's a senior and look where he came from. What other talent do we have on our roster right now that's from Pinson Valley? Did, didn't we just have a, a a first round draft pick, uh, a projected first round draft pick, leave uh, Alabama. He's going to the draft, and he played Pinson Valley. Or am I am I mistaken? Am I mistaken? Am I mistaken? I'm just I'm just asking y'all because I know we like to, we like to put a lot of a lot of uh, weight on like star ratings and all of that stuff, but. Uh, this this 38 this elijah may kid he can play he can play he really can play and when i say he's out there making plays go look at some of the clips that's been been put out in practice he's not out there guarding cole adams and uh bubba hampton and all them he he made a play he made a play on kobe prentice him and kobe prentice are going at it and i don't know if they're going ones on ones but he's out there he was out there with um uh, with peyton woodard he was out there with Red Morgan. He was out there. Damani Jackson was in that group, right? And he was at the boundary. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys. And, and I'm telling you, this guy, he might. I remember Levi Wallace started making buzz in spring. And then fall camp came around and it was up. This is the senior playing corner. Anytime you have a senior out there. Where you don't have to rush a guy like Jalen Bakwe out there, but you you give him opportunities to where he could spot play and develop, continue to develop. 
I'm telling y'all, man. Yeah, hey, listen to me when I tell you. I, I don't just watch practice and be like fanned out like everybody thinks. So no, I really pay attention. I really pay attention. And I watch how coaches are using guys, how coaches have dudes lining up when they when it's time to run drills. And 38, Elijah May. Mark my words, if if he doesn't get picked up in the portal because he, you know, he's looking to get on the field. And, and, and he's a Bama guy. He's a Bama guy. But if he doesn't enter the portal and get picked up, we will see him used this year. We'll see him used this year. Walk on to the NFL. Y'all better listen to me. All right, let me get to some of y'all comments. I've seen some good comments. Uh, oh, yeah. Did, did, did y'all, any, any other uh, freshmen, before we get into comments, any other freshmen that y'all want to hear about on the defense? Uh, Kaden Jones, um, Justin... Okoronko, both of those dudes, man. I'm going to tell you, I didn't know Justin was that huge. I think Justin's probably like 225, 230 right now. They have him at 215, but I guarantee you he's about 225, 230. And same thing with Caden Jones. Both of those guys are fast and they are bigger than what uh, bigger than what the roster says. I, I, I've been around football and athletics long enough to, um, to kind of like gauge things of that nature, right? And those those dudes at least 225, 230 minimum. 225, 230 minimum. Uh, Sterling Dixon out there making an impact. Uh, I think the only reason Sterling Dixon isn't starting is because you got guys like uh Jeremiah, not Jeremiah Beeman, um Alexander got moved to inside linebacker and then thriving. Uh so Sterling Dixon might might not be in that rotation early on, but I think he's a future kid. I think Sterling is a future kid. Him and a lot of these linebackers, we have a lot of talent in the linebacker room. I would be surprised to keep a hold of uh, this full room after this season. Not not spring. I don't see many leaving after spring, but I'll be surprised if this room stays together because it would be really buying into the process. It's so much talent. And, and depending on how they want to rotate depth on that defensive side, you might not see a lot of guys getting a lot of, a lot of burn that second year. And that, that plays a big role in guys staying committed. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Be very interesting. Let me look at some more star comments. Um, and we also got William Sanders on the O-line offensive side. I forgot about him. I don't know how. Uh, I think that kid's going to be a, another project. Um, just waiting to go crazy. And, and Drake Kirkpatrick. Can't forget him. Finally moved to safety. I seen him at safety solely. And... Um, he was playing uh, behind Malachi at that rover position. And I don't know, y'all. Maybe maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I think I said something and it's, it's coming to me. But I remember when breaking down Drake Kirkpatrick, I said he would be perfect to play that star role at Alabama. Malachi Moore is playing basically the star, which is now called the, the, the rover. Drake Kirkpatrick is playing behind him. I mean, add it up. Add it up. I cash, I'll cash out at the end of the night. You get what I'm saying? We do, Ricky. We do. We do. We got so much talent in the linebacking core, and we're going to be crazy facts. And the thing is, a lot of a lot of our linebackers can really get in space. You feel like Nick slept on the kids on the roster last year? I I said the same. Bama fan 95. I will go down. I will carry that cross with you because I feel like Nick Saban was so – messed up about the changes in college football not necessarily to where it took him off his game there was a lot of things that were overlooked that should have been looked at by a support staff and because of how unstable and 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 how shaky things were last year he tried to maintain control over so much as the head coach that it drained him and he said that in his interview and there's nothing wrong with admitting that the fact that he had the the, the sense enough to move remove himself in a in a positive way right and, and and go out on his terms, that's what set this whole transition up to be such a success as early as it is right now. Rakeem Hampton says, Peyton Woodard, I heard, wasn't repping with the ones. I heard the backfield lineup is Sab, Demonte Jackson, Xavier Brown, Red Morgan. Uh, Xavier Brown wasn't starting. Um, Jalen Mbakwe was starting at the opposite. And I, I didn't say uh, Woodrow was weapon with the ones. I know in that dime look, he was out there at the other safety. So, and so that's another thing. When people talk about uh, depth chart and starters, 
Like you gotta understand, if we come out against a team that's gonna be four four wide heavy, you won't see the base nickel set out there. You probably see like a, a three two five look. Or, or, I mean, uh, yeah, three two five formation where you got two linebackers setting up. We rushing three down linemen, right? Uh, and I mean, like you bring your big ends out. That you you got uh, Tim Keenan probably manning the, the tackle position, and you got a nice rotation of, of Otis Smith Keenan. And then you got your big edges like uh, LT Overton. Hopefully, Keon Keely can understand that's what he should be, a big edge instead of, you know, a, 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 a outside linebacker. Keon Keely is better to me putting his hand in the ground, coming off the edge, going against tackles and guards, right? Uh, who else, man? You got Curtis Perry, James Smith. James Smith coming off the edge. Uh, shoot. Ja Latham, big edge. Like it's so much talent in that in on that defensive line. I can't wait. Um, and, and it kind of leads us into this next segment, veterans on call. You're talking about the veteran group that's out here, man. So much to be excited about. Jaheim Otis, Tim Keenan, Tim Smith, Curtis Perry is a veteran now. Uh Damon Payne is a veteran now. You look at this, the uh the uh the young guys behind them, you talking about uh Edric Hill. Um what was the young man's name? He's actually going first group right now with um with Tim Keenan. Him and Tim Keenan are lining up next to each other going first group. Where's my notepad? That had all my little my little notes in it. Here we go. Got my notepad out from practice. So 33, whoever 33 is, find out who 33. I forgot. Y'all know I'll be forgetting. I ain't got no good memory. Hunter Osborne. Not Edric Hill, Hunter Osborne. Hunter Osborne has been making some buzz. Jeremiah Beeman, Curtis Perry, uh, Tim Keenan. I mean, guys, y'all, Damon Payne. Uh, and and now now look, I don't even you don't even have to put them in a, in a depth chart or on a roster, right? As far as depth, you kind of just as a coach, as as Freddie Roach. If I'm standing on the sideline, right, and I got my headset on, right. And it's time to rotate. I'm not even looking at who I have behind me that's, you know, standing beside me ready to get on the field. All I'm doing is putting my hands out and tapping two heads. Boom. Go. You know what I'm saying? This is how it's going to look. This is how it's going to look. They're going to be like, Coach, we need we need a uh, – we're about to rotate. We're about to get our D-line out here. Uh, uh, St. is Keenan and, and and Hunter Osborne running off the field. And next you got uh, – we're going three-man front. We're going our front, right? And we need three D-linemen. Hey, Jaheim, go big edge, go big edge. Let's go tap and just tap two more. It don't matter really where you put them. Tackle in, you go big three front. It's, it's, it's. And then the thing is, we're not playing gap scheme off of that no more. We're attacking off of that. We're stunning, rolling the sting and rolling the mic, rolling, rolling, rolling the husky and rover into into run support, run attack blitz. Man, it's gonna be crazy, y'all. David Sanders Jr. David Sanders Jr. is in the chat. What's good? Hey, David. Right now, David, if you want to come on right now, I'll send you a link. Jump in my inbox, David. I got you. David Sanders Jr. is in the chat, y'all. David, I just hit you up on Twitter. Roll Tide, David. Roll Tide. Welcome, man. Appreciate you for pulling up. Listen. <laughs> Listen uh it's exciting to see you i watched your film what a few weeks ago how long how long how long ago i watched this film y'all how long how long coach move been on david sanders how long coach move been on david sanders y'all tell david sanders how much we we've been talking about him over here on bama football on youtube that's crazy that we got recruits that's pulling up daily we had mike carroll in here last week bryce petty pulled up and left a comment I'm telling y'all, man, this 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 offensive line of, of 26, this 26 class of offensive linemen is 25. The, the ones that we're really going after, dogs. Haywood and Sanders coming, if they come together, oh, my Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, man. So if, if David, David, if you still in here, man, I just uh, hit you on the inbox, man. I just inboxed you. We would love to have you on for an impromptu. Tell us how your visit was. 
uh what's your thoughts about this staff all of that good stuff as a matter of fact as a matter of fact if it ain't today we'll have our segment tonight i don't have as a matter of fact do i have somebody lined up i gotta double check i need a dog on personal assistant i need a personal assistant i need a personal assistant anybody want to want to volunteer to help your boy out help me keep my schedule tight because it's, it's it's growing and it's all because of y'all you know I, i'm not gonna take credit for it no it's all because of y'all my team and, and what y'all do for us is it, is that's what's helping us grow that's what's helping us grow y'all know who that is right there standing next to the guy in the red y'all know who that is a dog auntie janet look auntie janet auntie janet be busy handling the bees man she be in, <laughs> she be too busy but listen back to what we was talking about veterans got veterans we talked about the guys on the d-line look at the uh at the linebacker position we just talked about you know we we got deontay lawson we got uh jihad campbell who's a veteran now you got uh, a guy that's been on campus for a few years now and finally is getting an opportunity in uh jeremiah alexander and then you got justin jefferson another inside linebacker guy that's like finally in a scheme that fits his skill set the, the amount of speed that we have at the inside linebacker room and the range lateral range coverage range we have is probably second to none i don't know if y'all want to hear this and, and, and be honest about it but georgia had probably the best inside linebacker room from 2017 to about 2021 20, 22 right I, I i will honestly say that and give them credit for that they their linebacker not just inside their whole linebacker core was probably the best from 2017 talent depth wise schematically how they played their aggressive nature their tenacity how they dominated they i mean they were aggressive group we have that type of talent in the locker room we've had that type of talent in the locker room it's been some some type of disconnect from the coaching standpoint or the schematic standpoint there's been a disconnect right right who who talk about it jt i wasn't gonna say that because you know i don't usually get into that part i usually just try to stay on the, the 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 team side the recruiting and the team development side so we'll talk about it though that'll be something i'm gonna pass to coach sean i'm gonna pass that to coach sean definitely going to yeah you get what i'm saying we deep man and then you but look at the inside linebacker room and then that's just the veteran guys you got guys like Caden jones justin uh uh no man let me hold up let me pull this boy name up this young man's name up i'm gonna say this thing right today boy let me see yeah yeah okay justin Oko Roncro. Oko Oko Roncro. Oko Roncro. Justin O, Caden Jones, Sterling Dixon. You got QB Reese that's going to be coming on campus in the fall. Um, Noah Carter's going to be there in the fall. I mean, and we don't know if Carter's going to play Edge or, or, or Sting or, or Mike. We don't know. We don't know if he's going to be a, a, a wolf or, or a bandit. We don't know because we have that type of athleticism in this class. Um who else who else man that's the inside linebacker room y'all want to y'all want to go down the list of this outside linebacker these edge rushes that we have at Bama just ready to get after the quarterback let's start Yanzi Pierre he's a red shirt freshman you got freshman Jay Sean Ross he he's probably not going to see a lot of the field but he's definitely going to be uh, be used when it's time for him to get on the field right uh edge rushers Quay Russo another another big edge right uh stand him up or or let him put his hand in the dirt uh, uh shoe Quindarius robinson uh kiana coat kiana coat is turning heads y'all kiana coat is turning heads he is making i mean not flashes every play he is doing something to be like whoa who is that for real q rob coat pierre russo Who else? Who else? Who else? It's it's another edge I'm missing. It's another edge that I'm missing. Those four right there, that's a deep rotation. Talented. 
I'm trying to think. I feel like I'm missing somebody. And I'm going to feel bad because I know he's a dog. And I know he's a dog. Dang, I feel bad. I'm trash, y'all. I'm dog water. I'm dog water. You know what? I might be on point. I think I knocked him out. It's just that you look at the roster and you 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 look at just the linebacker room. It's so many of them. Oh, I'm, I'm not dog water. Look at God. Won't he do it? Check me out. I ain't dog water. Keon Keeley, he's on, he's on, he's a DN. He's a DN now. He's not an edge rusher. He's on a D line. He's like more of your big edge. He's not a he's not a big end. He's a book end. You know what I'm saying? He's he's gonna be on the the, the what well, I guess you could call him it. But Wolf and Bandit is our edge rushers. Like they're their primary edge rushers, edge containment guys. You'll have big sets where you have uh those guys will be switched out personnel wise. Keely will come in. That's be his opportunity. Um, James Smith, same thing with him. Quay Russo, uh is going to be like a, a standard. I think Quay Russo is going to be able to play either or. So, yeah, he does. But this thing, I mean, you get to the next level, man. You can't overpower everybody. You can't overpower everybody at this at the college level. Shout out to the 285 in the chat. I am Coach Smook of Bama Football on YouTube. Our resident team reporter, recruiting insider. Director of player personnel, I mean junior producer, everything. You know, I've been privileged to have a skill set that allows this team to continue to operate um effectively when Kyle and T have big things to do. Like they really, they really this network is growing. This channel is growing, and it's all because of you all. Thank you all. Make sure y'all run the likes up for us. Um, and that we getting all of that activity, the shares, all of that. Um, it looks like we send that 217 likes. Uh, let's see if we get that up. Let's see if we get the 250 before the end of the stream. We got 280 watching, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see if we can get the 250 before the end of the stream. Um, shout out Matt Farms. What's up, fam? Yeah, Smook Ross is another wolf. Facts, facts, hot light. Facts. Yeah, Walsh is a wolf. Um, Duke Johnson of the 25 class is a wolf. Uh, Miles Johnson might end up being a wolf, uh, based off what I'm seeing and hearing. Uh, who else, man? It's a couple linebackers. Uh, I like I like uh, Abdul Sanders. I like him at the edge. He playing Mike and Edge right now at the uh, at the high school level. I think I think he's going to be. A, I see why they're going out and getting Wolves and, and Bandits as linebackers. All these athletic linebackers. Um, and then I mean it's just it's just so much talent in that room right now. Jordan Renard Whopper. Thank you for reminding me. That young man is really out there. And the thing is, it's so much talent, guys. And I need y'all to understand this. I'm not purposely overlooking anybody. Jordan Renard is one of the guys that's just in the group. You don't really look over these kids. You don't look over them. You, you kind of just, you try to factor in. You try, you were so worried about how are they going to stay? Like, how do we keep them? That's what I'm more worried about because it's so much talent. But they seem to love and breathe this this uh this competitive nature that's been being passed around right will noah quarter will noah carter be a wolf I, is is yet to be seen man because he's so rangy he could be a, he could be wolf he could be uh husky he could be rover for uh he could not rover he could be husky for our big sets when you need four linebackers on the field that can get out in space and cover still you don't have to solely use him for run support um I mean, so many options, so many options with this group. So many options. Uh, Keely is not necessarily getting buried. Uh, I think they're giving him many opportunities because he is the talent that you want to see develop. Um, I think it's more so of mental grasping the concepts and the techniques that they want him to show consistently. Like I said, once you get to this, the college level, especially at Alabama, you're not going to be running through everybody, running over everybody. You got to use technique. You got to build the arsenal. And I think that's what he's struggling with right now. But I think he has the, the ability to get over that hump. If he could be patient and continue to work hard, I think he has the ability to get over that hump. I really do. It's a it's, it, And a lot of players go through that mental block. Um, Jaleel Hurley is another guy that I'm, I'm kind of worried about. You know, I, I would love to see him, you know, based off of what I'm hearing, the, the evaluations that Coach Linguist gives. He's he's very strict on his big his older guys. The, the standard doesn't change, but you've been here, you've been in, in college for a while. You expect it to, to be able to execute at a certain level. And I think that's that's a good thing to have when you have a coach that's holding everybody accountable, 
but understanding there's a onesies and twosies if i can get them to lock in right now and they get them to click then we can move on to developing the other guys so yeah i hope he pulls it together too man i really do i really do all right so we talked about some of the veterans of course Jalen miro kendrick law uh malachi moore those those names are names that you're going to hear tyler booker uh Jaden roberts is becoming more vocal another name that you all probably won't uh acknowledge or we probably won't acknowledge as much right now because of the transfer that came in uh james brockermeyer james brockermeyer is making a strong push to be an uh, intricate part of what this offense will be he may not start but i guarantee you there will be sets for brockermeyer whether it's uh two minute drill looks or whatever he has this he has the smarts he has the wits uh he came in highly touted you know high ratings for, with 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 major recruiting databases uh and you've seen flash is just like he was schematically not a fit for the last two offensive line coaches or the offenses so uh he fits the mode of the type of center you want in this style of offense not too heavy not too small aggressive coming out of his uh his stance very uh what they call um he's one of those uh effort guys he's going to give effort uh so i'm excited to see that um let's get into it y'all 25 class uptrend this class of 25 is going crazy right now let's jump back to it i i, I mean i'm looking at the commits right now let's look let's talk about the commits let's talk about the commits you got uh daryl duke johnson who's probably he's our highest rated commit right now four star out of dodge county in eastman georgia uh six one two two ten i don't know why they got him at 200 he definitely 215 210 uh Derek smith wide receiver four star out of selma alabama six one one eighty five another big body receiver jeremy bernard like a little bit faster than bernard if you ask me anthony rogers y'all know how excited i am about him coming out of uh montgomery did he go to img did, did, did uh anthony did he transfer to img somebody let me know because i may be off on that one antonio coleman mr i ain't standing auburn uh let me come on back to, to to bama and he's working on some guys that to add to this 25 class especially on that defensive front miles johnson out of tr miller i loved tr miller they traditionally have always been a, a get it out the mud type school you're gonna watch them play you watch their their fans support them that is a school where you you're gonna find some gems and we was able to snag a four star definitely uh uh one that's kind of overlooked and, and miles johnson and the thing is my johnson played tight end running back and linebacker he's getting recruited to us as a linebacker i think he fits either the mic or the sting position perfectly but you could also put him on the edge zamir smith another athlete i believe we will play him in the uh i think we're recruiting him as a db but he is wide receiver you get what i'm saying he can play wide receiver i would not be surprised if he comes and says that he wants to play uh wide receiver even though the wide receiver room is 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 uh you know heavily populated within this upcoming class as far as targets and what's currently on roster i think he can get on the field um and, and be an impact abdul sanders out of modern day another modern day kid we was able to lock him in i believe we're working on two more modern day kids that are going to be committing here soon luke mertz luke i mean Mets. luke Mets. they have him listed as a three-star but i i found two sites rivals and oh lord what was the other one people were coming at luke for being a three-star you turn on the film you go and look at when caleb downs was a, a a junior right in in high school and you talk about and you hear him talk about his his little his little brother you talking about luke metz there has been buzz around the, the the program that luke metz might be the best uh defender to come out of meek uh meek mill creek high school in the past five ten years and that's what Caleb Downs just coming out. Luke Metz was definitely a steal for us. And to have his commitment and to know how excited he is to get his dream offer, we, we, we're poised right now. And then let's go look at some of the targets. Let's look at some of the targets for this class. And I'm I'm, I'm only going to do, uh, I'm going to only talk about the the, the offers that I think are, are realistic for us to either flip or get a, um, and, and get a commitment or for us to go ahead and pick up. One that I want to start off with off top juju julian juju lewis i really in my heart and my soul feel like that this might be the craziest month of recruiting the, well not this month april april will be the craziest month of recruiting 
I want y'all to watch out for something that's going to happen on the recruiting landscape. And I want you to listen. Hey, Byron, he going to go to Auburn. He got family in Auburn. He going to... He gonna go to Auburn and visit. He got boys in Auburn, and he, they gonna hang out. Ryan Williams still go by there sometimes. He be uh, he be at Bama every weekend though. So, but listen, with Juju Lewis, I am thinking maybe, and, and this is not nothing that somebody told me. This is just me paying attention to the landscape of recruiting. I honestly believe that USC with the new pickups, they just got the guys from just uh, from Georgia. They they just signed some other guys. I think USC. Mm -hmm. all right so i think usc florida state and georgia will back off i think they will back off right i think they will back off because his his feels for 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 alabama with coach g talking to him coach g has been talking to him since tool was on campus right now he has kaylin DeBoer, nick sheridan as quarterback coaches, Juju Lewis is looking at his receiving core. He's looking at the offensive line and he's looking at that running back room. And he's like, man, this could be the easiest two to three years of my life as a quarterback in college football that anybody could ever ask for. It could be the easiest. And Ju Juju has. I ain't going to say that. If I had to compare Juju to. Uh. A previous Bama quarterback that should have had a crazy good career. Y'all remember? Uh, Y'all remember Star Jackson? Y'all remember Star Jackson? If Star Jackson would have been able to get the mental part right, he would have been one of the like one of the first explosive quarterbacks uh, since like the likes of you know. Uh, kitchens and all those guys i feel like juju can be that type of quarterback because star had a freaking arm he had speed uh yeah somebody <laughs> philip sims too phil sims too philip sims we we definitely we definitely missed out on those star bus yep phil they both were bust to me and that's nothing against them but when you look at what they were doing coming into college they just couldn't pick up the college game because they were in high schools where they get got to just freelance and do whatever, right? The college game wasn't made for that skill set back then. You get what I'm saying? That's the only reason. And so, yeah, that's that's why they were bust. It wasn't because they were trash. They were literally just bust because they didn't come. Blake Sims, he got he got lucky. He got ended up being able to, to be able to under, uh, be under Lane Kiffin. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just. That's just how it ended up being, y'all. That's how it ended up being. So I think Juju Lewis is one of those guys to look out for early. Um, let me go back. Um, like I said, Jordan Davidson, out of modern day. I feel like we got a good chance to lock him up here soon. Uh, I know Texas is pushing for him, but I feel like we're going to have a good chance to lock him up. Uh, Derek Smith, we got him. Uh, let me let me put, let me me look at some of these uh, receivers. Uh, so this five star, uh, not him. Where is it? Oh, he a four star. So I was told, I was asked by, uh, uh, another writer about, uh, Dalen McCutcheon, McCutcheon, right? And I'm gonna tell y'all like this, um, it becomes a point sometimes in recruiting where you kind of just look at the writing on the wall and you say, do I really want to go through that to get there or do I just want to take this? This is a situation with him. He doesn't want to go through all the, 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 the competition in that room. Not saying he's scared of it, but when you got the opportunity to go and play early, that's nothing wrong with going somewhere and playing early. Nothing wrong with that. Um, Travis Smith Jr. Yeah, I know I've been hype on him. He's been very... Uh, you can't really gauge where, where he's at. I think us and Georgia are his one and two, right? Or, you know, Georgia and us, one and two. Um, James Coley and Kirby Smart hitting this young man up every day is definitely making an impact. I mean, what are you supposed to do, right? So, Travis Smith. Uh, Nashawn Montgomery, Marcus Harris. I'm more so feeling Nashawn, right? 100% Bama. 
I, I, I'm a crystal ball and they shine in Montgomery. Uh, Quanell Farrakhan, I think we got to do a little bit more work, but he's starting to feel us, right? Uh, I'm actually feeling like that's more like 75, 80% lean for us. And then um, Marcus Harris, another modern day kid. Like I said, this class, this 25 class of, of wide receivers is going to be deep, y'all. It's going to be deep. And I think Kane Womack and uh, not Kane Womack, but Kalen DeBoer and his staff, they're, they're preaching the simple fact that we're going to use a lot of guys. Who else? Who else? O-line. This is what I was excited about. Class of 25 O-line. It's two guys in this in this class right now uh, that I really think we're going to go after heavy. And that's David Sanders Jr. Y'all see him come in earlier. But also Ty Haywood. Ty Haywood. Both of these guys are tackles. Um, and they I think they're going to be Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh who who asked about uh who I told y'all Jordan, you probably wasn't in here, man. Don't don't ask me about Jamie French. Though there's some and, and I, I'm not I'm not dogging the young man as a coach. I'm speaking as a coach, not a fan right now. There are some things that character wise and personality wise that Jamie French is leading on and portraying that I don't I don't think will fit well with this locker room in the current state and mindset that it's in. And that's nothing against Jamie French. Be you, be, be unapologetically you. But when you're talking about fits for my squad that I want, you know, in the locker room, Jamie French isn't one of them. He isn't one of them. EJ to eight. EJ and see, EJ come from the same area I come from. So like you you see some things like what Jamie French does with his socials and how he talks about his business and schools, you know, it, it, it's kind of, it's not disturbing, it's just it's different. And I don't I don't I don't think that's something that this staff is looking for. So Yes, it'll be great to have a talent like that. Very talented. One of the top, I, I say top 10 wide receivers. Because you look at some of the film from other coaches, I mean, other players. You, you look at the film, I look at and Travis Smith, uh, Zamir Smith, um, uh, Quanell, uh, Derek Smith. Like, all these Smiths in this class, shoot, we good. We good. That's fine, Gil. That's fine. Let them look wherever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jordan. And, and, and I hope you didn't take offense to me, you know, giving you the attention. It wasn't to be negative or anything. I just I don't too much care for that type of player. You get what I'm saying? Caleb Odom will get Juju Lewis for us, though. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. all uh, This Micah DuBose kid that just decommitted from uh, from Georgia. Did he go to USC, too? Oh yeah, look at tired now, chat. Hey, look, I, Ricky, I literally just said that I'm ready to give it to my food. So undefeated, <laughs> we got a lot of things going on this week. Let me pull up that practice schedule for y'all real quick. I'm gonna pull up this practice schedule so uh, I can tell y'all what type of coverage we're gonna have for y'all this week. Um, here it is, right here. So what's today? So we have offensive players and assistants tomorrow. So we get to hear some from the offense. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get Jalen Milrow. Um, we'll actually have a list of the players available in the morning. So maybe I'll be able to give y'all a scoop uh, before um, we go, right, of what players. Um, and then Thursday on the 28th, uh, we, we're going to have Coach DeBoer pressing, right, more likely out of the media room in Mal Moore. Um, Monday, April 1st, ain't no interviews. But they do have a practice, right? Um, so there is no practice today. There is no practice today. Practice picks up again tomorrow, Saturday. Or uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, Thursday, and then Monday. And then... Um, The next time we'll be able to view practice is going to be April 9th, a few days before A Day, which is going to be cool. Because then I think that'll be when they'll have like depth charts and people in order how we're going to look. And so April 9th, we'll be able to get y'all some scoop on uh, how how these lineups are looking for A Day. Uh, and so I'm thinking also, I'm thinking we're going to go live with the, uh, the player interviews again. Hey, 
give some coach smook and uh and kyle emotes if y'all enjoyed how we did post practice report uh this last one this past saturday where we did kind of like the tour of the, of the campus we didn't stop the live did y'all like that did y'all enjoy that naeem Oford, if we flip Oford, it would be a surprise to me i i haven't heard much around that camp um yeah i i, I me me personally that's just me uh, i i'm probably not plugged in good enough just yet but the moment i start hearing something i i will i will start to, to pick on it but um i i think the safeties that we have on roster is kind of a solidifying thing to you know we don't necessarily got to go that way you got class you got class of 26 guys that are that are just as talented right at that safety position and uh over that you got peyton woodger red morgan drake kirkpatrick in this class that you're going to be able to have for at least two to three years so if he does flip and come back that'll be cool yeah that was fire i right, appreciate that oh for that cornerback um they saying he's safety and cornerback so they got him listed as the athlete on some major sites Yeah, that's why I was just reading. They got him listed as the athlete on this one. And then you look at his film, he plays safety and corner. Ted, what Ted say? He they they have him listed as an athlete. He plays corner and safety. Side, yeah. He's definitely safety size. He's gonna be about six three, right? He's six two, six one, six two right now. Think he gonna be about six three, bigger kid, probably up like one ninety one ninety five going into the senior year. I think he's a solid corner though. I think he could, he he could transition to um to safety easier at the uh at the college level. That's just me personally. Kind of like Drake Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick played corner in high school, but now he's a safety. So, um, Oford. I, I mean, wherever you play him, he's a dog, man. Yeah, Jordan, we got a lot of in-state talent. If we get Juju Lewis Wednesday, he's play. Juju plays uh, 26. Juju plays 26. He doesn't come in and start his first year. He comes in and plays in 26. He beats out. If Austin Mack is still here, he beats out Austin Mack. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go on record saying this is Jalen Monroe this year, barring any type of catastrophic injuries or him just, just failing like, and I don't see that happening. Then it's Ty Simpson one year needed, right? Off to the draft, first round draft pick. And then Juju Lewis, his second year on campus, like Bryce got to do. Juju going to have a Bryce type type uh transition, right? I like that. But listen, everybody it's been fun this segment has been lit as always you always bring the energy you all always bring the support and i greatly appreciate it so with that being said man remember to stay up man stay motivated today is monday we always try to stay motivated we start a week off strong stay motivated keep your your goals in front of you right don't lose sight of your goals there's no reason to quit on them just because you're experiencing experiencing a little adversity adversity is what makes it great adversity is what makes you appreciate it right so with that being said thank you all for tuning in we peaked at 300 and something viewers i think it's like 307 308 right um where we at with the likes man oh we at 245 can i get five more likes before we get off can i get five more likes before we get off please 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 give me five more likes we need five more likes to get to 250 if you are in the chat and you have not liked the stream please give us these five likes I'm, I'm not even gonna beg i'm pleading <laughs> we need five more likes before i get off the stream let me get let me get some of y'all comments while we're waiting for the likes who is ted ted nachos you do every school is playing play, paying players i'm curious what ohio state did differently then what ted say what you did ted Y'all know I got to talk to the chat a little bit. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, is Ted is Ted is Ted a, a, a Ohio State fan? Ha! <laughs> uh, Ohio State about to be boo boo. Y'all, boy, y'all happy about Julian Sand and Seth McLaughlin? Who else y'all want? Who else y'all want from us? <laughs> Let's go. How many? Wait. Let me refresh. It said 245. Oh, my bad. Look, I had to refresh the page. I had to refresh the page. Whoa. 284 in the chat. 284 likes. I love it. I love it. Don't hold me up. Coach, we love you, man. Keep up the great work. Hey, I love y'all too, OG. OG, Nicole, my sister. The schedule for tonight. Yes, let me pull it out for y'all. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, so I might have to lead off with, with tonight. I'm gonna see if I can switch out with Jarek and Merrill. But uh, right now it's Jarek and Merrill starting off. You got seven o'clock with Sean and then eight o'clock with me. So yeah. Uh, Uncle Jay, appreciate it. Much love. Ruben, appreciate you. For hey, them boys, put the facts on them. Don't, don't, don't let them live. Put the facts on them. Oh, listen, 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 listen. Moon Rocker. That's what I wanted to touch on. I'm gonna stop the music for a second. So there's there's this there's a there's a narrative being pushed out that Coach Cochran is back on staff, all of that vibe, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. The thing is, with Coach Cochran being back on campus. It ain't like we need another strength and conditioning coach or anything like that. But if you're a real Bama fan and you understand what Coach Cochran did for these young men while he was here, when it came to the motivation aspect, when it came to the mentality, the, the, the intensity that this team played with, it wasn't because of the linebacker coaches. It wasn't because of the DB coaches. It wasn't because of the D-line coach. It was Coach Cochran. So if we can get him and give him a, a nice title position, uh, uh, Jor, where my, where my brother Jor at? I need somebody with the illustrious words to, to give me a title for a coach that does motivational, uh, mental, uh, uh, motivate, mental motivational upkeep. You know, I need a, I need a, a, a title for that. And that's what we're going to call Coach Scott, Coach Cochran. Scott Cochran, if he ends up coming back to Bama and getting on staff. Roster management specialist. Mm. No, we don't want him doing nothing playbook wise, smoking blood. We don't want him. We don't want him doing nothing playbook wise. Let him stretch the guys, get them hype. Let let him be the guy that comes up with like the breakdowns. Let him do that. Let him be the one that goes wake them up early for workouts. Let him be the one. Let him be the the fetch coach. Somebody give me some fire names. Somebody give me some fire names. Experience coach. That sounds plain, but we could rock with it psychological i like it psychological maintenance coach mj you sound you sound about as slow as me mj <laughs> you sound about as slow as me that's the biggest words i could have came up with psychological maintenance somebody come on give me some big words give me some big words ted you know what's crazy ted let's let's talk about ohio state let's talk about how ohio state has allowed michigan to straight run through them the past three years, right? Let's talk about how Ohio State couldn't even dominate against a trash Penn State team. Let's talk about Ohio State and who the quarterback is supposed to be. Who's going to be the quarterback? Is it going to be Mr. Rogers or whatever the guy that just came in the transfer? Or is it going to be Julian saying like who, who's going to be the quarterback? And y'all got receivers, but who's going to throw to him? What O-line is going to block for him? Who's in your secondary? Like Ohio State might go eight and four. They that garbage. Your coach is going. Your coach is on the hot seat. Ryan Day is on the hot seat because he can't recruit, because he has to pay for players. Caleb Downs is sad. He's sick that he's up there. He's sick. Saying might be the QB, and he gonna be out there. Stick man, listen. Director of player mental strength. Oh Lord, that sounds that sounds like a preacher. Ebony, I don't care. Get mad. Ohio State gonna be boo boo. They gonna be boo boo, and I'm mark my words. They gonna be boo boo. 
and you going you going to denounce that name and you going to follow you going to support your son wholeheartedly and not give a piss about them doggone Ohio State books. You only need to give a piss about anything but the tide. Remember that. We ain't go Ebony, you my sister. I can't let you do this to yourself no more. Come to the likes, sis. You can keep your NFL team, keep them boo-boo Browns, them toilet bowl Browns. But when it comes to this college game, we are your son is here. Go ahead and let it go. All that old paraphernalia, championship stuff, that stuff is 10 years old. It's out in the storage room somewhere. It probably got uh dry rot. You know what I'm saying? Let it go. There's no more space for being an Ohio State fan, sis. Ted, Ted, he gonna he gonna be quiet. He probably won't show up to the chat after the season starts. He probably won't show up. They're going to struggle with game one. Yes, support your son and the University of Alabama. Don't give no credit to doggone Ohio State because what have they done for you in the past five years? What has Ohio State done for you in the past five years but drop big games? Tell me. Let's be honest. What has Ohio State done for you other than drop big games in the past five years? Let's talk about Ohio State schedule. I'm going to talk about it because I'm hyped now. Wait. Whoa. Here we go. Oh, look Look at this schedule. And this is why they so – this is – listen. Athletic inspirational coach. Ooh, look at y'all with the big words. Okay. Look at y'all with the big words. <laughs> listen, this is why Ohio State confident. Listen to their first few games, y'all. And I want y'all, I want y'all to laugh at Ted as I say this, right? Akron, Western Michigan, Marshall. And they got all three of these games at home. They might <laughs> they might have. <laughs> oh man. Then they got Michigan State. Then they got Iowa. And then they gonna lose to Oregon. Then they got Nebraska. They might lose to Nebraska. Then they got Penn State. They gotta go to Penn State this year. They're gonna lose to them. Purdue might put some on Northwestern. They got they gonna beat them. If y'all lose to Indiana, yeah. And then Michigan, last game of the year. So y'all, y'all might only lose two or three. But y'all schedule is garbage. Just like your squad. Hey, you can have them. Keep them. You're gonna need them. You're definitely gonna need them. Hopefully he stays. Hopefully he stays. He left a playoff team, a playoff program to go to a, a, a freaking underperforming boo-boo coach, coaching staff, a trash defense of, of team in, 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 with a similar scheme that, that he could have been thriving in at Bama. We're being right back in the playoffs. But guess what? Now he's going to be a, 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 a 9 and 3 team in the playoffs, and they're going to be out of it in the first round after they get spanked by Michigan last game of the season. Oh, pull the belts out, chat. Pull the belts out. Trying to put some B2A up in his mug. <laughs> hey, Ted, Ted Nahos, a, a, a retard take from a Bama's podcaster with the peanut gallery. Listen, Ted, you know what's the peanut gallery? Not being able to win your conference in the past five years. You know what's retarded? Having top five recruiting classes and not making the playoffs. You know what's retarded? Going after a quarterback in, in Aaron Nolan, and now you're going and getting Julian Sayans. Get out of here, bro. Your coaching staff is dookie. Your your coach is on the hot seat. He can't coach. He can't coach. What has he done since he's been there? Bunch of hype. You you you're living off of a, a a blue a blue chip brand that does that's irrelevant. Come on, let's let's talk facts. I can tell you when the last time Alabama won their conference. I can tell you last time Alabama was in the playoffs. I can tell you last time Alabama won a national championship. And it ain't been 10 years. <gasps> oh. What happened last time Alabama and Ohio State saw each other? I remember a certain wide receiver having 250 yards in the first half against Ohio State. Mm. Mm. I think the only point that Ted is trying to make, Flyboy G, is that Ohio State is overrated. And he's going to just continue to bump his gums like Ohio State fans do. Easy. Easy. Special assistant to the head coach, clinical psychology, and player development specialist, Scott Cochran. Boy, that's a long... That's why... This is why George is our resident linguist. 
Yeah, man. Smitty, they don't. Hey, Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith puts fear in the hearts of Ohio State fans. Devontae Smith, when he goes to the state of Ohio, when he travels through there, they get quiet. They get quiet. Hey, listen. What's this, 25? So this year be that 10 year? Oh, it's about to get ugly for them. But the thing is that we played, they played, they won that in the 2014 season. That was the 2014 season. It just so happened to be January of 2015. He don't exactly, Bama fan. He don't. Great brand, but who wants that pressure? Hey, listen, nobody, nobody, nobody. There's no pressure at Ohio State. It's a, a lot of hype, man. A lot of hype. We talk about just strictly, just strictly production and results. There is no, there is no, no pressure. There is no pressure for this team. Them jokers spent 13 mil on a clat on, on a on a team this year. And they not gonna win a national championship. They're not even gonna win a conference. Michigan is gonna lose so many players in the portal, and they still gonna come back and beat Ohio State. And and that's the thing that man, Ohio State, Ohio State, y'all are trash. So with that being said, I want to close on that. Just leaving y'all with the uh, the whole uh idea and the whole concept that ohio state is trash uh that football team is garbage uh that, that stadium is trash uh the jerseys are the doggone stickers that they put on the helmets for what just to go out there and get your jump you, you get your, get your muffin cap peel back blue like trash trash now you just mad trying to talk trash when your players are leaving the sinking ship Ted, do you understand that we just closed this recruiting class as the number two ranked recruiting class? Number two ranked recruiting class, but the ship is sinking. Do you know that our roster is the number three ranked roster in the nation right now with composite scores as far as recruiting rankings from the time they, that they were uh, that they came from high school? We lost 13 players in the portal. You know that? And we're still in the top 10 as far as roster rankings. Do you know that our quarterback was just just led a struggling team to the playoffs last year? What did your quarterback do with your team last year? What was Ohio State during the playoffs? What did Ohio State do in the bowl game? Who should be more worried? The team that's returning the same product from last year or the team with a new product? I'm thinking the team that's returning the same. That's like trying to fit a, a square peg in a circle hole. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. April 15th is judgment day for... What do you mean? What do you mean? You talking about the, when the portal opens? Oh. Don't make... Man. Y'all, should I, should I drop the bomb on them real quick? Should I drop the ball on him? Because he he bragging about Caleb Downs. But there was a conversation I had when Caleb Downs was in town hanging out with his brothers in T-Town. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to just leave that there. I'm going to just leave that there, Ted. Boom! Blow his little world up. Blow his little world up. So what you going to be saying? We only left with Seth McLaughlin and Julian Sands from Alabama. You going to still be bragging about that? Hold up. Oh, you still gonna be bragging about that, Ted? Still gonna be bragging about that? Hey, Ted. Ted. Your team gave up 250 yards to one receiver in a playoff game. Just think about that. That's your last memory of Alabama. Oh my God. I can't imagine. Like, if we hadn't came back and beat Tennessee since that uh DeMarco Hellams, that uh that that Wyatt kid, if we hadn't come back and beat Tennessee since then, my my stomach would turn every time somebody says something about Tennessee, like it already does, right? 
Ohio State's last memory of Alabama was one guy putting up a team total yardage of production in one half against that team. In one half. I ain't got nothing to drink. Let me get a hold up. Antoine, I gotta get I gotta get something to sip on for this one. I get gotta get a little sippy sip. Because uh good. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is he talking about? I'm keeping him on longer to entertain you all. Nah. Yeah, you keep me on longer so I can make this clip and I can save it. So next season. When it's time for you to come back, where's your Twitter? Because I know you're not going to come back to the chat after the season start. Enjoy this this springtime. Enjoy the preseason. Once the spring come, I mean, once the fall come, we won't see you no more. We won't see them no more. They And then that's the thing. They have Ohio State podcasts. They have Ohio State beat writers and stuff that they can go read and watch videos on. But guess where he at? In a Bama chat. Hmm. Mm. He said, you were high like all the other Batman fans when you lose. How am I high and I'm on a freaking podcast, boy? So, Ted, for, for, for your ignorance and for your for your uh, idiocracy that you displayed today, you, sir, are the donkey of the day. Everybody give it up for Ted, our resident Ohio State fan. We appreciate you. I appreciate you being a good sport, too. But you, sir, are my donkey of the day. We appreciate you, man, doing what you do, being uh, the ass that you are, right? Being the ass that you are. We appreciate you, man. We really do. Shouts out to you, man. Dunk Yeah Today goes to my boy Ted, man. Dunk Yeah Today goes to my boy Ted. Appreciate you, Ted, for pulling up, giving us that entertainment, and reassuring us that Alabama lives rent-free in everybody's head. You just, you, just, you just reassured us, and we appreciate you, man. We really do. Thank you for what you do. Uh, and, and um, you're a great sport, but your trash talk is horrible. I, I can help you with that. We provide trash talking classes here at Bama Football on YouTube. Um, it's called the Belt to Ask Courses uh, one-on-one. You can actually register for that. We can teach you how to talk some realistic trash um, and not just, you know, say crazy stuff, right? Um, and also, we could teach you how to find facts. Google and the internet is undefeated. I promise you, you can come with some better uh stuff then, then that next time and then you might feel like what you did you accomplished something today so i appreciate you though ted for real appreciate you for being a good sport man it's all funny games for real i swear i swear i'm not even playing bro i don't get in my feelings i just get i i get into character i get into character so i can engage i think it's a fun thing to do it, it brings everybody out gets people you know like you should have seen we had bama fans getting mad at me last week because i said kaden proctor don't deserve another chance here I'm gonna stand on it. <laughs> it's all love, yeah. Appreciate that, Ted, for real. It's all love, fam. I appreciate that, for real. I'm glad you didn't take it personal, man. As a matter of fact, Ted, since you're really a Closet Bama fan, you should just become a fan funder. You get what I'm saying? You should just become a fan funder. Or uh, you should just start super chatting every time you come in here. <laughs> Ohio State don't want to rematch right now. Ohio State don't want to rematch right now. No, they don't. Ohio State, one team, Ohio State, and players on Ohio State do not want to see right now. And you know what's crazy? It's not the players of, of these teams that's, that's like Bama is falling. It's only the fans. It's the – Ted, explain to me the concept of cover two, base cover two. Explain to me the concept of base cover two. Listen, I'm going to turn the music off. Ted, I want you to explain to me the concept. I don't care what the formation is, base cover two. Just, just explain to me. I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second. You can go Google it. Uh, you can go Google it. And I'll turn on the driving music. We're going to give you time. I'm going to sit Indian style in my chair while we wait. I'm too, long, I'm too tired to be sitting Indian style, so I'm going to just put the knee up like this. Mm. Ted, base cover two. Long pass to safety, negative, negative. You you way up. Listen, 
listen that's that's definitely not cover two so in cover two you want your boundaries you want your boundary to cover the flats you want over the top help you want mids covered by your linebackers right you want to be able to uh use range so cover two is to take away the short intermediate pass game that's the basics of cover two schematically you could change up depths or things of that nature but your short to intermediate pass game quick reaction to run game is what you want in cover base cover two mm, 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 mm. oh oh but you had a little idea so i guess we could let you talk you know what i'm saying i'm out y'all it's been fun uh ted you've been a good sport man mo, mo, most mo, listen that's but safety cover three you, you got over the top helping cover three too what do you mean base cover three you gonna have over the top help boundaries you're, you're three deep thirds you're, you're dividing the field up in three parts you cover two you're dividing up it in two parts with four different with, with, with four uh defensive backs sometimes five sometimes six you just divide the field in half and each each sector of the field is covered by it's, it's assigned to a, a personnel somebody has flats in the boundary or they might have hook and then the inside guy might run flats you know what i'm saying so that's what i'm saying i'm just saying don't tell me i ain't a coach again because you know that's what we do anyways roll tide to everybody in the chat much love for all the lurkers all the rubberneckers appreciate y'all for hitting the like today we really do appreciate that um we've been we, we've been wanting y'all to just like the stream at least um and then for all the supporters all the fan funders we definitely appreciate you all the energy is always up fan funders undefeated y'all are truly undefeated much love man much love to everybody it's your boy coach snoop and i'm gonna leave y'all with a big old roll tie. let's go baby i'm out